بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الانبیاء و سید المرسلین و على آلہ و اصحابہ الغر المیمین و من تبعہم بی احسان الى یوم الدین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ السمیر علی من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و ما ارسلناک الا رحمت للعالمین قال سبحانه وتعالى اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ما کان محمد ابا احد من رجالکم ولیکن رسول اللہ و خاتم النبیین وقال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم لا نبی بعدی لا نبی بعدی لا نبی بعدی Respected brothers and sisters, dear friends, everyone welcome to this stream, another stream, I think episode 3 on Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani and Jesus and Mary. So we have been discussing this topic in the past uh, two streams. And the topic is that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani insulted Isa a.s. repeatedly using uh, creative language. He was full of contradictions on this topic. He said one thing in one place and then directly contradicted it in another place when things started to change for him. He also made claims that could not be substantiated either from the Bible or the Quran. He insulted Mary, the mother of Isa a.s., as we have seen in previous episodes, and the Qadiani missionaries could not give any satisfactory answers. Rather, they would go around the world to evade questions instead of engaging with them. So here we are. We will continue, inshallah, with these streams. We want more and more Ahmadis, Qadianis to watch these streams. And these streams are going down in history because they will be watched in the future by uh, future generations. If anyone wants to learn what Qadiani religion is, then they can come to these streams and learn from us and those missionaries who choose to engage us. So this topic has been very, very disturbing for many reasons. As we have seen in the last episode, we went through some disturbing content whereby we showed that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani rejected the miracles of Isa a.s. categorically he rejected them and called these miracles mentioned in the Quran. He called these miracles trickery, mesmerism, hypnotism. Okay. And then he even went on to say that any Joe or Tom, Dick and Harry could do these miracles. Paraphrasing. Of course, he said, uh, if you want a precise quote, that any Hindu, Jew or atheist could do these uh, mesmerism tricks. He called it Amal tirb Amal tirb He coined the term. He claimed he had revelation or ilham. In the Qadiani sense, it means revelation. He claimed that he received revelation that Amal tirb is what Jesus was using, not miracles. But this is a very problematic issue as we raised some problems with it last in the last stream. What we're going to do with uh, the miracle of Ibrahim alayhi salam mentioned in Surah Baqarah. How we're going to deal with the miracle of Musa alayhi salam when he threw his staff and it became a serpent and all the magicians in uh, Egypt who were witnessing this fell into sajda and they believed. Or what we're going to do with miracles uh, like the miracle of Saleh Salam, when a she camel, 10 months pregnant, came out of a mountain. Okay, these are supernatural events. The laws of nature were broken blatantly, categorically, and the Quran mentions it. And we believe in this. We firmly believe in miracles and karamat. We also believe in karamat of awliya of Allah. For example, Sahaba. We have heard stories from the Sahaba that they had karamat. Like Maryam alayhi salam was given food out of season. It's mentioned in the Quran. We have similar incidents whereby a Sahabi was having fruit out of season. Okay. 
So these are karamat. Okay, we believe in these things, supernatural events, when laws of nature are broken by people very close to Allah and to, to, to show us that these are very special people, Allah gives them karamat and miracles in the case of prophets. And Mirza in his fraternity, they refuse to accept uh, uh, these miracles and they spin them. The fraternity of Mirza because they are stuck with Mirza. Mirza did it for a number of reasons. That in itself is a PhD thesis. Why was Mirza so confused? Why was he doing so many shenanigans? Why was he confusing people? Why was he contradicting? Was he, was he even stable? This is a PhD thesis. And I hope Brother Imtiaz can complete, you know, he can do a PhD on Mirza. And he's already, mashallah, very knowledgeable on the topic. So, brothers and sisters, Qadiani missionaries failed to turn up last week in a coordinated fashion they had all agreed that they are not going to attend our stream because they have realized thousands of people are watching thousands upon thousands are watching these streams and they are turning away from Qadiani cult they are turning away from this cult thousands upon thousands okay and there are many innocent Ahmadi followers of this Jamaat who don't know better, who don't know what Mirza wrote and what he meant when he said whatever he said. So now we are trying to clarify things, contextualize things that Mirza was a very confused man. So when some missionaries, Qadiani missionaries come to us and tell us, you don't believe in a true prophet of God. How can you reject a true prophet of God? How can you reject the Messiah of the age? How can you reject Al-Mahdi? We tell them, this is why we reject this person. I mean, I don't want to insult him. I have many creative words I can use. I don't want to insult him. But we put these reasons forward. Now look at look at what he wrote. Look at what he wrote. Can a sane person, can a normal person write things like this about miracles? He pretty much denied most things in Islam, you know, or twisted the meaning of them. He came up with his own meanings from his revelation. And then he said, I'm an Ummati Nabi. I am just a follower of Muhammad. But he tried to change so many things. He try, and, and you can see the Qadiani community today. You can see those changes in them. They are not like normal Muslims, standard Muslims. They are a very different people. They believe in different things. Okay, but they still insist that they are Muslims. and They want to be included in the fold of Islam despite all these major differences of Aqidah, of belief. What makes a Muslim Muslim? Belief. Aqidah before anything. Before anything else, it is your belief. If your belief is not correct, if your belief in Allah and His Messenger or His Messengers is not correct, you cannot be a Muslim. You can pray five times a day, you can fast the month of Ramadan, you can go for Hajj, but if your belief is not correct, if you believe in other things that cannot be found in the Quran and Sunnah, then you cannot be technically regarded a Muslim. Okay, and there are red lines. There are some red lines. When you cross those red lines, you can easily exit Islam. You can leave Islam because of those certainly. For example, can a Muslim believe in the Trinity? Absolutely not. That's kufr. That's disbelief. Can a Muslim believe in uh, a supreme deity called Allah and there are inferior deities like Hanuman, Ganesh, and, you know, Ram and you know, all these Hindu deities. Can a Muslim believe in these? No, absolutely not. Because Muslims can only believe in one God. So these are some fundamental beliefs Muslims hold. One of them is that there is no prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in any prophetic capacity. The return of Isa is not in prophetic capacity. Isa alayhi salam came and he did his ministry. He did his time. He did his responsibilities and he left. And he will come back as a sign of the hour, as mentioned in the Quran, that he's a sign of the hour. He will come back to do certain jobs delegated to him by the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he's coming back to follow the prophetic mission of Rasulullah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not coming as a new prophet or return of a prophet in his prophetic capacity as if the message of Muhammad Rasulullah is not complete. The Quran states, 
الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا Today I have perfected your religion for you. Perfection means no more room for any additions. So this is, brothers and sisters, a small introduction. Qadiani missionaries are making excuses on Twitter. We've been engage, engaging with them on Twitter, mostly Twitter. So if you're not following our engagements on Twitter, you are missing out. You're missing out on big fun. Fun because you can see the absurd arguments and absurd behavior of the Qadiani missionaries and people are laughing at them. Everyone's laughing at them. Not that we want that. Not that we like to see people being ridiculed and mocked. We don't want that. But they are mocking themselves by their lame excuses. And we will discuss some of those points in due course. They have said that they don't want to be part of these streams. And I know why that is the case. Because their leadership has warned them to stay away because they are losing people. They are losing numbers. Their youngsters are going to their masjids, their masjids and asking questions. The youngsters are going to their murabbis to ask specific direct questions and they're not getting answers. And Murabis have realized, hold on a second, we have an avalanche of doubt and questions coming our way. Something better change. So stop engaging with these Muslim debaters, Muslim interlocutors, so that you don't confuse the youngsters anymore. But now the damage is done, as they say, and we are here. We're not going anywhere. Whether you engage with us or not, we're not going anywhere. So we welcome you still. We'll give you equal time uninterrupted because that's the excuse Qadi, Qadiani missionaries have been using. It's an excuse. Oh, they don't give us time. They, they interrupt us. We, anyone watching our streams knows that we give them time, ample opportunity to present their views, but they don't come to the topic. They always change the topic. They go around the topic. They evade the question. They deliberately throw spanners in the works to avoid a direct conversation on the question we want to address. But still, our doors are open. You're most welcome to join. Okay, you'll get your full time, two minutes. We will do two minutes, you will do two minutes. Okay, and you will have your time. We will not, we will not interrupt you. Okay, and then we will address your points in our two minutes. You're most welcome to join us. But to present a case, I want to go very quickly to Brother Imtiaz so that he can put forward our case for tonight. Okay, over to you, Brother Imtiaz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. 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 Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to my beloved brother Adnan Rashid and to all the viewers. And we welcome Brother Marwan as well. Brother Marwan is already, inshallah, on the stage. And uh, before, inshallah, I mention something else, I want to mention that our beloved uh, Habib, Dr. Imran, he was uh, busy today. And he apologized and I want to apologize on his behalf because of some other commitments. He wasn't able to join. And inshallah, today we are going to have our beloved Adnan Bhai to be the moderator as well. And uh, I'm 100% sure, I'm already sure and confident that Adnan Bhai is going to prove that he is the most loved moderator for the, for the Ahmadis. So inshallah, when they will come. They will be treated with respect. And Brother Adnan has already demonstrated that he has multiple encounters with Razi. And I am 100% sure you have watched that. If you haven't, please go and watch them. And you have seen that how Adnan Bai interacted with Razi with respect. And Razi admitted that. But now if they want to you know, come up with the excuses, that's their choice. Okay. Alhamdulillah, our message is getting across. And uh, I swear by Allah that people are contacting us. Those who are still part of the cult, they are contacting us. They are reflecting, pondering upon this message. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this the means of guidance for people in this generation, inshallah, and in the future as well. And uh, alhamdulillah, uh, because this, this was the last uh, minute thing, inshallah, from the, uh, for, uh, in the future, it will be, uh, live on the both Twitter platform, but inshallah today it is available on the Twitter of uh, the dialogue with Imtiaz as well. So if somebody wants to watch on the Twitter, inshallah they can watch on Twitter as well. This was just a last minute thing. I discovered that we can go on multiple platforms, inshallah. In the future, it will be uh, on the Twitters, on TikTok. So inshallah, people can have multiple platforms to join. 
Now, having said all of that, <clears throat> let's inshallah come to the topic. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi amma baad. So, my dear Muslims and Ahmadi brothers and sisters in humanity, I know that there is a lot of hatred that has been instilled in the hearts and minds of the common Ahmadis regarding us Muslims. All I'm saying is that is it possible for you that for a moment put that hatred on the side and genuinely, sincerely engage with the arguments and the evidence we're going to present. And I have no doubt whatsoever that on this topic, Ahmadi clerics have already realized that they have no defense. Initially, they came, they came in the one or two streams on this topic as well. But they have realized there's no defense for that. So, inshallah, we are still waiting here. If any Ahmadi wants to come and refute us or to prove us wrong that how Mirza Ghulam Qadiani disbelieved and disrespected the miracles of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. But inshallah, we want to add more content as well. Today, inshallah, as uh, they are, inshallah, there are many new things which are going to add, inshallah, in today's uh, episode. For example, I'm going to begin with first thing, and inshallah, before I uh, uh, start presenting that, I would like to uh, welcome Brother Marwan. And Brother Marwan, you are welcome to say, inshallah, if you want to say something, Marwan, bhai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Uh, Brother Imtiaz, you are Sheikh al Shuyukh Muhammad Imtiaz al Australi. <laughs> we love you so much. You have opened our eyes uh, to facts. You know, we live in an age where it's an academic age. A lot of people don't understand what academia means. Academia does not mean whatever goes on in your head because you decide to make some analogy and some logic inside your head, and then you transfer that to satisfy your ego to prove whatever you want to prove is correct. That's not academia. We live in an age where academia is, prove it. If you're saying it, prove it. Where's the evidence? This is why when academics find new evidence, such as the Dead Sea Scrolls, the whole discussion shifts, because now we have, Evidence. We have evidence where we can see, okay, this is what it says here. This is what it says there. So just that he scrolls as an example. So that's what academia is. Bring forth your evidence. I was listening to Dr. Yahya, and one thing really bothered me. He, he kept calling Imtiaz a liar, a liar, a liar. And I'm like, why is he calling Imtiaz a liar? He says, look what Imtiaz is saying. Like, I'm just paraphrasing Dr. Uh, Yahya. He's saying, look what, look what Imtiaz is saying. And then he goes, but in that same page, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is praising the Prophet. Doesn't Imtiaz have any shame how much we love the Prophet? Yahya, Dr. Yahya, you're a doctor, man. You've gone through rigorous training so that your mind is, is one with the physical world. And you've been trained as such. In other words, Engage yourself with Imtiaz's um, evidence. You can't say, oh, Imtiaz did not quote three pages before and then three pages after. He, he only quoted one line. Dr. Yahya, Mary Jan, Mary Piyari Bai, Mary Dost. You have to understand one thing. The onus is on you to go 10 pages, 20 pages, 100 pages, reading the whole book and then saying, Ya Imtiaz Bai, Ya Habibi. You made a mistake. The context, if you go 50 pages behind, look at what the context is. This is what Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is saying. So this page that you quoted does not fit what you want to present because it does not fit with the context. If you do that, Dr. Yahya, oh, Mary Aziz, uh, but you don't do that, Mary Piyari Bai. You just attack Imtiaz and calling him a liar. And you know, when you do such things, you know, once or twice or three times, you know, at first it's like, okay, yeah, Dr. Yahya knows something. He knows something that we don't know. But 
when we keep doing it and then you know you don't back it with proper tangible you know evidence that we can play around with and you lose your credibility habibi it's been six months you know you just posted a tweet dr yahya you know attacking mtrs you're saying that look he creates his own date he doesn't tell me man it's a saturday you have been calling Imtiaz a liar. This means that you know the evidence. You have all of the evidence that Imtiaz has against, sorry, you have all of the evidence against Imtiaz's presentation of what Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is trying to say. And you show up every Saturday and you're on there for seven hours, man. So that means that you already have aapki talwar tez hai. Baat ye hai, that if you're calling Imtiaz Sahib a liar, but yeah, yeah, up ke talwar tez hai. And you, you, your sword is already sharp against Imtia Sahib, which means that you don't need any preparation because you've been calling him a liar for since six months, especially the last two months and the um, streams about, uh, about the insults of Mirza Hula Muhammad against Isa alayhi salam. So for you to go on Twitter, on X, and call uh, a liar. Yeah, man, don't do this. Habibi, don't do this. Just say on a private, go to a private uh, email, go message him privately and say, Imtiaz, I will not be there on Saturday next week. You should have consulted me. I mean, do it in a brotherly way. I mean, Imtiaz accepted all of your conditions. All of your conditions. Because he said, I want this to happen. I man, how much more do you need someone to be honest? And he's accepting all of your conditions. Anyways, that's my love for Imtia Sahib that you have shown so much from Mr. Ghulam Muhammad's writings that I don't have the power to read and, and, and to go through it. Uh, so I just want to say salam alaikum to you and brother Adnan Rashid, my, my, my Pierre Bai. You know, it's very, very hurtful that in, in front of you, MT, uh, Razi is so kind and then behind you on Twitter he calls you a jahil I don't understand this man I don't understand you know these are the small things Khuda ki qasam when you do qasam it's qasam in Mardana qasam hai ye Razi is the reason why I left Ahmadiyya finally I am telling you because I was following Razi and I was like okay ye hamara talwar hai ma hamara talwar kun hai and then there was a dumb sword. You know, you know, Razi, but you don't understand the negative impact you have on people who are ahl tafakur. You know, you are appealing to ignorant Ahmadis who are kind-hearted, who just think that because you are a murabbi, you went through seven years of jamia, they have given you the title of a murabbi, that they trust you. Blindly they trust you. Blindly they trust you. But... When other people who are knowledgeable, who have gone through academic rigorous training in the secular world, and when they hear you and you're caught upon lies upon lies, man, you even added waqala Rasulullah to a hadith. I mean, like, like, like Razibai, you don't, you think that we forgot about all those streams in the last six months? We have not. It's just adding, you think because it's, it's in the car archives of, of the internet that no one's going to go through them. Those streams of six months ago, they keep getting views. They keep getting views. And those views are, are increasing day and day. They're increasing, which means people are going and watching them. They're in the archives now. My brother, you have every stream you have lied. Every stream. And at, at, at a point came, I was like, this is what they have. And the Jamaat Ahmadiyya, why do they not take you out? Why are you the face of the Jamaat? Why, why have they kept you as the face of the Jamaat? And you have the audacity. You have the audacity to say that you don't represent the Jamaat. How could you not represent the Jamaat? You are a murabi. You are paid by, by the Jamaat. You accuse Imtiaz and, 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 and Adnan and all of the Dawah-wise team that they're making money on the YouTube views no they're not and even if they are just as adnan said what's a merely hundred dollars one thing i want to say to you razi you are a paid missionary your food is paid your allowance is paid your car your insurance your maintenance your utilities your phone your family your wife gets an allowance from the jamaat 
You are not 24 hours a day on the internet because it's free. It's your job. If you were a car mechanic, you would not be on the internet 24-7 because you would be worried about fixing cars. So when you attack the, the Muslims and you say that they are getting paid from you to the shame on you. When you, you are in Marabi, you are getting paid directly by the Jamaat. So for calling Adnan a jahil, you know, there was a very kind Arab man that day, that day when you kicked me out, there was a very kind Arab man, an older gentleman, about 60, 65 years old. He came on your channel to discuss with you. When the man had the, the most kindness of intentions, he just wanted to draw your attention to certain texts of a hadith to have a discussion with you. The, the poor man just, you just looked at the title page of the book without listening to the poor man. You called him, Ya Ayu Hajahil. The poor man, I, his, he was heartbroken, man. On the comment section of that video, you could tell he was so heartbroken. This is the image you're giving the Jamaat Ahmadi. And I know Ahmadis are kind people, but I don't know why no one slams the brake on you. I don't understand why. Anyways, I just wanted to say a salam. I will be here in the background, inshallah. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Marwan. Thank you so much for the kind words and uh, for the wake up call. May Allah bless you. And you know what? Uh, I have personal contact with Razi. Many people don't know this. Razi has my private number and I have his private number as well. Since we met in Canada for the first time, when he came to see me, uh, I gave him a big hug in, in, in the parking area where he met me for the first time. And I took them inside the masjid. Razi, Razi's brother, one of their friends, three people came to see me. And uh, we took them inside the masjid. We sat them down. We had food with them on the same, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, in, in the same uh, same place where we were sitting, and after the food, they sat through my lecture for nearly an hour, hour and a half, and then we had a conversation for two hours, and then we exchanged details. And I liked the guy, despite all his shenanigans, despite all his uh, manipulative behavior. I like him. I have this side of my heart or this part of my heart that really has sympathy and so a soft corner for him okay despite all his uh, attacks and personal attacks and everything you know so uh, he puts out a lot of hostile stuff on twitter and i just don't i don't take it to my heart seriously uh, even if i see him in the future which i hope i will i will still hug him that's the way i am and people many people you know they don't like me for that that i'm being too soft with the kuffar you know uh, some people don't like that some people say oh these people are you know, they believe in another prophet, and they—they. I don't. I don't. I don't believe in that kind of uh, rhetoric. I believe you can invite people to Islam with love and compassion. Where you have to be harsh, you be harsh. Uh, there is a need for that at times. Okay, but that's not the way to go forward. Always. Okay, the real method or the best method to call people to Allah is through compassion and human behavior. And this is why we are all we, we all get passionate, but we shouldn't get it to our let, let it get it to hearts. That's why let's continue with the conversation. If uh, Kadiani missionaries are watching this stream, come in. We are human beings. We are your brothers and sisters in humanity, and we see you likewise as our brothers and sisters in humanity. We don't see eye to eye. We don't have the same faith. No problem with that. You can choose to be what you want. Okay, we are choosing to be what we are, but let's discuss, let's talk, and let's get passionate. Let's get passionate. There's nothing wrong with that, but it has to continue. We will continue. We will continue reaching out to the Ahmadi community because we feel sympathy, compassion, and mercy for them. We see the Qadiani community as our lost brothers and sisters. That's why we are reaching out to them to save them. This is the passion. When it comes to money, let me assure you again, okay? Let me assure you again, we are not getting paid for this work. We are getting paid by Allah if we are sincere. If we are sincere, we will be paid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Only Allah knows hearts. Only Allah knows why we're doing this. But we're not, one thing we're not doing it for is money. 
trust me. Pradeem Tiaz, for all his hours long research, his reading of books, his collecting information, his researching, and his spending his nights uh, almost every weekend here with you to talk to you, he's not getting paid for that. I know for this specific work, for reaching out to the Ahmadi community, for the, reaching out to the Qadiani community, he is not getting paid. I am not getting paid. And people who have been uh, attending, to my knowledge, Brother Imran, Brother Mansoor, Hashim, and all the other brothers and sisters who came along, you know, they are not getting paid, to my knowledge. Okay. <clears throat> so, on that note, let's go to Brother Imtiaz and let him, let him put forward his case because he's been waiting patiently. Thank you so much, Brother Marwan, for your input. Over to you, Brother Imtiaz. Bismillah. Tfadl. Adnan Bhai, Jazakallah khair for your kind words. So, inshallah, uh, brother, very quickly, I just want to uh, say something uh, in this live stream with regard to, as you can see on your screens, this is the latest uh, tweet or something on the Twitter or some other platform I have been uh, sent by one of the brother from Dr. Yahya. As you can see, uh, the first uh, comment I want to make is just, I want, look, I'm always saying this thing that just be honest, fair, and side with the truth. I don't ask anybody to side with me. Just read all of that. This is the person who is saying that let's have a respectful debate. Just look at the wording. The first word is shame. I mean, as Marwan Bhai said, look, brother, uh, in humanity, Dr. Yahya, Alhamdulillah. I have made this commitment to myself in this new year 2024 that no matter how much you disrespect me, inshallah, I'm not going to say a single word. You know why? Because I want my full reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of these abuses and calling me names. The first word you are saying is shame. And then you are inviting me for a respectful debate. Okay, let's move. It says, Imtiaz announced date and time without asking my availability on 20th of January. Everybody can see and watch his video. He said that one week in advance, you have to announce. Yesterday was for us, in it was 13th of January. I announced 20th of January. How many days? Seven days. He said that give me one week notice. So he asked me for one week notice. I gave him one week notice, but still I am a liar. Okay. Now look at next. He says, is this a sign of desperation? Uh, I would not comment on this, but I would say this is a sign that Alhamdulillah, we are sincerely, genuinely trying to engage with the Ahmadiyya community. And we want people to see the truth from both sides. So if you want to call it desperation, by all means, it's your choice. And then he says, Molvi Imtiaz, childish behavior. I don't think that I need to comment on this one. I leave with the viewers. Then he says, liar, evil genius. Alhamdulillah, brother Yahya in humanity. All of these, wallahi. Before, I may used to get upset as a human being. But now, alhamdulillah, I rejoice. Alhamdulillah, in my heart, I, I rejoice. You know why? Because I am being disrespected and humiliated. Why? For the honor of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is an honor for myself and for Adnan Bhai and for all of us, because our our honor, anything we own, we are going to sacrifice that on the dust, on the dust which ever touched the blessed shoes of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All our honor is sacrificed on that dust which ever touched his blessed, blessed shoes, alhamdulillah. So all of these abuses, they are honor for me. Dr. Yahya, is that not true that you guys are saying that if somebody is mocking, abusing, this is a sign that the other person is the truthful person because you claim that when people used to say things about Mirza Ghulam, you, you, you take this as evidence that Mirza Ghulam was indeed, quote and quote, a truthful person. Because you say that it has always been the case that people have been disrespecting the truthful people. Can I use the same logic here? Think about this. And then you say, watch the full video. Yes, people should watch the full video. 
I categorically said, Dr. Yahya, I have accepted all you, even though my Muslim brothers are not happy with me. They said that, why are you giving him every, I said, no problem. Because I have nothing to be scared of. I gave you everything. Only one thing I ask you, and this is something you already gave me. I ask you to increase the time of the debate. That's all I said. Everything I accepted. And then you say, Imtiaz attempt to change the topic of the debate, badly exposed. My brothers and sisters, please watch my message. That was only a three minutes video. What was the topic? We are presenting our case that Mirza Ghulam, the founder of Ahmadiyya movement, he disrespected and disbelieved the miracle of Isa And Dr. Yahya and Jamal Ahmadiyya is saying that we are misquoting and misrepresenting. Is that not the topic? Please tell us what is the topic then? I am going to present all of those references about which you are accusing me that I am lying, I am misquoting, and you have to tell the people that why you said this. What else the topic is, Dr. Yahya? Dr. Yahya, just make a one minute video and tell me what else you want so I can give you that as well. If you want to change the date, no problem. You don't need to call me a liar, all of that. Just send a message to me that you want to change the date. Let's change the date. What else do you want? With regard to, to you, you only said two things, date and the topic. Tell me that what else the topic is. With regard to date, if you are not available, let me know because you asked me to give me one week notice. I gave you one week notice. If you want to change the date, no problem. I can understand. Somebody can be busy. Let's change the date. So that's all I wanted to say with regard to this message. So inshallah, now we will upload this one separately as well. So people can see that Muhammad Imtiaz is running and whatever. Okay, inshallah. So let's end this with here. So now inshallah, brothers and sisters in humanity from Ahmadiyya side and my beloved Muslim community, inshallah, let's uh, present our first case for tonight. <clears throat> and this first case is, as uh, some of you know already, that uh, Mirza Ghulam, we have presented in the past as well. It's not that he disrespected and insulted Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. No, he unnecessarily, unnecessarily disrespected and insulted his blessed mother, Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam as well. So inshallah, now I am uh, going to present that, that why we are saying that what is the evidence and then after that obviously uh, it's you people who will watch this and inshallah you will decide that if we have the evidence or it is otherwise okay so without any further ado let me inshallah share my screen and start the case so auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim so when I looked at the evidence which I collected from Mirza Ghulam's writings, so I have just compiled these few points, and there are many others as well. I only put here on this slide 10 points. These are the 10 different ways in which Mirza Ghulam has disrespected Sayyida Maryam. Salam. For example, look at this one. He said, uh, as you know already, inshallah, we will not go into this one in much detail. He said that Maryam alayhi salam, she had both male and female characteristics. And this could have been a plausible explanation of her self-pregnancy. For us, it is a disrespect because he is basically saying that Allah, she was not a normal woman because this is abnormality. Okay. Now. Next thing he said that she used to move around Pirna with Joseph without Nikah. We have presented that already. No need to go into detail. And the next point is very important. I want all the viewers to please pay extra attention. He says, according to the law of Moses, Nikah of Maryam alayhi salam was illegitimate. Najaiz, haram. Why? Inshallah, I will give you the reference very soon. He is basically, he is basically was saying that in the law of Moses, during pregnancy, please pay attention. In the law of Moses, during pregnancy, a woman cannot get married. 
she cannot have nikah. But obviously, as we have already presented in the past, inshallah, I will do it again today. He believes, Mirza Ghulam believes that Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam, she got married with Joseph the carpenter during pregnancy. And this was against the law of Moses. And don't forget, before the law or Sharia of Islam, what was Allah's law? Law of Moses. It means that he is basically saying that the nikah of Maryam alayhi salam was against the law of Allah. Don't forget this important part, okay? Okay, next one. Nikah of Maryam wasn't just a routine matter as women get married. Rather, it was a cover-up and hiding mission which her elders have to take on. Inshallah, evidence is coming as well. This is the allegation from Mirza Ghulam. And then they say that why people are upset and angry at the writings of Mirza Ghulam. These are the reasons. Okay. And then he said that this nikah was done to hide and cover what? Suspicious pregnancy. Don't forget. This is the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam. She was given this child in her womb. Sayyida, uh, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. And about this pregnancy, he believes that the elders of the Maryam, who are the elders? According to Quran, Kaffalaha Zakaria. Zakaria alayhi salam is one of the elders and the main person who was the guardian of Sayyida Maryam. They were suspicious about this nikah. I want you to decide, is it a disrespect or not? Okay, then Joseph the carpenter, he was angry at this nikah. People, are you listening? Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam, the chosen women. Allah says in the Quran, Oh Maryam, Allah has chosen you, selected you over all women of your time. And Joseph is angry with his about his nikah with this Maryam alayhi salam. Are you listening? Okay, now, elders did not allow Maryam to be in the temple after this nikah. They immediately got them married and kicked them out of the temple. Why? They said that now people are going to raise fingers on the temple. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who declared the purity of Maryam alayhi salam. And Mirza Ghulam believes that elders, they were angry and they kicked her out of the temple. They did not let her to be in the temple anymore. Okay, then. When Jews, this is a very important point. When Jews accused Maryam of fornication, blame is not just purely on the Jews. Rather, Maryam has the fault as well. People, are you listening? When Jews are accusing our, our blessed mother, Maryam alayhi salam, accusation of fornication, zina, Mirza is saying, we can't just blame the Jews. There was fault on the Maryam side as well. And inshallah, I'll present to you what he meant by that. But no, no matter what he meant by that, listen very carefully, no matter what he meant by that, this is an insult. This is a blasphemy. Right? Okay, next thing. This blame, which blame of fornication on Maryam alayhi salam? This blame actually ruined and stained the miraculous birth of Isa alayhi salam. Right? The birth of Isa alayhi salam, miraculously, without father, there was ruined. This miracle was ruined. And it was stained. Why? Because of this blame of the Jews. Look, blame, blame is coming. Unjust blame unjustifiable blame coming on this woman, a pure woman, Maryam alayhi salam, and Mirza is saying that because of this blame, the miraculous birth was ruined. The miracle was ruined and stained. Now, every single thing is, which is mentioned here, if any Ahmadi is listening, come on the live stream, ask us to present the reference. Anything said in these 10 points, this is my moral obligation, my moral obligation to give you reference for every single thing I have said. Number one. Number two, as Marwan Bhai said before, 
that they blame me. Oh, Imtiaz only quotes, you know, one line and this and that. Marwan Bhai already pointed out. This is how the citation works. My job is that I am establishing a point. Whatever is relevant on that point, I will quote that. I will quote from the primary source, original book. I will give you the page number, the volume. And after that, if you if you uh, are saying I am misquoting, you have to prove that. So you are first giving the verdict that I am liar, I am this, I am that. And after that, you don't give any evidence. Okay. Now, I don't want to take a lot of your time because I want to have a back and forth discussion primarily with the Ahmadis. And inshallah, I still have the hope that there would be an Ahmadi who would have the courage to come and defend Mirza Ghulam today. This is your profit. You have to, you cannot just abandon your profit. Okay, you have to defend him. Now, I just want to inshallah uh, share with you one passage here. And as you can see on the screen, everything has been compiled. So inshallah, whatever will be demanded, that will be produced. But let me inshallah quote at least one thing here for you. So you can see, inshallah, I will be reading this and Adnan by I request, uh, I request to Adnan by you is that inshallah we'll be reading this together and you will be inshallah translating and commenting from your side. Adnan, is that okay? Okay. That's fine. Inshallah. Wait, that's fine. Inshallah. Okay. Ruhani Khazain, volume 19, page 381. He says that Hazrat Maryam pe tohmat lagai gai aur is tohmat ne Hazrat Isa alayhi salam ki viladat ke ajuba ko haak mein mila diya. Adar be over to you. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hazrat Maryam par tohmat lagai gai. Mary was slandered, accused aur is tohmat ne Hazrat Isa ki viladat ke ajuba ko haak mein mila diya. And this slander basically uh, humiliated the, the wonder of the birth of Jesus. The wonder of the birth of Jesus. Okay, Ajuba means something wonderful, something incredible. Okay, so Mary's uh, slander against Mary basically humiliated or kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, belittled the incredible birth of Jesus Christ or the, the wonder of the birth of Jesus Christ. Magar is tohmat mein yeah. Magar is tohmat mein sirf yehudiyon ka kasoor nahi but in this slander the Jews alone are not to be blamed balke khud Hazrat Maryam se ek badi bhari galti hui but Mary herself had made a big mistake Jisne Yehud ko tohmat ka moka diya, which provided the Jews an opportunity to slander her. Or wo ye ke jab isne apne kash mein frishta ko dekha, and that is when Mary saw the angel in her vision, or frishta ne isko hamla hone ki basharat di, and when the angel announced to her the news or the good news of pregnancy, so Maryam ne amdan apne khwab ko chupaya. And Mary deliberately, um, basically kept her secret, uh, her dream secret. So he's saying this was a khwab. Okay, this was a dream. Or kisi ke paas isko zahir na kiya. And she never disclosed this secret to anyone. Kyunke iski ma aur baap dono ne isko baitul magdas ke nazar kiya tha. Because... Uh, her mother and father had um, dedicated or basically, um, uh, you know, how can I put it, made, uh, she, they had given her away to Baitul Maqdas, which is the temple. Wo hamesha tar, wo hamesha tar ki rah kar Baitul Maqdas ki rah. Tarika, sorry. Wo hamesha tarika rah kar Baitul Maqdas ki khidmat mein mashhool rahe. And they were they were basically always dedicated or devoted to uh, Al Quds or Baitul Maqdis. Or kabi khaman na kare, or batul ka lakab isko diya gaya. And she will not ever marry 
and she was given the uh, title of a virgin. Batul virgin hoga na? Ji ji. Right. Or isne aap bhi yehi ahad kiya tha ke khaman nahi karegi. And she had herself decided uh, to herself that she will not get a husband. Or Baitul Magdas mein rahegi. And she will stay within the sanctuary of Baitul Magdas. Ab is khwab ko dekhne se isko ye khof paida hua. After having this dream, she had fear that if she discloses this secret that the angel has given her the good news that you will have a boy and people will think that she wants to get married this is why Mary kept this dream uh, to herself لیکن وہ خواب سچی تھی but that dream was true اور ساتھ ہی اس کے حمل ہو گیا and she got pregnant at the same time جس سے مریم مدت تک بے خبر رہی and Mary was unaware of this pregnancy for a long time جب پانچوہ مہینہ حمل پر گزرا when the fifth month had passed of pregnancy تب یہ چرچہ پھیل گیا then it became famous کہ مریم کو حمل ہے that Mary is pregnant اور اس وقت لوگوں کو خواب سنا دی and then she told the people about her dream لیکن اس وقت سنانا بے فائدہ تھا because at that time uh, there was no point of telling people a dream آخر بزرگوں نے پردہ پوشی کے طور پر uh, at the end eventually the elders to hide her shame uh, or to hide basically her guilt whatever it is uh, Yusuf Naam Ek Shak Se Iska Nikah Kar Diya. They got her married to a man called Joseph. Is Tarah Par Yeh Nishan Mukaddar Ho Gaya. This is how this uh, prophecy or this uh, idea was fulfilled. No, 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 no. Adnan Bhai Mukaddar means stained. You know, when uh, on, on the mirror, when the mirror okay. has like a, like a stain. Okay, right. So Is Tarah Yeh, Is Tarah Par Yeh, Yeh Nishan Mukaddar Ho Gaya. How would you translate that? Because in this, because of all of that, what what Mirza explained, this mm-hmm. miracle was stained. Oh, okay. This is how this is how this sign uh, had become stained. This is what he means. Okay. Yeah. So this is how this sign, the the news of Jesus's pregnancy became stained. Basically, this is how Mirza is explaining. I hope this is clear to everyone. To summarize it, basically. Mirza is saying that um, Mary uh, had been given this vision. He doesn't think this was actually a physical appearance of the angel uh, in front of Mary. Rather, this was a dream. And in dream, she was told or given the glad tidings glad tiding of the birth of Isa al salam And he says that when the Jews accused Mary or slandered her, it wasn't just the fault of the Jews. Mary herself was at fault because she hid this dream to herself. She kept it to herself and she didn't disclose it because she thought if she went to her people saying this, that she had this dream, people might think that she wants to get married while she had devoted herself to the temple, right? But then she got pregnant and she didn't know she was pregnant, even though she was given a vision. Five months later, the pregnancy became apparent and her people basically uh, found out that she was pregnant and then she told people about her dream and the elders to hide the shame they got her married to a man called joseph to hide her shame right and this is how the miracle or the wonderful birth of jesus christ uh, became stained this is mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani in action so uh, adnan bhai because uh, uh, we have uh, tahir sahib uh, in the back chat so we'll take tahir sahib, sorry on the backstage so I'm going to take uh, Tahir Sahib um, on the uh, on the on the stage now. So, Please. and we will be uh, discussing. There are, like I said before, there are many passages, but this is because this is the first one we presented. So we want to discuss this bit by bit with Tahir Sahib, and we want to give him the opportunity to present his side of the explanation. So Tahir Sahib, you are on the stage now. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, Manit Tabal, Tahir Sahib, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how are you guys? 
Most welcome, Tahir. Most welcome. Always a pleasure having you. Thank you. Okay. So, Tahir Bhai, I'm going to call you Tahir Bhai because I really think... I'm younger than you. <laughs> I, I will... Age before beauty, huh? <laughs> okay, if you if you like. If you like. Okay. So, um, Tahir Bhai, I think your voice is not as clear. I don't know. Uh, can you okay. hear us clearly? I can hear you very clearly. Can you not hear me? Okay, we we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, yeah, maybe so with the microphone or so. Okay, I'm I'm going to be moderating today, and uh, Brother Intaz is going to lead the discussion, and I'm going to try to be as fair as possible. I'm not going to allow any interruptions because usually I do the interruptions, but I will keep myself out of the discussion today. Just try to get the answers. I mean, that's my job as a moderator. So th there is an allegation there. Uh, okay. on Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani that he came up with this story uh, and in this story he's saying that um, Mary was to, be, to blame also not only the Jews for slandering her because Mary had done all those things like she had the dream although there's no I mean evidence for the dream but she he claimed there was a dream and she hid the dream because she didn't want to be accused of uh, uh, you know uh, fostering fostering desires to get married so um, then she was accused because she was five months pregnant and the elders got her married to a man called Joseph over yeah. to you you I will give you two minutes to respond to this all of these allegations will stick to the point so that we can have as fruitful conversation as possible and uh, do you have the stopwatch uh, brother Mtiaz? I don't have it yes I, don't have I do have to stopwatch I okay. do have yes can you put it up on the screen so Tahir Bhai can see it as well? Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know how to put but I think I, I let Tahir Bhai, I let Tahir Bhai to use his own time, no problem. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about that. I won't need two minutes oh. on to be honest. But I'll go ahead. Anyway. You, you have two minutes now, go ahead. I yeah, have the timer. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. So I think the key point is, is that in this passage, firstly, I don't really understand. I mean, your objections are really quite meaningless. He's clearly quoting the Injil and the narrative of the Injil here to prove that according to the narrative of the Injil, he's not. Um, it, the narrative presented by the by the Bible doesn't demonstrate that Isa alayhi salam is actually God. Um, he also says during the passage that the birth was without male intervention, which goes against what your claim is of what Hazrat Masimah believed, which is because you see to misrepresent him that he actually claimed to be, uh, that she had um, committed adultery or or, or through some other mechanism. It's quite clearly he's written here that she did actually have birth without a male intervention. And the the point I want to make in this particular passage, and I can uh, show the image if you wish, is that in this page, if you read a little bit above as usual and a little bit below, he's quite clearly quoting the Injil here that this is what happened according to the Bible. And he's showing the Christian that his birth doesn't make him God. Um, I particularly actually wanted to talk to you guys about the first point you made on your list of 10, which is about whether Maryam alayhi salam had uh, male and was male and female, because I think that's a much more interesting question. This is this is a point that if you just gave people a reference, they could read a page above and a page below and they'd easily see the context. So I don't know why such a lengthy debate is necessary on this. And, you know, as I said, he himself accepted the virgin birth. Um, whereas you, you've said in the past of none, uh, that he, you claimed that his view was that she did zina in the past, which is clearly false, even according to the passage that you recited. Okay, uh, over are to you, Jazway. Yeah, he's, yeah. Are uh, you done? Are that, you done, Tai Sahib? Yeah, yes, Tai yes. Sahib. Okay. Okay. Bismillah, Rahmat Rahim. Okay, Tai Sahib. First of all, um, I want to tell all the viewers, and obviously, I'm, I'm um, giving answer to you as well. In order for Mirza Ghulam to prove any of his claims, he must believe, must believe that Isa salam of the Islam and Jesus of the Bible are, are one and the same person. And the proof is, it is the Jesus of the Bible who has all the passion narrative and being put on the cross. And if Jesus of the Bible is not Isa salam of the Quran, then what is the source for Mirza Ghulam to say that Isa salam was put on the cross, however, did not die? Number one. Number two, it is the Jesus of the Bible, of the Gospels, who says that Elijah 
who says that Yahya has filled the place of Elijah because Mirza Ghulam has mentioned this thing multiple times in his book. He says that Jews were waiting for Elijah to come from heaven. But Isa salam, he corrected them that it is the Yahya, John, who has filled spiritually the place of Elijah. Now, all of this is where? All of this is found where Jesus of the Bible is saying this in the Gospel of Matthew, it is mentioned, and the Gospel of John, this thing is mentioned. Now, it means that Mirza Ghulam knows and he believes, and he must believe because he is proving his point by saying and by quoting Jesus of the Bible. And when he is quoting the point about Isa of the Islam, I give you one more example. All of this narrative that Maryam salam being married with Joseph. That is not a Quranic narrative, uh, you know, Tahir Sahib. This is a biblical narrative. And Mirza ah. Ghulam has accepted this narrative. Okay, now, I'm inviting you. Time and, up. Uh, this, is, this, is my, Time. this is my main response. That Mirza Ghulam knows and believes that Isa al-Islam of the Islam and Jesus of the Bible are one and the same person. I gave you these three examples. Time's up. Okay. Uh, over to you, Tahir Sahib. So... Thank you. Um, so a few points. Um, firstly, just because he makes some arguments in his 90 books. OK, sorry. Um, just because he makes some arguments quoting the Bible, for example, in respect to the of Hazrat Yahya, does not mean he believes that the Isa of the Quran is the same all as Jesus of the Bible. And I can provide you direct quotes where he quite clearly and categorically says that wherever I've written uh, about a Jesus, in a manner which may be accusatory or seems accusatory, it is the Jesus of the Bible that I'm referring to. It is not Nabi Isa alayhi salam of the Quran. If you give me five minutes, I can I can get that up for you. Um, and he clearly specifies that he's, yeah, the Quran has exonerated Isa, uh, Nabi Isa alayhi salam of the Quran from all such allegations. I'll provide that quote to you, not a problem, but obviously I've been caught off guard. I don't have that quote to hand at the moment. As for your particular question, which is that, well, where is it in the evidence of the Quran that Isa alayhi salam was an actual fact crucified? Um, and that because of he's using that narrative that he was put on the cross, he must have got that from the Bible, etc. It's very clear in the Quran. It says, "Wama qataluhu wama salabuhu walakin shubbi halahum." Walakin shubbi halahum means he was made to appear as though one killed or crucified. So obviously, if Isa alayhi salam is the subject of this verse, because that's the subject, says, "Wa alam salajim wa qauli him inna qatal nal masiha in Isa ibn Maryam Rasul Allah wa ma qataluhu wa ma salabuhu walakin shubbi halahum." Isa alayhi salam is the subject, says, "Walakin shubbi halahum," but he was made to appear to them as though. Obviously, if I say Adnan appears to me to look uh, very hale and hearty today, I must be looking at Adnan. I can't be looking at imtiyaz and say Adnan appears well and hale and hearty to me. So the fact that it says in the Holy Quran, in halahum, he appeared to them as so means that when I'm they were... up. okay, can I finish my sentence? Yes, please. When he was looking at the people on the when he, the people were looking at him, somebody on the cross, it was Isa alayhi salam who they were looking at who appeared to be dead. So the Quran itself mentions that Isa alayhi salam was was crucified. Well, as in put okay, on the cross. thank you. Thank you. As, as a moderator, quickly, uh, can I request from both of you to stay on that very quote? Because you guys are now going into a different topic, which is uh, the crucifixion narrative, which is a very interesting topic. Okay. But uh, in Tasab, you read a quote, or you made me translate a quote. Uh, can you stay on that quote and show us uh, why that quote is relevant? What's the problem with it? So Tahir Saab can respond to it. Okay. Uh, that quote. Uh, is still not fully addressed. So can yeah. you please stick to that quote so that we can move yeah. on, having dealt yeah. with that? What's the problem with that quote? Can you raise your yeah. points so that Tahir Saab can answer? Your time yeah. starts now. Yeah. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So uh, basically, uh, again, even though Tahir Saab mentioned a few things, and I do want you to respond to that, but as moderator said, inshallah, I'll stick with that quote. Now, First of all, I need to establish that that quotation Mirza Ghulam believes. So we cannot say that he was quoting something from the Injil. No, Mirza Ghulam is giving his own point of view. Because before we discuss the content of the quote, the first thing is to establish that the quote is representing the belief of Mirza Ghulam. That's the main thing. So inshallah, I'm going to present another reference to support the same reference because both of them have the same story. Okay. 
and inshallah i will going i'm going to establish first that in this quotation it is the belief of mirza ghulam himself okay now as people as you can see in the screen tahir sahib uh it is from al hakam inshallah i have the original as well al hakam 1902 24th of july it's page number 16th of the shumara okay now basically this is a long quotation i don't have time but you see look at this one is sawal ka jawab you see is jagah tab an ye sawal paida hota hai ke bawajood muqqad ahad aur nazar ke jo maryam ke maa baap ne khud maryam ki taraf se tha phir kyu maryam ne khawin kiya aur taraz ke hukm ko tod diya mirza ghulam is addressing a question that how come that there was a promise from the parents from maryam herself that she is not going to marry then why did she get married so basically same question okay is is sawal ka jawab kisi padri sahib ne safai se nahi diya no christian has given a clear answer for this question lekin haal hi mein mujhe ek fazil yahudi ki kitab mili hai but recently i have discovered a book of a learned jew jisne sahi taur pe is aqeeda ka hal kar di is uqda ka hal kar diya which have rightly solved this puzzle okay time wo kehta hai and after that the whole story is exactly the same which i have quoted before so just to summarize in 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 few seconds i am establishing that that quotation is representing the belief of mirza ghulam it is not about any injili thing can i can okay. i get up to ask your request that we increase the time for both just to to 3 minutes because these are kind of complex okay. topics and okay. you know i don't go, want to go, see him cut off on anything yeah anymore. i don't i don't mind yes go ahead 3 minutes to you tires up <clears throat> so again i mean i don't uh, that's uh, the fact is that he he's clearly presenting the view that according to the gospel it the narrative of the gospel predisposes a particular belief now as for the holy quran it is absolutely clear that um on the differences in the narrative for example are well known as you know the quran does not mention yusuf najar at all um but it's it's very obvious that hazrat masimaw did believe in the virgin birth and i don't know why you're not raising you know that was the, the original point i think this is kind of a distraction um how the people in the social environments and people behave to a virgin birth which is obviously an exceptionally rare thing and the first thing people do is start making slanderous accusations at, uh, at the pure hazrat maryam that's uh, the social dynamics of that which is what hazrat masimaw is commenting upon is uh is a matter ultimately of perspective and opinion and of uh, the what what the bible presents and in this particular passage from what i take from it and how i understand it's quite clear is that he's saying that the biblical narrative is such that it actually lends a person to inclining towards such false accusations and he's doing this in response to the fact that christians in the subcontinent at the time were asserting the divinity of jesus and so he was demonstrating that according to your own bible um the that there are questions open about hazrat maryam's virgin birth according to the bible but he made absolutely clear that the quran exonerates hazrat maryam as we all know very well um and that therefore it is the quran in actual fact that is the true defender of hazrat isa alayhi salam i i'm also going to pull up the quote for you about isa alayhi salam the nabi isa of the quran being different to jesus of the gospel if you just give me a few seconds um you can continue if, if he wants to do that i can bring bring it up in my next one so are you done tahir sahib yeah please go for it okay bismillah rahman rahim so inshallah my time starts now adnan bhai so i go okay. one by one what, what tahir sahib has mentioned okay point number 1 i'm not sure that without giving any evidence tahir sahib are still insisting that mirza ghulam is giving the gospel narrative tahir sahib i have given you this second reference just to establish that mirza ghulam is actually answering a question he is not giving any because he says that the christians cannot answer this what question that why did maryam alaihi salam got married despite the promise they made to allah that she will not get married and he says there is ka sahi hal the right solution for this problem so this is again the, it has nothing to do with this uh, what tahir sahib is saying that it was just go, it was not a gospel narrative i'm trying to establish first that this is the belief of mirza ghulam number 2 he say quran is very clear this is exactly tahir sahib our point that quran is very clear quran has no such thing as yusuf narrative 
Mirza Ghulam adopted the Yusuf narrative from the gospel and then now he trying to reconcile. He first, he first accepted the gospel narrative of Yusuf and now trying to reconcile two things. That on the one hand, she has to stay virgin. On the other hand, she got married. He's trying to reconcile these two things. Why? Because he got himself in trouble because of accepting the gospel narrative. That's the point here, Taisab. And the next thing is virgin. But inshallah, in, in the next turn, I will present that Mirza Ghulam, how he disrespected. I wish that he could have simply denied the virgin birth, like Sir Sayyid Ahmad. That was simple. But he went a step further to ridicule and mock the virgin birth I said. Inshallah, I'll give you in the next term. And then he says that uh, uh, how the people were blaming. Quran has already, I said, listen very carefully. Quran already clarified. When people raise objection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let this child, Isa al-Islam, to speak to them and to declare the purity of Maryam al-Islam. So Quran is very clear. We don't need to buy the gospel narrative and to make the things unnecessarily complicated, which Mirza Ghulam did. And then he says that, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, this is all Taishai mentioned. So, so Taishai, first you need to admit, that's the main point, that the passage I presented, that is giving Mirza Ghulam's own point of view. There is nothing, it, it cannot be just burst out by saying it was a gospel narrative. Okay, so can you please read the top of page 380 of Nassim Adal, please? Okay, before, not, before, 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 yeah, go yeah, on. Before, can, we, before, we, before, my head, my Urdu is not very fluent. So, okay. we, we, we will try our best to translate it as accurately as possible. Uh, but the point, uh, Imtaz Saab is making is that, uh, that quote which has been taken from Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, uh, is not biblical. That detail he gave, the narrative, for example, the Jews are not to blame alone it is mary who is also to, also to blame because she had this dream and she hid the dream from the jewish people and when she was five months pregnant uh, she revealed uh, the dream then and then uh, she was married to joseph by elders this is not biblical this is not to be found in any of the biblical narrative so it only came from Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. Therefore, it has to be his own belief because he's the one writing it. These are his thoughts because they're not biblical, they're not Quranic. This detail that Mary is also to blame, okay, this is not biblical. This is not in the Bible. This is neither Quran nor the Bible. This is Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. That's the point in Tiazba is raising. So, can you please address that when you. So, your time starts now, three minutes. Go ahead, please. So, from my understanding, again, I, I'm not so sure why it's such a great insult to say a young girl who found herself pregnant made and made a effectively a, a error of judgment with respect to what the future might hold. I mean, she was 12, 13 at the time when she, with a virgin birth, occurred according to the Christian narrative, at least, and it's likely to be true. Um, and obviously, she was scared and afraid, and 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 that's the decision she took out of fear that she would remain silent about the matter. I'm not really so sure how that's an accusation. I would like to read this from Jangi Muqaddas, um, Ruhani Khazain, volume 6, page 170. Hazrat Masih Maud says, You say that I have as if insulted Hazrat Masih to some extent by using abusive words with reference to him. This is a misunderstanding of yours. I believe Hazrat Masih to be a true prophet, a chosen one and beloved servant of God. What I said in retaliation was in keeping with your own faith. Hence it is you, not me, who stand accused of the accusation that you level at me. Um, I also wanted to um, also go back and raise a point which you guys seem to want to brush over, which is um, Hazrat Masih Al's crucifixion. And I, and I want to highlight this because it is you guys who raise the issue of the crucifixion narrative. I pointed out that the statement in the Quran, وَلَكِنْ شُبِّ halahum, is in the Quran and it refers to Isa al -Islam. So if Isa al -Islam appeared to be crucified, it means that he was the one they were looking at on the cross. Now, I understand you don't want to cover that topic, but I do want to highlight from the that you're the one who raised that. And I think that to deviate from this, which is a much more central issue of difference between Ahmadi Muslims and non Ahmadi Muslims, which is the crucifixion narrative, in preference to Hazrat Masim Al's commentary uh, and possible thoughts, possible interpretation, possible reading of books beyond the Bible, for example, the biographies. And he was an exceptionally well-read individual who would have read many more books than you, myself, put together. So 
and he, you know, and presenting what is perhaps in Jewish literature, perhaps in Christian literature. I just don't see how that's such a central point of difference between Ahmadis and non ahmadi Muslims, because you guys yourselves may pers personally accept that if Hazrat Maryam as a 12, 13 year old girl went through a virgin birth, she might want to stay silent about it. And because she was scared, she was afraid, she didn't know what the consequences were because she was dedicated to the temple. She didn't know she'd be thrown out of the covenant. She didn't know the slanderous. She was aware that slanderous accusations would be made against her. Many young women were made silent in that particular situation. I don't really understand how it's uh, an acu a point of major difference between Ahmadi Muslims and non ahmadi Muslims. And this is kind of my issue with you. We from True Islam have, have laid out debating terms to you on Khatm e and on Wafat e Masih, the death of Messiah. And, and Imtiaz is unwilling to come to an actual formal debate. And I really do I like the way you're conducting this stream, Adnan, firstly. I do want to say that. Uh, I really appreciate that balance you're giving. And it's all calm and nice and relaxed. Um, and, and, and I understand you've, ra you've raised this topic you want to cover. But really, this is a nukta. This is such a small issue. And I do want to also get you to read this particular page, top of page 380, because my Urdu isn't very good. If you go to your, 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 your time is up, so you need to finish. Yes. When, when you're ready. When you're ready. Go ahead. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So so uh, Tai Sab, you are conceding that uh, that passage is clearly Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's belief. Those are his own views. I, no, I'm saying, those... Sorry, I'm really sorry. Just clarify. I'm saying yeah. he says quite clearly in this quote and top page three eighty. He says that the Jews raise these allegations, but the Quran answers them. He's going through kind of what these allegations of the Christians raise. Yeah. Jews raised, and he says in that particular quote, in the passage related to the passage you're writing, in the Al-Hakam quote, he says the Quran answers these questions. So yes, that's we, we, that's we understand that. We understand that. But those details he gave uh, in clarifying what you think he was clarifying, uh, those details he gave where he claims that she had a dream and the angel appeared to her and Jews are not to, be, to blame alone for her slander. She was also to blame. Uh, do you believe these ideas are Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's or own beliefs, uh, independent of the Bible and the Quran? Is that your question to me? Yeah, because I want I'm going to pose the same question to Intia yeah. Saab as well because he seemed, yeah because we're dealing with that specific quote we we read in the beginning of the stream. Uh, Intia Saab has made a case um, that those are insults against Mary. Those That's are fine. insults. Wait, wait, so so he, he, he claims those are insults. We're going to ask him why he believes so. But first thing is you conceding uh, that those are indeed Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani's own belief, those details, those specific details he gives, that Mary was to also blame for the slander, not the Jews alone, because she was hiding that information from her community. And then as a result, when she became five months pregnant, which actually goes against the Quran, by the way, because the Quran says she's, she was only accused uh, after the birth of Jesus, not when she was pregnant. So the Quran is very categorical on that. So uh, those details in, in particular, do you concede that those are that's Mirza Saab's own beliefs? On. That's the difference yeah. between you and I in terms of when the accusation happened, but, and I can prove from the Quran. Um, okay. I, can, I share my screen, if you don't mind. I've, yeah, I but w w first we're going to go to Mirza So Okay, yeah. fine. Sure. So you can you can you can do that in your time. You will have time. Uh, you will have three minutes to do that. So so again, do you concede that those are Mirza Saab's views, his own views? Because they're not in the Bible. They're not in the Quran. Those no. details are not there. No, we have Sira, and and I, from my understanding, what he's presenting there is his understanding of the allegations that are made and the narrative built by the Jews from the Sira from the Bible. And he says quite so, clearly in the same book that the Quran answers these allegations. And I'm, I'm, I want to present that quote to you in my own time. Sure. But is, is it possible for you to present those details from a source, from a, from an ancient source? No, either either it's not. a... Of course not. Okay. So those are clearly Mirza Saab's own views. No, 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 no. If you read something and then you yeah. say, and you say, this is a narrative, etc., you present it. And then you say, the Quran answers these and you believe in the Quran and you prescribe the Quran. You say, right. So then you're saying that this narrative, which has been built up, which I may have read from this X, Y, Z book, which I'm not presenting in the references and I don't have knowledge of, it doesn't mean necessarily that you that you believe in it. That's obvious. Yeah. So, so that narrative. This is the point. That narrative uh, that yeah. Mary was also to blame 
and she hid that information. And when she was five months pregnant, the people found out. And then that, that's when she revealed her dream and she was married off to Joseph. These details specifically are not yeah. found in the Quran, not they are not in Judeo-Christian literature, not even, even in the Bible. So the, the, the reason why I keep repeating this question is, where did Mirza Saab get those details from? Are these no his own beliefs? I have no idea. He, he must have read, he read, he had a huge library and he was extensively well read. And you will often, uh, when reading Hazim Asimah, you'll come across passages and you'll wonder, where is this from? And you do a bit of research and you find that it's absolutely okay. So, 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 I, so I, would, I would suggest that now you're a historian, go away, do some more reading, do some more study on this particular topic. You might find the books that he was he had been reading. But what he's presenting is, and he many times he will write in his writings, I have read books of Jews making allegations against Hazrat Maryam on this point and this point and this point. Because just to really briefly, you have to understand Hazrat Masimal spent the first 40 years of his life reading and compiling arguments against Islam and against the people within Islam. He said at one point that okay. I collected thousands of objections against Islam. Um, so, so you have to understand he's extremely well read, and just saying, well, because he quoted something which he didn't reference, therefore that's his personal view is quite amateurish, I think. Yeah, uh, to, to our knowledge, I've, I've been I've been I've been a student of comparative religion. I've read pretty much some of the major uh, histories of the early church and Christian uh, biblical narratives and gospel narratives, and you know, no even a pop promise. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not claiming to have read everything, but we. So, so to date, we. I haven't seen those references or those ideas. But now we have your clear answer. Thank you so much for being patient. Over to you, Imtiaz. Imtiaz Saab, you have heard uh, Tahir Saab's uh, answer that those details are. Uh, he's he's not fully aware where those details came from. To Mirza Saab, Mirza Walam Muhammad Kadiani put those details down. Your views on that? Three minutes. Your, your three minutes start now. Okay, Bismillah rahman rahim So first of all, Alhamdulillah, I uh, presented and I supported my claim that these are not the biblical views. This is not the gospel narrative. These are the views of Mirza Ghulam Qadiani himself. These are his own views. And I gave a simple evidence, as people can still see on the screen, Mirza Ghulam said that he did research and after that he came up with this uh, research done by a Jew and he is accepting that research and all this narrative he is building from that research. So basically these are the views of Mirza Ghulam himself. This is not the gospel narrative. It's very clear to everyone. Now, next thing was, uh, Thay Saab said, what is the problem in that? Thay Saab, we have many problems, but let me just point out to you three main problems in this passage, by the way. Number one, when Mirza Ghulam is saying that the blame is not just on the Jews, Blame is on the Maryam as well. That's a big accusation. And he's saying that Maryam is the one who gave opportunity to the Jews so they can raise this uh, blame of fornication or zina. That's a so because of this narrative, Mirza Ghulam has to conclude by saying this, that Maryam has to be blamed as well, number one. That's, that's very problematic. And number two, there is no such thing as a vision narrative. Jamaat Ahmadi is always claiming that Quran is the hakam. I want Tahir Sahib in his turn to present to us that where is this vision narrative in the Quran. This Mirza Ghulam, and this is a proof by the way, that Mirza Ghulam is taking other things and they're putting them on the top of the Quran and he is interpreting Quran on the top of, uh, through these things, which are clearly against the Quranic narrative. So this vision narrative is not a Quranic narrative. And next thing is, he says that obviously, I have said that if a young woman of 13 years old, if she be as a child, etc. I have understand this point. I'm saying it again. Quran has clarified everything. That as soon as she bore this child, Isa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the child speak in the cradle. And it declared, it declared the purity. We don't need to go. We do not have any question to begin with. Quran has already answered all the questions. That when this child is born, this child has testified to the purity of his mother. So end of the story. So no, we do not have any questions. And I've already told you. And, and lastly, I would say this. I have understand this point. Because Mirza Ghulam accepted the gospel narrative of Yusuf the carpenter. And on the other hand, 
Quran is also clear that Maryam was dedicated to the temple. He is trying to reconcile these two things. Why he got in this trouble? Because of accepting the gospel narrative. Time That's up. The key Time point. up. Time up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Imtiaz Sab, I have a question for you. Where is the insult yeah. in this? Where is the insult in this? Yeah. Okay, let me uh, put it on the screen again so then I can, inshallah, show you. Yeah, I, as quick as possible so that I can go to yeah, Paisal. So for well. example, yeah. first thing is, first thing is, that because of Mirza said, Hazrat Maryam pe tomat lagai gaya aur is tomat ne Hazrat Isa ki viladat ke ajuba ko khak me mila diya. So the first problem is that the miraculous birth of Jesus, it was ruined, it was humiliated, khak me mila diya. Why? Because of Mirza Ghulam accepting the gospel narrative. So that is first problem. The second problem is that Mirza Ghulam is accusing Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam that she has also blame on her. Galti uski bhi hai. Usne moka diya. This is a blasphemy. There is no such thing in the Quran. So Adnan bhai, just to, these are two main problems. Number one, because okay. of this narrative, the miraculous birth has been ruined. And number two, okay. because of this narrative, the blame is going on the Maryam according to Mirza Ghulam. So, so Tahir Saab, over to you. Uh, I will give you three minutes. So his point is basically the fact that Mirza Saab wrote that uh, Jesus is uh, the incredible nature of his birth has been ruined by Mary's, uh, uh, you know, Mary's uh, error in this, that she hid this information. She gave the opportunity to the Jews to accuse her. So this is where the insult is, which is, which is against the Quranic narrative. That's his view. Over to you. Three minutes to you. So, so you, thank you. You've already referenced the fact that he actually was talking about Jewish literature, which is where he read this accusation and this picture. Um, if you just, you were on page 381, I can see that. If you could just scroll up to page 379 and start reading from the bottom of it onto 380, I'd be most grateful. And that should answer all of your questions. So, uh, we have no problem, but we want you to explain that with regard to this point, we have not heard anything from your side that then Mirza Ghulam. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I, Thai 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 because Thai Thai, just to explain, Thai Thai, the question is that the question is Mirza Ghulam is saying that Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam, she also has the blame. She gave the opportunity to the Jews to accuse her of fornication. And because of this, the miraculous. I, I understand. I think you guys really don't understand how rhetoric and and uh, and, and discourse and argument happens, and or either you, you do understand, but you're pretending not to understand. It's obvious when you're looking at objections, what you do is you present the case that is made against someone, and then you demonstrate its flaws and errors. So it's called steel manning an argument. The straw manning an argument is also steel manning an argument. And steel manning an argument means you take the other person's view, you present it in the best way possible. And then you demonstrate its flaws. Now, if you go to the top of page 380, which is the section before the section you're reading, or I can just share my screen. I've got the quote right here. And if you let me share my screen, then I can do please, so. Please, please do that. Yes. So it should you should be able to see it. I don't know why it's not sharing. Um, alternatively, I can. Tell yeah, me, tell me, I put on the screen. Which, which you page you want? I've only got a screenshot. Um, <coughs> And you've got the full book because I saw you've got the full book there. If you just go up, went up one page earlier to the top of page 380 of Nasima Dawud, and you read, can that you go to 379? That's yeah, what is the title I was asking I, for. I prefer you go, I don't prefer just to get two lines. I prefer you to go a bit above, a bit below, and read the full context of the statement that he's making. And you'll see very clearly that he's saying, Gear, and you're going to have to forgive my Urdu. Maybe you can read it in seven. Yeah, yeah. Go. I mean, don't, don't worry about Urdu. I mean, it's we understand terrible. that. Yeah, right? yeah. You won't be able to understand yeah. anything. I mean, you, you can explain your point. We can, we can, we can, we can check it if we need to. Dur karne ke liye Quran Sharif or Injil me Hazrat Isa or so. Look, I prefer if one of you guys read it because you're most much, much better. Okay, uh, Imtiaz Sab, can you quickly read it? Okay, uh, it says uh, the one on the screen or? No, 379 where Tahir where, uh, where Sahib is asking you to read from. So which, yeah. which line you Tahir Sahib want me to read? I don't know. You know, two lines above, two lines below and go through this, please. And get it on your screen, please. So you, we can all see what you're reading as well, please. 
Okay, give me one second. Let me. Uh, Tires of three minutes. Tires of three minutes are over. To be fair, uh, Imtiaz up took half of it. So let's let's take this quote out of the time. No, and yeah. if you just read it, yeah, that's what my point is. Yeah, we, we we will read it and we'll come back to you for another three minutes so that you can complete your point. We will read it, and and this will be taken out of your time. So can you read it, Imtiaz Sab? Yeah, I'm just going to. I'm just going to put on the screen first, so inshallah people can see as well. So what we are reading. So, Rohani uh, Khazain, volume 19, page 379. I do, I do also want to make a quick point, which is you guys kept claiming that he said that Hazrat Maryam Salam committed zina, and you've said that multiple times, and now it seems you're admitting that that's absolutely false. Um, no, no, uh, that's a separate question. If you want to raise is, that, you, can't you have the right to do it. You can't quote contradictory statements and. No, no, we will in that boat. Either, either he said or he didn't, and he didn't. And it's quite clear from these quotes that he's no, saying that. We, we, show of that course, he, of course, boat. Mirza, of course, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani did not say that Maryam alayhi salam committed adultery. Absolutely not. We never said that. Yeah. What we're saying is the the consequences of his statement where he said that Maryam alayhi salam was doing tirna with Joseph Najjar before nikah. This is we, what we uh, said leads yeah. to or alludes to that particular uh, allegation. Okay, this is what. Go to. I actually wanted to read the top of three eighty. I don't know why we're going to take. We're going to take another three minutes just reading through all of this. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. I hope you understood. I, 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 yeah, I, got I hope you understand. Yeah. Yeah. So we're I'm not sorry. saying we're not saying Mirza Sab. We're not saying Mirza Sahib wrote in these words that Maryam alayhi salam committed adultery. A'udhu billah, thumma a'udhu billah, naqil kufr, kufr nabashuk. But what we said that the, the consequences of his statement that Maryam alayhi salam was going around or pirna with Joseph the carpenter before nikah, before marriage, it, it leads to that, it leads to that conclusion. This is the point. So, uh, Thai Sahib, uh, so Thai Sahib, just to, just to be very clear. So, my question was, that I, because I'm claiming that Mirza Ghulam believes what I presented. So you said that from these pages, you are going to produce something to disprove what I'm saying, right? Yeah, if you read it. Okay, please tell me what, what to read. Tell me, please. What to read? I don't know, top four lines. So, Masih ki padaish, so from the top? Yeah, go for it. Okay, it, it says Masih ki padaish bhi koi aisa amar nahi hai jisse unki khudai mustambit ho sake isi dhokha ke dur karne ke liye quran e sharif aur injil mein hazrat e isa aur yahya ki wiladat ka kissa ek hi jagah bayan kiya gaya taake padhne wala samajh le ke dono wiladatein agarche batore khar ke aadat hain lekin inme se koi khuda nahi ban sakta warna chahiye ke yahya bhi jiska isai yohanna naam rakhte hain khuda ho Balke ye dono amar is baat ki taraf ishara hai. You want me to go on? That's it. That's exactly right. So what is it? I did not get. Yeah, so your point, Tahir Sahib, he's asking for your point from this. My point is that the allegation that the Quran is relating to is relating to the sonship of Jesus and the way that one of the methods by which the Quran does it, it relates to Hazrat Yahya's birth as miraculous in a different way along with Hazrat Isa al Islam's birth. Um, I don't really understand that's that's the allegation that the Quran refutes. Um, and you made a point earlier, which is that because he refers to use of Najjar, which is not mentioned in the Holy Quran, therefore he's putting that above the Quran. This is a really nonsensical approach. The Ahmadi viewpoint is that if a perspective and a position which is not does not go against the Quran, does not go against the Quran, uh, is is uh, is uh, is accepted. That can be accepted. So the Qur'an is the hakam. In other words, if it disagrees with the position, then the Qur'an is always to be preferred. Now, this narrative of Hazrat Maryam keeping her pregnancy hidden because she was fearful of the consequences and inadvertently uh, giving some form of a license to people to wag their tongues as she grew to six, seven, eight months pregnant, I think this is just plainly obvious. I mean, I, I don't even... <clears throat> I don't see why this is a major objection. He, he's not saying that she was culpable of a zina, God forbid, which is the allegation that the Quran deals with. He's saying that in her innocence, she hid the dream that she had had because she was fearful of the consequences of, and she was, she didn't know what was going to happen. I don't even understand. Again, I come back to the same point. 
The main difference between Ahmadi Muslims and non-Ahmadi Muslims aren't these points of biographical detail about Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. It's about the question of the crucifixion. Was Jesus actually on the cross? And you guys have raised that issue. And I have demonstrated from the Quran that Jesus was on the cross. Whether I can shrubbi hadahum, he appeared to them as so. So I, I don't know why we, you guys are so fixated on these minor <laughs> biographical points, nuances, of whether Hazrat Maryam was silent or not. I'm also amazed that you guys think that Hazrat Maryam was seven or eight months pregnant, heavily pregnant, okay, and somehow nobody noticed and nobody raised allegations until she had a baby. I mean, it's just totally bizarre. It's quite obvious if a heavily if a person's heavily pregnant and she's 13 years old and she's dedicated to the temple and not married, it's quite obvious that people are going to ask questions. I mean, it's just normal human behavior. So you're telling me that up until nine months, nobody raised any questions about the fact that there was a young woman in the temple, dedicated to the temple, unmarried, according to you, and that she, she nobody asked any questions. That's more unbelievable than anything. So, so, okay. I mean, so it, it just seems like nonsensical minor points of biographical detail, which have no bearing on the fundamental difference between you and I. Yeah, ties up. The issue is the issue is you're absolutely right that some statements can be inque- inconsequential to belief and differences. But the issue is when statements are categorical and they do have a direct um, consequence uh, for beliefs, then obviously those statements have to be taken seriously. So if Mirza Saab, for example, made a statement that Mary had a part in her own slander, this in itself is obviously not a biblical idea. It's not Quranic, absolutely not. Okay. Also, that the fact that the birth of Jesus, the miraculous birth of Jesus, was ruined or let's, humiliated. Let's, let's get into yeah. that, by the way. Let's get into that. Yeah. It was there yeah. that was yeah. female. That's that's an actual. If you want to talk about Mary, I think that's a real meaty, nice thing. What's the difference in miracles between us and you? Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Go for it. Uh, not by, yeah. uh, not by. Yeah. I want to respond to what Tides have said before. Yes. Is it okay? So you, shall, I, shall I start t- the time again? Because uh, you guys, yes. otherwise, it's going to get into. So let me give you uh, three minutes over to you. Start now. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Because this question is being continuously asked by um, Tahir Sahib that what is the problem in it if she was eight months pregnant, the pregnancy was very, you know, visible. Why would not people take notice, etc.? So, Tahir Sahib, listen this answer very carefully. This is the difference between the Ahmadiyya and the Muslims. We stop ourselves with the details and the answers Quran has given us or Sunnah has clarified to us. We do not go beyond that limit and then make ourselves into, put ourselves into trouble and try to overcomplicate things and this is exactly what trying to point out when Mirza Ghulam did not stop what Quran has said he went beyond that and now these are not the things which are additional or supportive to Quran no these are anti-Quran you, you know why number one according to Quran the miraculous birth of Isa is a ayah it is a sign from Allah and according to Mirza Ghulam the miraculous birth of Isa salam, it was ruined and it got stained. So these are two opposite views. Was it an ayah from the Allah or was it something which was humiliated or stained? And secondly, this, this thing saying that Maryam alayhi salam, she has a share in blame and she is the one who gave opportunity to the Jews so they can raise this allegation. These two things are, Sahib, I'm trying to repeat them again and again. These are anti-Quran. These are not additional to Quran. In this case, Mirza Ghulam or Ahmadiyya, at least in this case, they are not making Quran the hakam. They are not stopping what Quran said. And, the, and why the problem occurred? Because Mirza Ghulam accepted not only the gospel narrative, he went beyond that. And Tai Sahib, still, people are not fully sure are you accepting that these are the views of Mirza Ghulam because you are saying different things? Now, let me say it last time, Tai Saib. Mirza Ghulam is giving his research. He said that he went through the books of the learned Jews and then he's concluding all of that. These are the conclusions given by Mirza Ghulam. They have nothing to do with the uh, biblical Messiah or no. They, these are the views and conclusions of Mirza Ghulam that how Mirza Ghulam is reconciling that Maryam was not to marry, but she did get married. 
he is reconciling these two things. So these are the views of Mirza Ghulam and they are anti-Quran. That's why we have the problem. And as we as the Muslims, we, we, we believe what Quran said. As soon as Maryam gave birth to the child, the child testified to the purity of the mother. End of the matter. We don't want to go in any other extra details and to put a blame Ma'az Allah and Maryam Islam. So this is the problem we have here. Okay. Sorry, I, I was sorry, I was muted. Tires up the three minutes start now. Sorry, I was muted. Okay, so you know, I, I, I just the difference. Can I start? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so the real difference between us and you is not that you accept the Quran and uh, we go into unnecessary details. We, we, in actual fact, accept the Quran. Anybody who's watched all of our streams, you'll see a few things. One, we have bravery, we come on your streams, you never come on our streams. Okay, because you, you're actually the only one who did was Adnan. I must give it to him. At least he turned up once. Imtiaz, you don't have ca you. I'm afraid you haven't shown much courage with us. We hold streams. We call you. You don't come. But we come to all of your streams, bar a few. And I should also clarify, we are not banned from coming to your streams. We did not come to previous streams because, in actual fact, we were fed up with the way we were treated, continuously abused, continually cut off. Uh, and continually condescended to, especially by the moderator Imran, unfortunately, Dr. Imran. Um, so as for this particular issue, we, the difference between us and you is not that we do not accept that. We actually base all of our views on the Quran. We, like every other people, th there's nothing that forbids you in Islam from looking at secondary sources and understanding them in light of the Quran. This is an actual fact. When you get to the true understanding of the Quran, you often find that the evidences in science, in history, actually support what the Quran says. So this is something that I think we can all agree on. Um, in fact, the actual difference between you and us is that we accept what the Quran says, and you guys have beliefs which go against the Quran and are Christian in nature. So you believe that Isa al Islam is in heaven for 2,000 years. You believe that contrary to what the Quran says, where it says he's dead, you say he still lives. It says in the Holy Quran, um, him and his mother no longer eat food, but you believe that he obviously must continue to eat food because he's alive. He says, Kana la kulan it ta'am. You know, it says lots of things in the Holy Quran which you guys don't accept about Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Um, and, and we accept those things. So in terms of this particular passage, he's presenting research which he has done. And he is giving a, uh, a perspective which is from the Jewish perspective, from one aspect of the Jewish understanding. They were justified to some extent um, in their understanding from a historical perspective because... Uh, the way in which the site, the way in which Hazrat Maryam's case was handled by the Jews of the time, actually lent itself open to accusations, um, and that this may have, for some Jews with wagging tongues, <laughs> may have resulted in them misunderstanding or not understanding the sign. I would also like to put it to you. I would guess, Harbour, guess that you guys don't even understand why Hazrat Isa al Islam was born without a father. What was the actual sign which was being shown? I'd be really interested to see whether you actually know that. I don't think you guys really understand why Hazrat Isa was, was born without a father. So the key point here, again, I bring it back to this particular point. And the last two things I want to say is that one, again, the crucifixion narrative. Um, Hazrat Isa salam being on the cross is mentioned in the Holy Quran. It says, well, I can should be halahum. He appeared to them. So that is the main difference between us and you. We accept the crucifixion narrative in the Quran because it says he appeared to time, them. So time up. Time Just very last last small thing I'll say is you yes. have made yes. you have done tweets with Nandai. You have said that we as Ahmadis have two choices, either abandon the cult or commit kufr by attributing adultery to Mary. And that was a tweet Correct. made on December. Correct. I did so, say that. So yeah. we don't we don't we don't attribute adultery to Hazrat Maria Mele Salam. Um after the and we're going to the Nata, for example. But again, I want to just make a point. The real discussion. I want to go in. 15, I want to go in fifteen twenty minutes. I don't want to spend my entire night here if that's okay. So I would love to get onto the topic, especially of the biology question. I'm a doctor. Um, I'm I'm happy to talk about that with you if you wish. I'm not going to go into medical details, but I will only I will reserve myself only to Quranic evidence. Okay, thank you. So, so I have a few couple of questions. Firstly, uh, you're right, absolutely right. I did tweet that and I stand by it, as I clarified earlier, that the consequences of what Mirza Saab wrote are basically an insinuation that Mary was indeed uh, hanging around with a man who she wasn't married to before marriage. This in itself is a huge uh, insult and I believe it's kufr. 
I mean, such a statement constitutes kufr. This is why I tweeted what I tweeted. But coming back to the topic, very quickly, I have, you know, you said you believe in the Quran and you follow the Quranic narrative. But in that quote, which Imtiaz presented, there are at least three contradictions with the Quran, at least, at least three, if not more. I mean, we can, if we contemplate, we, we can possibly point out more. Uh, and I would like to hear your response on that before we yeah. go to Imtiaz Sahib. For right. example, the first contradiction is that uh, the miracle, the, the, the wonderful birth of Jesus was humiliated, okay, or ruined. I, I would like to know how that is the case. Ruined for who? Okay, number one. Number two, and why does it matter if it's ruined? Ruined to who? Okay, number two, the fact that Mary is herself to blame, partly blame for her slander. Okay, this contradicts the Quran directly. Okay, uh, because Mary, the Quran defends her against the slander because she's not to blame. Okay, just like uh, just like Eve, Hawa, uh, alayhi salam, was not to blame for uh, the mistake of Adam, alayhi salam. The Bible says she was to blame. The Quran says, no, she wasn't to blame. It was the man, actually, okay, who took the decision, right? Man, the man led uh, the woman, okay? So uh, this is a contradiction. And the third contradiction that I can see is that uh, five months pregnancy, that Mary was five months, for my, and then that, that's when the people found out. But the Quran tells us that the people questioned, you know, when they rebuked her, saying, Ya Ukhta Harun, what is this? Your, your family is not of loose character. So uh, Quran states that it was after the birth of Isa a.s. when Mary came carrying Jesus in her arms that they questioned her, not when she was five months pregnant. There is nothing in the Quran or the Bible. So these are, how would you like to highlight these contradictions, uh, direct by, contradictions uh, in the Quran? Adnan, by, yeah. uh, Adnan, by, yeah. Adnan by, just, to, just to add to this third point, Tai Sahib, please, uh, my request to you, please listen this very carefully, uh, Tai Sahib, please. According to Mirza Ghulam, he accepted that, that according to Taurat, the law of Moses, which was the Sharia before our Sharia, obviously the people of Moses, Mary was one of them, they were living according to the law of Moses. Law of Moses was the law of Allah for them. According to law of Moses, marriage or nikah in pregnancy was haram. So it means that according to the law of Allah, Mirza Ghulam is accusing our mother Maryam alayhi salam that she, now if somebody's marriage is haram, if somebody's nikah is illegitimate, what, what that would be called? If she was living with Yusuf the carpenter with an illegitimate with an illegitimate nikah, what that would be called? Because they have children after that. Mirza gives the names of those children and he calls them the real brothers and sisters of Jesus. I don't know why, because we all know that there's difference between the step brothers and the real brothers. He said that all of them, they were the real siblings of Jesus. So Tarsa, please address this point. This nikah was haram. Are you, do you believe that Sayyidah Maryam salam committed a haram act? Okay, to, to be fair, uh, okay, uh, before you no, get to I'll this do, point. I'll, yeah. I'll do it in three minutes, don't worry. Okay, okay go ahead. Why are you giving me too much, huh? Okay. Okay, go ahead. so uh, you guys, in all honesty, you guys kind of, forgive me, I don't want to insult you or anything, but you guys do kind of have the approach of those who slandered Hazrat Maryam. You know, you take a statement which is that she was she walked with Yusuf Najjar. She walked around, or she had walked with him. This was after the Nata, so she, this was after the Rishta had been established. She met him and may have walked with him and had a conversation, and that this is normal in Jewish practice. You take that, and now you're saying that she lived with him. I no, mean, that uh, the, the, he, there no, is no clarity. Sorry, there's no clarity of that. That no, she walked is, and had conversation. No, no, if she, if the no. person met, if a person, if I said I walked with the person. That doesn't mean I live with a person, right? So you're taking uh, no, words, you're, you're taking the but, words of your mouth. But Mirza Saab in the same court, you exactly in the same court. Mirza Saab in the same court uh, qualifies that a uh, very often such relationships or such pirna constituted sexual relationships in that very same court, in that very paragraph, in that very paragraph. He Sorry? did not say 
he did not say you have to pr provide the evidence. Not as I said, I'm not. Gonna... Yeah, in that very paragraph, Mirza says such relationships constituted uh, sexual relationships and ended up in pregnancy. In yeah. that very paragraph, yeah, he, that's that's correct. He said that this happens yeah. with other people and can happen with other people, but he was absolutely clear this does not happen with Hazrat Maryam. The point. No, he no, he didn't. <laughs> no, 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 he didn't no, no, clarify. No, no, no. I type. <laughs> Guys, let me finish. I... He's he's so you've made multiple points. I need to get through them if that's okay. This this aspect of Pirna, okay, he was saying that the 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 approach of which the Jews had, which was that the Rishta happens and then they are able to meet and walk and talk. Sometimes and have sometimes, sex and have no, sex. Yeah. No, no, no. He said that sometimes this attitude, this was a weakness of the uh, of the previous uh, um, teachings and the pro it was not as perfect and complete. No, as no. Islam. These are your these are your interpretations of the passage. The passage is self-explanatory. Yeah. Adnan, by let me. Adnan, by let I me have, just say one thing on this. I have, a, I have a reference in front of me that quite clearly Hazrat Masih Maud says. Prophet says they did not touch and they did not have any such sexual relations beforehand. Tahir, by uh, Tahir, by two points. You guys, by... me, you guys are gonna have to let me finish. I'm afraid because um, I don't okay, want to be here. Okay. I've got a few points to make. Okay. And then, okay. Go ahead. Before we have go this ahead. interaction, I kind of forget those points. It becomes harder for me. So, <clears throat> so. It's, it's an absolute lie to say that actually he said that uh, they went around before nikah uh, and that this related in sexual relations. He did say that they met and before the nikah and the nata was considered amongst the Jews as a type of nikah, okay, and that they walked around. And in actual fact... No, even no, in, no you're, con you're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not contradicting myself. Even in Islam... No, because if, if nata is nikah, if nata is nikah, then why is Mirza Saab saying that they were pairing or they were pirna before nikah if nata is the same thing as nikah because what you're saying is nata nata gave them the right to to be with each other right you're saying nata which is a prerequisite of nikah if it's the same thing as nikah why is mirza Saab saying that they were pirna with each other before nikah because nata has already given them uh, the the right to be with each other if that's the case then why is mirza Saab saying that they were with with each other before nikah. If nata is the same thing as nikah, clearly nata clearly nata is not the same thing as nikah. Nata is not the same thing as nikah. And again, yes, you guys thank you. On misrepresenting yeah. what I'm saying. So yeah. nata was a type of engagement, just like it is amongst you know, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's basically mm -hmm. engagement. I mean, that's a simple word to use. And even in, even among Muslims, it is absolutely it's it's allowed for a boy and a girl to meet with a chaperone with a third person, with family members present for them to see each other. In fact, it's not only uh, permitted, the Prophet, the, the Hazrat Umar's position was that a boy and girl should meet. The Prophet Sallallahu himself said that a boy and girl should see each other, right? Prior yes, to the, correct. Prior to see, the, not not meet, see. Yeah, see. see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And for example, the case of Abdullah ibn Umar with um, the young lady, of the, the very pious lady, that's a good example where he brought them together and they saw each other. And, and in that process, there was a meeting as well. So. This idea that Hazrat Maryam had met has, uh, had met Yusuf Najjar prior to the nikah, and that they had walked together and had a conversation, that that somehow implies that Hazrat Masih is saying that they had adultery, when he clearly states in multiple quotes that she was pure, and for you to misrepresent that issue by exaggerating a statement is, is plainly dishonest. The the point. No, no, no. We 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 don't have to. You're absolutely right. You're right. We don't have to uh, even insinuate that she was committing audu billah from audu billah committing adultery the fact that mirza wrote that she was with uh, joseph the comp carpenter before nikah is kufr it, it is kufr for us to to even believe that or even think of that forget about having sexual relationships or having intimacy with each other i am saying and this is my position to begin with that that even being with a non mahram even being with a non-mahram, especially when Mirza Saab himself claimed that they broke the Jewish law, they broke the Mosaic law uh, by getting married during pregnancy. Okay, that in itself is a huge insult, and it leads to kufr akbar. It so takes one out of Islam. So, yeah. So, so, so Adnan, bhai, I want to. Uh, Tahir, bhai, please. Uh, Tahir, bhai, allow me to. No, no, no. Tahir, bhai, no, no, let no, let, let, let Tahir let, let finish his points. I haven't actually yeah, and then, points. Okay. Because yeah. Been, so again, one. okay. Let me let me let me start the time again, guys. Otherwise, it's gonna get messy again. Okay, I don't wanna. Three minutes over to you, Tarwai.
Go ahead. So you, Three minutes. You made, a number, you made a number of points, and I'm afraid some of them have gone out of my mind. Um, okay. If you could summarize them really... No, actually, don't. I think I've got them. If I miss anything, please do remind me. So one okay. of the main points you made is that he said, for example, that when Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, uh, that according to his research, that they were married, that they were married together when they were she was five or six months pregnant, and that the Holy this goes against what the Holy Quran says, which is the first time the allegation was made was that she, when she came with the born boy and the the child in the cradle, spoke, right? So we have a difference of opinion upon that particular event. Also, the first thing to note is that that event is mentioned in the Holy Quran. Where he is, um, let me get up chapter three, verse. Uh, no, not chapter three. Uh, I'll find it if you wish. Yeah, it says. Um, so when when they said, "Oh, sister of Aaron, thou hast committed uh, a grievous thing," um, your parents were truly were, were righteous. I can't remember the exact wording. There's nowhere in that passage it says that that was the first time that they made that allegation. There's nowhere in that passage where it says that um, they had not stated that before. That interaction is in relation to her response to that thing. And there is also clear evidence in that passage that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, when that interaction actually happened and when she says, pointed to him in the cradle and he says, Allah has made me a messenger, etc. It's quite clear that actually he's an adult. And the reason he's an adult, so that, that entire interaction is not referring to a single event. That entire interaction is actually referring to... Sorry, just to clarify, you, you mean when Jesus when Jesus spoke, he was an adult? According when, to the Quran? The, the words, the words, the word cradle, it says, you know, it says... Um, I was what Mahad. You, what you Mahad. Yeah. Yes. Right. Mahad right. is a cradle. It's for the babies. No, it's not just for the babies. Actually, the word Mahad, actually, can have the meaning up to 40 years of age. Okay? And the word middle age... Okay, Kahla, that according to mm. Lain and Akrab and Tha'alabi refers to between the ages of 40 to 51. So this, so, this, so you know, this, this you know the wording that she points, she points to the Mahad? Yeah, 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 yeah. She points, she points to him and he says, Allah has made me a messenger. He's made me dutiful to my mother. He's made me uh, uh, give zakat. Zakat is not applicable on babies. It's not even applicable on adults who don't have money, by the way. He's made me applicable um, I, I, and that I, I, I do namaz. All of these things, right, are only applicable upon adults. It's quite obvious. So, so are you, so are, are you, are you saying now that this, this, these accusations came to Mary when Jesus no. was like 30 years old? No. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is this event. Because that's what you're claiming. Because Jesus was given prophethood. No, 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 I'll explain. Yeah. I'll explain. This ref the Quran often refers to an answer and a question, which sometimes the answer and the question are separated in time. Sometimes the Holy Quran gives conversations that occur over a long period of time, and the answer comes out the ultimately at the end. You know this very well, Adnan. This refers to an answer that was given to a question and an accusation which was laid upon her when she was pregnant, and which came to fruition, and the answer came with the purity of her child. The point being made by the Quran here is that the purity of the child was a testament to the purity of the nature in which she was actually conceived of the child. For a child which is born under impure circumstances does not end up pure in that sense and cannot certainly be a prophet of God. So the proof of her being pure was him being pure. That's the point the Quran is making. It's not referring to a single conversation. It's referring to thousands of conversations, thousands of accusations, and the ultimate answer that Hazrat Maryam in actual fact gave. She didn't even speak. She just she just pointed to him. This is okay. This is your right. your time. You you've got four minutes already. You've got four minutes already. So thank you so much for for that. Okay, look, uh, just to quickly uh, respond to that, and I'll go to uh, again Imtiaz Bhai because I don't want to continue uh, debating you on this because it's best Imtiaz Bhai takes over. But if you read the verses on this, it is absolutely clear according to our, all Arabic uh, linguistic conventions, that this is one conversation at one point in one place. All indicators, linguistic indicators, point to one conversation in one place at one time. That's all I have to say. But this is, again, we can elaborate when we read the verse in Arabic and break it down word by word, you will see what I mean. But over to Imtiaz Bhai. Uh, three minutes start now, Imtiaz Bhai. Go ahead. Uh, Anand, my first of all, thank you very much. So, uh, you know, there are many things which are said. So, I would just like to discuss maybe point to points, inshallah, people can understand what we are discussing about. So, I want to discuss Thais have the point. 
if according to the Jews, if Nata and Nika are same thing, why did that. they raise? Sorry, I never said it was the same thing, and I've highlighted I didn't say it was the same thing. So no, no, Mirza make... Sahib said this here. Mirza Sahib said that uh, Nata or Nika make chanda farak ni samajte. They don't differentiate at all between the Nika and the Nata. So, Taisa, please think about this. What if they, they do? do not, sorry. Sorry, I don't want to cut you up. You, you go. Okay. So, if the Jews, if they consider the Nata and Nika same thing, and Maryam was with Joseph with Nata, then there's no reason that they would raise the uh, the allegation of zina or fornication because not she has the nata she has the nikah they are same thing number one number two i said i want to i want you to please address this point according to the uh, this is something mirza gulam has accepted that maryam alayhi salam she got married with joseph the carpenter during pregnancy and getting married during pregnancy, according to the law of Moses, that was haram, according to Mirza Ghulam as well. Now, my question to you is, are you accepting that Maryam salam committed an haram act by marrying to Joseph the carpenter? What answer is given by Mirza Ghulam? I know I will give you that answer, no problem. But I want to hear your answer as well. Was sure. this act of marrying with Joseph the carpenter during pregnancy, did she commit haram or not? That's it. That's all I want you to address. Okay, very quickly, before uh, we get to the response, uh, uh, Sab, very quickly I want to highlight something from Surah Maryam. Uh, you were referring to the dialogue between Maryam and her people. I will translate word by word and read the translation so you, you, you can see where you were mistaken in this. A'udhu Billah Shaitan Rajeem. Fa'atat bihi qawmaha tahmiluhu then she returned to her people carrying him. Yeah. Hamela, Hamela Yahmilu Hamala. Okay, this is to carry, okay, literally carry. Kalu ya Maryamu laqad jitti shay'an fariya. They said in shock, Oh Mary, you have certainly done a horrible thing. Ya ukhta Haruna, ma kana abuki imra'a sawin. Oh, sister of Aaron, your father was not an indecent man, nor was your mother unchaste. And then she pointed to him, the, the one she was carrying. They said, How do we speak to? The one who is in a cradle, an infant, the word sabi. Sabiya means infant. Literally, it means infant. And it's not only cradle. A sabiya, a very small child inside the cradle. Fil Mahdi sabiya. This is the Quran. Qala. Then he speaks. Inni abdullahi. Okay. Atani. Atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiya. Okay. So, again, this goes. So, this is where I, I, I hope you can now correct yourself, that the Qur'an is very categorical, that this was an infant speaking from the cradle, because the word sabiya is very, very clearly there, because she pointed to the infant inside the cradle, and they said, how do we speak to an infant inside the cradle? So you are clearly wrong there, when you claim that he was an adult, and this was uh, a dialogue over a long period of time. The Qur'an does not support you. Or the Quran doesn't support the view of Mirza Said uh, when he said that she was five months pregnant when her people questioned her. Okay, so, sure. so there's two over to you. So you got me two questions. The first thing I'll deal with is and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to head off soon if, if you don't mind because I'm not going to stay here all evening. Um, okay. Know, I can I, I was we were, loving, we I was, really I was, appreciate your time. We really was, appreciate your time. Seriously, it's been it's been a it's been a very pleasant conversation, and this is this is how we want to carry on. This is we this is how we all, always want to do it. But for some reason, Razi, when as soon as Razi and Doctor Yaya come in, uh, things start to go lopsided. But then again, they are also pleasure. our brothers and our brothers are humanity, so no problem. That's yeah. you guys oh oh oh, your, your time, time by. Go ahead. I need, 
uh, they, they don't get a lot of play with Ozzy and Dr. Yahya. I think, you know, they both are decent, very good men. And um, if you give them time and you treat them as you have treated me, I don't think they're going to have any problems whatsoever. You all don't have any problems with them. Um, so the, the point is, the first point is, the reason it's haram to marry while pregnant is because usually the, the Quran and the, um, the law of Moses are an application to the ordinary course of life, which is when you get pregnant, it's usually through a sexual relationship with somebody who is proceeding. Um, and you need to have the idda period to manifest that, etc. So the this was not that case. And um, that she got married and that she had children from Joseph is 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 well known. Um, James, the brother of Jesus, who was the first Khalifa of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, he was a brother. He was a, he was one of the children of Mahaza Maryam, and she had many other children as well. Um, so I, I don't really understand what the allegation is. Obviously, it's, it's not a normal course of it, events because she had a virgin birth. So calling it haram is ridiculous because the the, 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 the reason for it being haram is not an application here because it's not a, it's a virgin birth. <coughs> That's the first point. The second point you've made about the cradle and this and the age and things like that. In actual fact, it's irrelevant what age he was. And this is... You know, I'm sure there are people um, who may say that, well, this is him and a baby, this is a vision, or this is a uh, miracle, or whatever. No, but, but but you but you claim he was an adult. Th no, that no, wasn't no. clearly that, that isn't. No, I'm I'm not. I'm saying that it's quite. To my understanding, it's quite clear the word cradle here does not necessarily mean a child um, who is. Uh, no, 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 no. Please. When it says, <laughs> but, uh, can I finish, please? I'll explain myself. Okay. This is yes. How you speak to one who is a child in the cradle, this can also be used as a derogatory term. This person is only young, he's 14, 15, 13. No, no, no. Sabi, Sabi not, only, the yeah. word Sibi. I'm not by word... letting finish. Okay, okay, finish. Okay, sorry, sorry, I do apologize. I apologize. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so the, the word indicates, and, and the, the word in, in itself, we know from the Bible, for example, that Hazrat Isa from a young age debated with the scholars and he would have been regarded as like a child uh, before then. And he was better than them. So this is a, this is a phrase that is used to, to emphasize his youth to when his spiritual maturity at a young age. Um, and in actual fact, but what, what his age was was actually kind of irrelevant to the point that is actually relevant here. And the point that is relevant here is that just because they made this accusation and she pointed to him and this is the interaction that is recorded in the bio, in the Quran. Let's accept your view. Let's say he was a two-year-old. Let's say he was a one-year-old. Let's say he was an infant. And no, was, he was a newborn. He was a newborn. Let's say he was a newborn. Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Let's, yeah. accept that. yeah. let's accept that. That is the interaction that is being recorded. Because because, because it says she carried yeah. him. It that's says fine. she carried him. Yeah. You, you as well as I know, Hamil can also mean to support something. So, so no, these, no, no. Yeah, it can. <laughs> no, you, look, look. Wait, the, word the word hamal the word honestly you can i'm going to go after this you're most welcome to ch chat it's fine so okay. the point i want to make is this is even if you accept it was an infant and that this was a miracle the point being made here is that the accusations were still being made as a, when she came with a newborn just because the accusations were being made when she came as a newborn doesn't mean that the accusations couldn't be made when she was six months pregnant and showing it's quite obvious but the accusations would also have been made when she was six, seven, eight months pregnant. Because everybody knows, you see a six month, seven month, eight month old lady, uh, pregnant lady, people are going to ask questions, right? So uh, the fact that Hazrat Masim Al mentioned that accusations were made when she was five or six months pregnant, and that's when the accusation started, does not in any way contradict the Quran when it says that when she came with her newborn, that the accusations were also made. The only point of relating that particular interaction was because there she actually, let's take your narrative that she, he was a newborn and that he spoke miraculously from the cradle, from literally the, 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 the Moses basket, let's say. Let, let's say, then the point of the, narrating that particular interaction was that the miracle of him speaking negated and answered the accusation that was being leveled against her. And that's why the Quran narrated that particular interaction. So that's not in any way a uh, thing. I just want to finish and I will go after this because I think my wife will say So, uh, Tahir Bhai, uh, Tahir Bhai, Tahir Bhai, uh, I know that... I... Can I make a closing? Is that okay? Just a closing? Yeah, then... yeah, yeah. let, let uh, Ghazi, please let him finish because he has to go. So, please, go ahead. Yes. I just want to, I just want to emphasize, Imtiaz, we have invited you to a debate with us on the death of Isa and Khatmin Abuwa multiple times, okay? 
Um, I want to also I want to emphasize that we believe the major difference between us and you are not these minor points of biographical difference about Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam's life. Our major difference is was Jesus on the cross and did he die? Um, in, re in relation to Hazrat Isa's life, in respect to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi is the true understanding of the term Khatam and Nabiyyin. In, in relation to Hazrat Masima and Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, there are prophecies we can talk about. There are um, his, uh, his his prophecies are probably you know a good place to start as you have done in the past. You know, but these biographical details about Hazrat Maryam are frankly boring to most people because they're not relevant. De they're not a relevant difference between you and I. Um, so I just want to emphasize that, and we, we, we I reiterate as a person who who is under Muhammad Ibrahim Ikhlaf, the National Outreach Department coordinator of the Muslim Jamaat UK, um, in the True Islam UK team, we invite you to actually come to a formal debate with us, Adnan, formal debate, in and Diaz, formal debate, come together, come separately, come one and all. You're most welcome. And okay. you're properly moderated. We can get a non-Muslim moderate, non moderator, and it can be done really nicely. So please do come on that and discuss the actual issues which matter, not these uh, these points of minor biographies. Just one second. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, just, I mean, if I could, Adahi, uh, before you go, please don't go before I have a... I just want to say a couple of things before you leave. Thanks. Yeah, no, but let I, 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 come in. Imran Bay, most welcome. I, I, welcome. I, I, Thank I, you so much. Nice to see you. Yeah. Imran, 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 but but I've got Imran, 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 uh, we will have a number of formal debates. You can choose your topics. We will choose our topics. It'll, it'll, it will be only fair to uh, have debates on equal topics. If you want to, you can choose two topics of your choice. We, we will choose two topics of our choice. And let's have formal debates with neutral uh, uh, moderators. And when we are available, depending on our availability, depending on our availability, because so, I'm not always in the UK. Uh, and in Tazba is in Australia. But he I, wants to quickly say I a few want... words. I can answer yeah. that very simply. We will not debate points of minor, you know, meaningless topics like this. this then, then you're putting conditions on us. You're putting we conditions will, on us. We will not. We will not also allow me to speak as well. Yeah, I, I have not spoken. I'm just. Asked, I'll he, he, speak just give him thirty seconds. Give him thirty seconds, Tarbai. Go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Oh, sorry. Go on. Imtiaz, quickly, go. Ahead. Look, Tarbai. First of all, it's not fair. That you said many things and now you don't want to stay even for me to respond. That's very unfair. No, I, no, I no. Imtiaz bhai, Imtiaz bhai, look, look, we understand. He might, he has to go. He yeah, might have yeah, family commitments yeah, and all not, that. But I you can say those yeah. things and he's gone and someone else can come and take no, over. I don't no want problem. to say. I would say in his presence. Otherwise, I don't want to say. I will watch the video. I promise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Tahir okay. look at. First of all, Tahir it's, it's very that. problematic. It's no, very problematic. Anything. Hi, Saib, listen, one thing, one thing. It's very problematic that in order to manufacture a response, you do not even know what Mirza Ghulam has said. Mirza Ghulam says that it was against the law of Moses that a woman would get married during her pregnancy. And then she replied to this one, okay? She accepted this one. That is, he says, listen, it's a legitimate objection. He said it's a legitimate objection. And then he gave the answer as well. We are not concerned with his answer. Our concern is he accepted this as a legitimate objection that Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam, she Broke married the against the law of Moses because she married during pregnancy. Now, with regard to your debate, you said that you are not interested in the minor things. I'm surprised, Tahir Sahib. Mirza Ghulam disrespecting and disbelieving the miracles of Isa Islam. It's a minor thing for you. Mirza Ghulam disrespecting all the prophets is a minor thing for you. I'm surprised there you response, brother. So, so, guys, guys, you can't make these sweeping statements just as I'm leaving. Come on, it's not reasonable. I yeah, mean, you're I, right. I, I think, so I he's, think he's leaving. He's leaving. So we'll leave it. No right, problem. The, legi yes. the legitimate objection. If you make it, if you say something's a legitimate objection, again, it's a matter of speech that you steal man an argument. If you then give the response to that legitimate objection, you obviously don't think it's a true statement. There's a difference between a legitimate objection and a true statement, and you need to differentiate between the two. So I'll leave it there, but I will say this. Adnan, I have to give it to you. I'm, you've actually surprised me. All right. And, and, and I, you know, I think it's because of all the prayers that Ahmadis have been doing that you improve in your, in your, in your character with respect to these debates, perhaps, yeah, because the prayers of Ahmadis are, are accepted abundantly, alhamdulillah. So 
Again, we will not, uh, you mentioned two from your side, two from our side. We will not debate on minor points. We will debate on central points of Aqidah. And the last thing I do want to say, you, you want to debate on the truthfulness of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. That's absolutely fine if you specify an aspect. No Muslim would go into a debate with a Christian saying, let's debate the entire truthfulness of Muhammad so they can raise every allegation in terms of his character, which is false, under the sun. You and I both know that no Muslim worth his salt would ever, they would specify a topic within Islam, Trinity versus Tawheed, etc. Did the Muhammad kill the, the Jews of Bani Quraiz, etc. You'd specify a topic and you'd debate that. So if you want to come about Hazrat Rasim Al's Sadaqat, his truthfulness, please come with an aspect, okay, a debate question, not an open forum for slander. We will not tolerate that. So that's what I want okay. to say. Okay. Thank you very much. I want to thank you before you go. Thank you very much. Keep coming. We will continue in this spirit. We will try to have as many pleasant as dialogues as possible so that our community, our communities can learn from us. They can learn from our manners and they can appreciate our manners with each other so that we can have decent conversations like we did today. So this is a lesson we need to teach Dr. Yahya and also uh, Razi Bai. When they come, we can have these conversations. When we deal with points directly, I give it to you. I take my hat off to you today that you have been very direct today. You, you have been addressing our questions. Okay, we don't agree with your answers. No problem. You don't agree with our assessments. That's perfectly fine. But at least people can hear a decent conversation. People can appreciate the, the way we're talking to each other. And we've, we've been very clear and blunt with each other. This is the beauty. This is what we like to continue with. Thank you so much for coming. And we welcome you again. Anytime you want. Thank you. Imran, why if you want to say something? I think Taha is going. His wife is uh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. On so Alhamdulillah. Yes. Assalamu alaikum, brothers. Apologies. I had another commitment, but I've, uh, I've just returned home. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah. so, so, yeah. Thank you so much for coming, uh, Imran. Bhai. We were missing you, man. And you're, you're an excellent moderator. I was struggling to moderate today, although <laughs> Tahir appreciated my style. But uh, it's very difficult for being a moderator. I mean, it's very difficult being a moderator. But at the same time, it was a very good conversation. We had many interesting points made from both sides. And we will let the audience decide. They, they can think what they want, inshallah. And hopefully, uh, we have made our points as crystal clear as possible. Okay. So, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for coming. And I would like to take a very quick break. I want to do, I want to go washroom. Okay. While you guys take over and let other Ahmadi friends, if they are there, let them in, have a conversation, continue with the conversation because they've been watching. Okay. So, uh, I'll see your, you in... Nanbai, your friend, your friend Razi has arrived. Oh, miracle, huh? I thought he was going to boil. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Adnan bhai. Wassalamu ala manitta barola. I thought if Adnan bhai is moderating, there's no way I can miss today's stream. So I put everything aside. I'm not <laughs> in my office. Okay. But I'm here. You're, you're, you're most you're moderating. That's the only yeah. reason I'm here. Yeah. So my 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 intelligence <laughs> has proven to be. Proven to be false, huh? My intelligence was false. Oh, that's happened a lot of times. <laughs> but yes, okay. Adnan, it's great you're moderating. I think this is a big change. And, you know, it made me want to definitely come to the stream. And um, I'm ready to discuss <coughs> as well. So if you want to take your break, I don't mind waiting till you're back. That way I can pray uh, my uh, mother prayer and then I can come back. I'll be here. In the backstage, but your choice. Okay, uh, I'll be. Uh, I'll so. I'll be back. I'll be back in maximum ten minutes or fifteen minutes. Let's say fifteen okay, so minutes max. Yadbe, how about I read my Maghrib prayer and then I'll be in backstage because the other day you guys said I never came back from my namaz, but by Allah, I was waiting in the backstage, and I don't know who was. Razi, we trust you. And before you leave, yeah, you can go for a break. I just want to say something very quickly, Razi. Yeah. Look, Razi, uh, as Adnan Bhai said in the beginning, that, look, let's have a new start. And instead of having grudge against each other, which is of no use, no benefit for any, for either of the communities. I agree. I would, I, agree. Say that, I would say that I would say that let's demonstrate our good manners. And uh, you should not leave the stream just because Imran Bai is here. Obviously, we all can differ with each other. We can differ on different, uh, you know, uh, standpoint. We can differ on our style of moderation. But I would say, Razi, that I would expect from you, as Adnan Bai said before, I would expect from you the 
uh, the good moral values and you should not leave the stream just because dr imran is here yes but imtia said there's two things i want to say firstly i was really happy to hear your new year resolution that you will you know be more respectful and you can expect the same from us obviously you know someone was saying that i'm rude to brother adnan he knows in person we're really friendly to each other we respect each other on twitter he says a lot to me too so i get passionate as well it's not one sided only from my end and and so, exactly we and we don't take it to heart trust me yeah. every time razi writes something like adnan you're lying and yeah. i call razi a boy and uh, sometimes <laughs> i don't know yeah, so i call him a lot of... adnan bhai adnan bhai i want to and razi razi i want to say this on the public platform that with regard to moderation of imran bhai i have no issues at all obviously ahmadis have their own view point but as a matter of principle i appreciate and i really admire his moderation i i can say that you can disagree with his style but yeah. obviously allah has made all of us different and i have not seen him ever being disrespectful i have not seen him ever being unfair to any one of you so i want to say on the public platform in your presence that i have always admired and i will keep admiring the moderation of dr imran yes and i haven't asked you to say anything against him but just like you're free to have your view i'm free to have my view as well where i think i completely from the bottom of my heart i feel like and with all due respect to brother imran he's a great person you know mashallah but in terms of moderation i completely disagree with this style i believe it's completely unfair which is why i prefer for at least my discussion with brother imtiaz or whoever speaks from your end brother adnan moderates because imtiaz bhai tweeted at me that i could moderate today so let's keep that yes. promise and let's go let's let brother adnan razi 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 you did not respond to me when i tweeted so please do not do not guys this, this this co- this conversation is gonna gonna carry on and i'm gonna i'm gonna wet myself on the sofa yeah so i have to go <laughs> i have to go and use the toilet okay oh, so i'll be yeah. back i'll okay. be back in 15 okay. minutes razi come back in 15 okay, minutes so we we'll continue you can leave me on the screen if you like so no one we, thinks we i'm running away yeah. You come back okay. and we'll, we'll carry on. Okay, Imran Bay and uh, Daz Bay, you carry on. See you very soon. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so in- Assalamu alaikum, brother. You well? Wa alaikum assalam. The love of God, Imran Bay. Jazakallah khair. We know. We I I mentioned already. I think already I think Razi that- Razi was just speaking when you threw him out, but uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, He, yeah, yeah, he's so back. Razi, sorry, Razi, you were saying, sorry, you were saying sorry. something. Razi, we thought, Razi, Razi, we thought that we, you have left already. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, I no, thought no this. problem, no problem. So I'll be back in around twelve minutes, okay? And then you can add me back. But for our discussion, after our discussion, you can make Brother Imran moderate again. It's fine, you know. But for my discussion, I request that you let Brother Adnan moderate. Otherwise, with all due respect, I'll have to leave because. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> cut off when I'm speaking. This is amazing, it. isn't it? So yeah. I'll come back. Okay, okay. Uh, we, we don't mind. We, it's your stream. It's your stream. Yeah. Brother, brother Imran, uh, brother Imran can contribute because he's our participant. He's our team member, so he can contribute. I'll moderate, no problem. If no, you want me to moderate, uh, I'm sure brother Imran will sure mind. Because I've, 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 yeah. yeah. I've held, I've held back in my, when I was moderating. Yeah. So now that you're moderating, brother Adnan, uh, no, I can, I can really ask questions because <laughs> I think this, this last yeah. five minutes. the end of yeah. uh, brother tahir and then this beginning conversation with brother razi it's just classic grass lighting isn't it this is why i don't like to moderate please this is like comedy against us and that makes the viewers no, confused like, okay. why is the commentator in the okay. debate that's not okay true. let's let's continue with this when i'm back let's let's yeah, continue okay. razi razi you don't need any yeah. commentary we need a fair moderator this yeah, is what don't I, worry about like you have your opinion i yeah. have the people are also allowed to have their opinions you should yeah, exactly. when people so, give so, you their opinions that's fine so we'll let them speak the we'll let them speak in the commentary time. that mm-hmm. happens after every time so you're about to leave weren't you rosie you're going to come back off with happening yeah, yeah. let's yeah. Rosie, rosie, let's meet let's meet in 10 minutes rosie let's meet in 10 minutes okay over to imran bhai and mintaz bhai assalam alaikum assalam alaikum assalam alaikum So I was I was listening a little bit on my way home to some of the discussions and this is actually very classic the way the, the way of approaching and I think this is probably why people don't like when I do moderate is because I deal with many different types of people and also lots of mental health patients 
one of the things you're able to do is to know when some someone is uh, going off of the topic or tangentially discussing or thinking. And sometimes when I point that out, people find it upsetting because this is a tactic that's used. Um, so I just want to say a couple of things, if that's OK. Something that I thought was quite significant on my, on my drive home. So one was Brother Tahir made, he kept saying this, he said a couple of times that he had demonstrated from the Quran that Jesus, peace be upon him, was on the cross. And the, and the way he said that he had done this is that he said that uh, the verse, and it appeared unto them so. And the claim he attached to this is that because appear unto them so means it, that they must be looking at him. This is the claim that he made. Obviously, this is false. This is actually completely untrue. Because I can, because I can use that same phrase right now. It appears that uh, brother Tahir ran away when I came on the stream. I don't believe that to be the case, but some people are saying that it appears to be that way. Does that mean that they were they they saw that they know what his state was, or they they had an access to looking at his state, or it appeared that I you know if you if you have a if you hear about something, it appears that that thing has happened to you. Now this doesn't mean you have visual sight of it or you're or you're actually uh, completely completely uh, checking that out in terms of empirically. This is just a false claim. So appearances can be many many in many different ways, and I think this is a false claim that he made because why the Quran specifically says he was not crucified nor was he killed. So the crucifixion is already ruled out. It's already ruled out, and which is why they have to change the definition of crucifixion to death by crucifixion, which is yeah. an which is a an additional term for that uh, the, the only other thing i want to say was this uh making this thing you said this as brother as well brother Imtiaz. you said that this was a small thing this was a uh, minor thing that we are talking about no the 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 statements of from Mirza Ghulam ahmed contradict the quranic narrative and i'm also not and also agreeing with the biblical narrative there is no marriage of joseph there is no marriage of joseph in the, in the quran to uh, uh, Maryam alayhi salam, there is none, and the and the, there would not be a uh, any uh, outburst by the people if she was married. A woman who is uh, having a child, even if it's early, would not be someone who would be called out and shamed if they were already in a married relationship for many months. Obviously, five six months, however many months that she would have been married for at that time of the birth. So this this so this actually goes against the this actually goes against the um, the whole narrative within the Quran anyway. Yeah. So th yeah. and then so now we have uh, somebody who's making a, um, a claim about Maryam al Islam and the narrative, taking from Christian sources, taking from Jewish sources, agreeing with them and presenting them, and this is a problem. This is a problem, isn't it? So and uh, not, uh, not Imran, by you know, uh, this is the, as you, you might have noticed. That when uh, Tahir was talking about the crucifixion, sleep, I did not say a single word on that. Why? Because I knew this is a bait. Yes, yes. This is a bait because they because they knew that this topic is they cannot defend this because Mirza Ghulam was very explicit in making all of these horrible statements regarding Maryam alayhi salam. For example, as Mirza was said today, I mean, just by the mere fact that Mirza is saying that if Jews are accusing her of fornication, fault is not just on the Jews. She has the blame as well. And she is the one who gave them the opportunity to blame her. I mean, if this thing is a trivial thing, if this thing, they think, look, we can just ignore it. So it means that there's a, there is a fundamental difference in the principal matters in the in the moral values yes. of us and the Ahmadis, because I am one hundred percent sure, no matter how weak a Muslim is, this cannot be a trivial matter for any Muslim, any Muslim, no matter how we he, he may not be praying five times a day, but mm -hmm. when it comes to these matters, people are very sensitive, people are very clear on these issues. So yes, I agree with that with uh, with, with Tahir Sahib. That we have fundamental difference, but that is the, that is the difference are of our moral values, our moral standards, how we look at the text, and as the as you said, and I was trying to point out this again and again that why Mirza Ghulam end up saying all of that because of accepting the biblical narrative of marriage with Joseph, because now he has to explain that if 
the promise with Allah was that Maryam will not get married, but she did get married. If the promise was that, uh, you know, that, uh, yeah, so basically, and then he ended up saying, he ended up saying that the miraculous birth of Jesus was humiliated. SubhanAllah. And it, it was stained. And I'm surprised that uh, Tahir is saying that these are trivial matters. So I agree with you, Imran Bhai. Tahir was saying many things. But obviously, uh, then he was repeatedly saying that he has to go in 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So otherwise, I wanted, and as, as a last point we were discussing, and I will discuss with Razi as well when Razi comes back, that according to the law of Moses, which is the law of Allah at that time, the law according to which those people have to live, this nikah was haram. So because funny. according to Mirza mm -hmm. Ghulam accepted this, that during pregnancy, a woman cannot get married. But she did get married. And then Mirza Ghulam has given an answer for that. And I want to listen that does Razi know this answer? Or we want to present that? Because Mirza Ghulam knew this. That there's a problem here. According to Torah, she cannot get married in pregnancy. But she did get married. How to reconcile this? Because there were two reconciliations. One is that she must not marry to begin with. But she did get married. And second problem was marriage within pregnancy. There was a second problem. And Mirza Ghulam is resolving this puzzle. He's giving his solution of the puzzle. And I want Razi to tell us what was the solution given by him. Absolutely. And I think this is the this is the point here. Um, um, uh, normally, when we try to, what we're trying to demonstrate is actually, uh, I, I missed the beginning of the stream, but really one of the points we're trying to demonstrate here is is that the things that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed says about Maryam alayhi salam are an attack upon her. And yep. the things Miriam al -Islam, that, that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed says about Isa alayhi salam are an attack upon him. We spoke about this in terms of basically refuting the miracles either they are natural events or there's some sort of trickery and this is really a, a major thing to say uh, we had the the gentleman who came on last week he was saying that this is the equivalent of some magician doing magic in the modern day yeah. and to call what Allah does via his prophets magic is all the below I mean I don't really know what other things I can say about that this is a very very big statement yeah. and and to claim that Miriam al Islam uh, was was in a marriage, that was not halal by the by the Sharia of the time, Subhanallah. I mean, how can you how can you even go forward with this concept? And you know, Imran, by the point I said in his presence as well, that if this marriage was not legitimate, obviously after this marriage they have children. Were they legitimate children? Yes. This is the question. Yes. And uh, Miran Bhai, we have a brother from uh, Nigeria. Inshallah, I want to take him uh, on the on the stage. Inshallah, he want to share with us about the Qadianis operating in Africa. Alhamdulillah, brother, you're something wrong with your screen, uh, brother. Uh, actually, uh, my the, the battery of my camera has gone flat, so I'll, I'll wait a few minutes now. <laughs> okay, no problem. Sure. So, brother uh, Ridwan, welcome, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Imran, and I'd like you to speak with Ridwan by inshallah. He will share with you his uh, thoughts uh, about uh, Ahmed is operating in Nigeria. Inshallah, I come back inshallah, in a couple of minutes, brother. Jazakallah, um, brother Ridwan, for, for coming. Uh, nice to speak to you, inshallah. Yes. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa amata wa bi ihsani ila yawmiddin. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, I would like to uh, start with um, uh, saying that they are just like um, uh, Ahmadiyya Muslim in Nigeria, most especially in my own area, they are not that significant because uh, especially um, they consider, though they consider themselves as a Muslim and the, the uninformed Muslim also consider them as Muslim. And most especially, the government also consider them as Muslim. And the reason for this is that they do not discuss their core belief in public. Because if okay. they should do, if they should do, even the non uninformed Muslim will go against them. Because most Muslims uh, in my area believe uh, that Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. 
if they should uh, discuss their core belief, which is which is that uh, Golam is the last prophet after Prophet Muhammad, people will have to go against them, and they are scared of, uh, of this. Alhamdulillah, I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm not surprised uh, because you know there's a lot of um, a lot of missionaries work in a similar way where they go into areas where there's a social uh, and economic uh, deprivation, and what they do is they provide uh, some help in this regard to try to bring people onto uh, their way of thinking. This is the, the tactic behind it, and it's a shame that it's a shame that this is the approach that they have to hide aspects of their belief system. To try and do this um and obviously the external appearance you just you can't tell from one or the other but it's actually when you get down to the the beliefs that are important so you said it wasn't very significant in your area brother but how how many how many are there the brother ahmadiyya uh, ahmadiyya fatchek block which i will recommend you to uh have a look at and and there's a lot of very useful information on his blog uh, brother uh, does some excellent work there um, has asked the question. So, how you said it's not significant? How are they operating? How many, how many uh, schools in your area, or how did you come to know of them? Okay, fine. Um, I had a friend, a old man, is one of them. So, this man uh, see me as someone that uh, that he can con convince to join them. Though, so I, I one time visited them, and I find out that they are more not more than 10 if i'm not mistaken they are, more, okay. they are not more than 10. um though they have two mocks in my area and we know them that know them that they do build mocks and most people do not visit their mocks the most time if um even if uh i they, their mocks is somehow um much but most people do not go there because uh, they don't, number one, they don't try to, you know, showcase their core belief. Because um, let me try and uh, show you this. Um, let me try and um, explain in this uh, area. Um, we have uh, up to like 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria. And the, and the three major uh, all famous ethnic groups in Nigeria is um, Aousa, Igbo, and Yoruba. So, which I happen to be one of the three major or famous ethnic groups, that is Yoruba. And uh, it happened that these uh, uh, Ahmadiyya groups, they were able to penetrate uh, through uh, this, uh, through my ethnic group, that is Yoruba, they were able to penetrate because according to their um, history, um they were hello can you hear me yes yes we can hear you brother yeah according to their history they were and there is one businessman i've forgotten the name it, uh, it deals with nice and uh, selling of books so according to their history so this man was able to you now get one of their books he read it through through this he was able to convince and he joined uh, the the movement. So since then, up until now, um, they are they are growing. So according to the uh, information I had from this, my old friend, he told me that they are now two million. They are now two million in population. That is as of Nigeria. So according to what, but in my area, they are just like ten in their mocks. That is, I'm talking of when the when i went there that is when i went there the last time i went there they are just like 10 they are not that kind of uh signal and ridwan by uh when they try to uh, convert you to ahmadiyya would you like to share with us that what exactly this interaction was what did they say etc hello yeah ridwan can you hear us My network is right. bad, can that's you, why. Brother Hello? Imtiaz, is, can you hear Brother Imtiaz and myself speaking? I can hear um, Sheikh Imran. Ridwan, oh, um, uh, can you hear Can you hear me, Imran Bhai? I can, I can hear you clearly, yes, yes, alhamdulillah. Uh, Brother Adnan? Yes, assalamu alaikum. 
Yes. You can hear so, me. Uh, yeah, I can hear. Ridwan, I can hear. Ridwan, yes, can you hear me as well, Ridwan? Yes. Hello. Yes, I can hear you, but not okay. that clear. So, so Ridwan, uh, my question was that as you said that at one stage or at one point they tried to convince you of Ahmadiyya. So what exactly they said to you, the, how they tried to convince you of Ahmadiyya? Now, um, because this man is just like my friend, so he was so uh, open to me. So he tried to tell me that Gulam is the last prophet. Where I, for, I was even shocked because what I knew, I heard this from my madrasa. I was taught that Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. So now I have you as my new friend and you are telling me that Gulam is the last prophet. I was shocked, but I needed to tell him that um, how you, then he told me that um, Gulam is, is just like a symbol or it's just like all what uh, he told me that the Indians or the Hindus are expecting, um, uh, I think one of the, um, I've forgotten the name of this, uh, uh, I've forgotten though. He told me that the Indians are waiting for a specific man. The Christians are what, waiting for the uh, of, um, for Jesus. Why were the Muslims are waiting for Jesus and Imam, uh, Imam Mahdi? So he now told me that Gulam is the one that is that is he came in their form. Are you getting it? So I need to tell him that uh, according to the Quran, Allah said, uh, that uh, Prophet uh, Prophet Isa, when he comes, the Jews and the Christian are going to believe them. So if Gulam is the um, is Prophet Isa, I don't think we should have a Christian or Jew again, uh, again now. So he needed to tell me that as I'm seeing him is also is E is Gulam. <laughs> I even laughed that you are Gulam. How come? He told me that each and every um, uh, Ahmadiyya, they are, uh, each of them are Gulam or each of them are Imam Ahmadi. So I think that's what I can remember. Okay, thank you. That's uh, great, subhanAllah. I can, I mean, great in the sense that we are getting this information from you. But again, uh, as we have highlighted many times, that Ahmadi missionaries um, have kind of given up on preaching in the Indian subcontinent and they're going out to very remote areas of Africa and Latin America where they are working on people who don't know much about Islam. Um, and obviously they uh, pretend to be Muslims or at least they pretend to be normal Muslims or Orthodox Muslims, which they are not. Clearly they are separate from the main Muslim body majority, the overwhelming majority of the Muslims, 99.9% .9 are not Ahmadis, okay? And Ahmadis are not Muslims, according to the consensus of the Muslim scholars in the world. And this is not necessarily an insult or it's not uh, like, a, like, a, like a threat, but it's a declaration as seen by the scholars. So Ahmadis also think likewise. Those who don't believe in Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani are disbelievers. So Ahmadi view is actually more radical. The Ahmadis believe that two billion odd Muslims in the world are disbelievers for not believing in Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. And I would doubt it that any of the Ahmadi missionaries will challenge me on that. And if they don't challenge me on this, then know that this is the truth. That the Ahmadi Murabis and the Ahmadi establishment, the Ahmadi Caliphate, okay, if you like, the Ahmadi Caliphate declares two billion odd Muslims of the world to be disbelievers because they don't believe in Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. Okay, because uh, they follow the scholars. Yeah. yeah. So I think we should we go have... back to the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So Adnan, why we uh, so Ridwan? Uh, first of all, uh, we are thankful to you that you took time. You talked to us. My brother, may Allah bless you and reward you, inshallah. And as we are already in contact, inshallah, if you need any help, let us know, inshallah. We'll be at your service, bismillah ta'ala. You want to say any last thing, um, Rizwan, before you leave? You said? Rizwan, you want to say any last thing before you leave? No, not at all. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. 
Thank you. Allah bless you. Thank you very much. Allah bless you. So, um, do we have anyone in the backstage? Uh, we there? have uh, we have a few people. Imran, but if you can ask them if the, any one of them is Ahmadi, they can tell you so you can take them on the stage. Uh, any non any uh, non Muslims in the in the back chat? Please leave the uh, back chat, please. This is for Ahmadi the stream. And if you are uh, Ahmadi, please respond to my question, please. Uh, any Ahmadis, please make themselves known. Yeah. Yeah, and with regards to the, the question on uh, Imran Bay before I went, uh, I completely don't agree with Rosie uh, and his assessment on Imran Bay. Imran Bay has been an excellent uh, moderator, mashallah, uh, a lot be better than, uh, than I can ever be. And the reason why Ahmadis do find it difficult to be part of a conversation where you are moderating is because you actually try to bring them back to the point, uh, okay, and address the questions. And the difficulty we have faced repeatedly, with due respect, with all Ahmadi missionaries or Murabis, is that uh, they don't tend to go straight to the point. They, they tend to go around the world. And this gets really frustrating. And that's why there are interruptions from us because of a frustration. We are human beings. We lose our temper as well. Sometimes we lose, um, you know, uh, our no, you know, our calm as well. That's why it's so important to have a moderator who can actually bring everyone back to the topic and keep everyone on the topic and this is what Imran Bhai is really good at so uh, I, I completely respect that the Ahmadis and the Qadiani Murabis don't like that approach I completely respect that and understand that I'm not saying that they don't have the right to like or dislike anyone they they, they like okay but such is the nature of the world sometimes we have to deal with people uh, we don't necessarily see eye to eye with. So my request with Ahmadi or my request to Ahmadi uh, Murabis, Qadiani Murabis is that, you know, be patient like we have been patient. I mean, I came on your stream against five people and that video is possibly the most watched video on, the, on that channel. Okay. Uh, it's got 77,000. I mean, last I checked, it was nearly 80,000 views. Uh, it's the most watched video on the channel uh, because of the nature of the discussion, because it was so calm, it was so beautiful, okay? Because they allowed me to speak. But when they come on our channels, sometimes it gets noisy. Today was very good. Today was a very good uh, start. Let's have a fresh start, as Intiaz Bhai put it, because we all want to teach our communities. We want, we want them to know what we think, what we feel, and what we know about each other. There's nothing wrong with that have open conversations so let's go inshallah who's there do we have anyone in run by brother uh, razi i think is back because he's responding in the background so i'll bring him on inshallah okay yes go ahead razi you're back and i'm yes. back assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i don't have too long today another ahmadi is there as well muslim preachers but i have around 40 minutes so i think we should start the discussion so we can inshallah have okay. something productive Okay, so we were one comment if Adnan Bey allows quickly. Yes, go ahead. Or I can do it in my turn, Ashi. It's fine. Yes, you can. You can. So, Rosie, uh, coming back to the issue, uh, we put up a quote where we are claiming that Maria Malay Salam was insulted by Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani because he came up with his own narrative, a uh, narrative that cannot be found in the Bible and the Quran. And this was his view that Mary was equally equally to blame for her slander which goes directly against the quran and uh, because of that uh, the birth the wonderful birth the incredible birth of isa a.s. was ruined or humiliated that also contradicts the quran and also the fact that mary was five months pregnant when her people confronted her which is again it goes entirely against the Quran. There's a clear we do one at a time. If, you, if yeah, you yeah, because... yeah. If you if you choose, uh, so we can start your time three minutes, okay. and then we can have three minutes. Okay, so uh, uh, if you yeah. can put three minutes, Imran said it's at two right now. So I'll answer your points. You, you want two or three? Three is fine because you mentioned three. like four or five allegations. But before I yeah. go into those allegations, brother Adnan, you claim that 
According to the majority of the Muslim body, Ahmadi Muslims are outside Islam and they're non-Muslims. But you keep hiding this. And on Twitter too, I don't know if it's intentional or not. Zubair Ali Zai Saib, he wrote many books and I'm reading them nowadays, you know. He's written against the Diobandis as well. And he said, Khatmin Abuat Bar Daka from the Diobandis. And Ahmad Rida Khan has said that Ahli Hadith, Diobandis are not Muslims. They're outside the fold of Islam. We're not united on Khatmin Abuat. So this, you know, claim you make that us Muslims are united under Khatmin Abuat, it's not true, brother. Zubair Ali Zaiseb doesn't agree. He proved that Diobandis believe in, many of them believe in Wahdatul Wujud. And he gave quotations from their books and, you know, proved to them that you people don't even have the correct concept of Tawheed. And you people deny Khat Minabut. I can't see my timer okay. anymore. But if you want you're, to address this first, then I'll answer the other Okay, you want me to address it very quickly? I can, I, I, I can address it, but let's not have a conversation or debate on this because uh, it's going to take from our time and we will uh, lose track from our topic. I'll respond to your points in 30 seconds. Firstly... All the views expressed by Diobandi, Ali Adis, and Brailvi scholars in their books about each other are completely irrelevant to uh, Ahmadis or the question of Ahmadis because they are all united on one thing. Okay, as uh, as different as they are from each other, okay, they are united upon one thing, and that is that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadriani was a disbeliever, and his followers, those who believe that he was a prophet are also disbelievers. They are all united. Just like the Ahmadi, Lahori Ahmadis and Qadiani Ahmadis have differences and they attack each other because of those differences, okay, and don't follow each other's authorities, okay? We have the same thing. We have differences, right? But we are all brothers in one faith. At least we can say Deobandis, Brelvis and Elehadis and others, okay, Sufis of all types and denominations, as long as they don't commit shirk, we are all brothers in one faith. We are Muslims, okay? And we believe Mirza Ghulam Qadiani was a disbeliever. So this is it. So okay, it's so not... Our, 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 our differences are not relevant to so, the question okay, so of... So I'll tell you yeah. why they're relevant. Firstly, they're... Brother then, Rafi, sorry, no, my no, apologies. No, no, this is where I'm going to interrupt yeah. a little bit. So actually, because this, this is not the topic. interruption start we, with we, is we, why I asked yeah, yeah. the brother at non moderate okay, Brother Razi, I'm just going to interrupt for a moment. So the we're going to give you three Razi minutes. Wants, like, we're starting fresh. About, we're starting brother fresh. Razi, just yes, allow us to have a discussion, brother. Brother Razi, just listen for a second. So we're actually not talking about the topic. That's the problem. So if you don't, if you if you think that interrupting you when you're not talking about the topic is a problem, then actually there's no discussion to In be had. Debate, I can talk about anything. No, I want. We're, we're talking about the topic specifically. Topic Brother Adnan said a 30 second response which he gave to you, and you've so gone give back. Give me to the 30 topic. seconds, and we can switch. Talk. So what we, what I'd like you to do. Uh, what I'd like to do is really, yeah. you. a lot of things have been put to you. You said there were many things. I'll answer Mariam, them all. Don't Mariam, worry. Mariam, Ghulam Reza Ahmed said that Mariam al Islam I is have it in front of me, brother. I don't need equally extra blame. He's equally to blame for the trust. slander that was made against her. Yeah, yeah. Brother, Razi, I have it in front of me. I wrote everything, yeah. everything down. Don't no, worry. Brother Razi, one second. I'm just going to lay it out for you so you so you can respond. Mariam al Islam was yeah, equally yeah. to blame for the slander. One yeah. point. Second point. Isa al-Islam's birth therefore was humiliated because of this. Yeah, I have it all the, written down. The fifth down thing there. was that the, the Maryam al-Islam was fifth five months pregnant when the people confronted That was him. the second point that Adnan, I told so him about answering my were made. So please, if you could respond to those. And I'm going to address those, but I will also address what Adnan said because he brought this point up. If, what, if you want to do that in your time, if yeah, you want to do that you, in your time, your time you. has started. So Adnan just said they are brothers in humanity with Brelvi's Diobandi, Zubair Ali Zaiseb disagrees with you, Ahmed Edda Khan disagrees with you. They both said that these people reject Khatmin Abud, Brelvi said Diobandi is rejected. Diobandi say Brelvi is rejected. It's an ongoing circle. They do the fear of each other. Ask for your questions. I'll answer two in this turn and then the other one we agreed. I'll answer the other one. The first one you said was that Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam was insulted by Hazrat Ahmed alayhi salam. He alayhi salam never insulted her ever. And as for the claim of the blame, if you read the same al hakam passage you're quoting, he says that the Jews... You know, from their side of the story, they have this right to make this blame. And the Christians have no answers to the Jews. This is what Hazrat al is saying on that same Al-Hakam passage. Then he says, but the Quran, 
testifies to the purity of Hazrat Maryam Islam and that she was pure and she had nothing to be blamed for, number one. Number two, the question about the Isa Islam's birth being covered up and, you know, declared uh, not as a miracle by the Jews. Hazrat Ahmed Islam's statement is completely true. The Jews did not accept it as a miracle. They said that, God forbid, Hazrat Maryam Islam had adultery, God forbid, with the soldier. One of the soldiers, they accused her of this. So Hazrat Ahmed al is responding to the Jew, to the Christians who said Isa alayhi salam is a god because he's born without a father. Hazrat Ahmed al said that didn't even convince the Jews. So this sign was covered up, but he didn't deny it's a sign. This is called Ilzami Jawab to the Christians that you people make Isa a God, even his birth, you can't use it to prove his godhood. This is one angle he Islam took. And in my next turn, I'll answer the other points because obviously time's up. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you very much for your response. Over to you, Tazma. So uh, before I start, uh, Razi, is it possible if you can turn on your camera? So I think it's more interactive when we can see each other. Is it possible, Razi? Um, I have bad camera quality, but sure, one that's second. Fine. That's fine. Because we feel more interactive, you know. That is fine. I need to see my uh, camera one second. Because I'm not in my normal room. So you can start speaking or work on this. No, you take your time. I want to look at your beautiful face as well. You see the noor in me? I'm just Let's joking. see what it is. <laughs> I'm just joking. One second. Because I, I don't have a stream. webcam either. It's like the... Um, it's like... Okay. You see it's oh, yeah. bad quality. Thank you very much, Razi. I appreciate that. Let I me actually get a hat because I don't usually have my... No, look, you're looking a lot better than that scary hat, man. Come on. <laughs> let, this, let him take the hat and not <laughs> even, even this hat is better, man. One no second. Um, Razi is going to wear his badge of Ahmadiyya, the hat. In the meantime, yeah, so we, we want to keep this stream as decent, as conversational, as interactive as possible. So let's not inshallah. interrupt each other, inshallah. Okay, so I request from everyone, try not to interrupt each other because we, we, get, we are giving time. So if the moderator who is Imran Bhai, if he thinks that we are not addressing the point, he has the right to point that out. And when he's pointing that out, let's not argue with him, but listen to him. Because I don't think he has an agenda to, to you know, do injustice to anyone here. Razi, you looked fine, man, without the hat. You look fine. Okay. I think he's lying down somewhere. <laughs> I need the hat, brother. Okay, let's okay, go. Razi, are you, okay, Razi, now. Inshallah, yeah. Razi, first thing is that uh, we'll go point to point. There's no rush. If we are not able to finish, we'll keep moving in this inshallah, live stream on the same topic. So, Razi, uh, basically, if I understood properly, you said that in this passage, Mirza Ghulam is not giving his viewpoint Rather, he's talking something about the Bible or he's giving an ilzami jawab. So, so people can, inshallah, follow our conversation as well. I'm going to put that on the screen so people uh, can know that what's being discussed. So, you need to tell us in our turn that this, we are first, the, the point number one is, Hazrat Maryam pe tohmat lagai gai. Is tohmat ne Hazrat Isa ki viladat ke ajuba ko khak me mila diya. मगर इस तोहमत में सिर्फ यहूदियों का कसूर नहीं बल्कि खुद हजरत मरियम से बड़ी भारी गलती हुई जिससे यहूद को तोहमत का मौका मिला एंड देन ही गिव द गलती एज़ वेल व्हिच वी कैन डिस्कस नो प्रॉब्लम सो यू हैव टू टेल अस इन योर टर्न दैट इन दिस पैसेज और ऑन एनी ऑफ द पैसेजेस यू नीड टू यू कांट जस्ट से दैट रीड फोर लाइन बिफोर फोर लाइन नो यू नीड टू टेल अस दैट व्हाट एविडेंस डू यू हैव यस वी नो दैट इट वाज द ज्यूज who accused Maryam alayhi salam. We know that. The Quran tells us. But our question is that in this one, Mirza is explaining that. Mirza Ghulam is explaining that. Mirza giving his point of view. So I don't want to go further and further. I would end here so we can go point to point. Please tell us that in this passage, the first part I have just read, you need to provide us the evidence that why you are saying it is not the viewpoint of Mirza Ghulam, 
rather it is something about the bible or ilzami jawab i'm done okay jazakumullah so the first thing that you have to understand is that hazrat ahmed alayhi salam he believed in the virgin birth and that it was a miracle and a sign from Allah the Almighty, and it was a miracle as well, number one. So he throughout his books has accepted that it was a sign. But yes, for the Jews, it was not, you know, accepted the way it should have been accepted. And this happens with all the miracles. Even Allah says in the Quran regarding the splitting of the moon, that when the splitting of the moon happened, the kuffar turned away. This happens with the miracles, and only the true believers benefit from the signs, number one. Number two, if you notice the Jews after Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam gave birth, they raised allegation of adultery now the Billah means like, like Allah says in the Quran, Bohtan and Adima, the Jews raised this Bohtan in the answer so Allah says, no, she was pure. You know, Hazrat Isa Lassam testified to her purity. And Allah says, That Allah raised him and purified him from all these allegations. And you know, he responded to those allegations. As for your question that, how was it Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam's innocent mistake? Hazrat Ahmed alayhi explains it here. That out of her, you know, it wasn't that she herself made any mistake of that sort. Rather, out of her innocence, she never shared that dream. And this is why, you know, the Jews had room for allegation. But Hazrat Ahmed himself explains in al hakam in detail that the Quran purifies Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. She never had any such relations with uh, Yusuf like Adnan falsely attributed on Twitter. And she was pure and it was a miraculous birth. And not only this, in this passage of Nasim Davit, right on the top, it says, Masih ki padaish bhi koi asa amr nahi hai, jisse unki khuda mustambit ho sake. Hazrat Ahmed is denying that you cannot say this birth makes him God. Even this wasn't enough for the Jews to accept him as a normal man. And you Christians are saying he's God. So this is the context, brother. Okay. So thank you for that. Uh, not by can you. we keep inshallah back and forth so we can inshallah continue the, the theme? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just ask a directly relevant question on this. That, so your your Razi, you are conceding now that this is Mirza's view, not the view of the Jews, that they confronted her at five months pregnant. Correct? That the Jews confronted Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam when she was pregnant and accused her. Five months pregnant, yes. I think it's six, I can't remember, but when she was pregnant, they did accuse her, yes. Okay, is this Mirza's view or the view of the Jews? This is historically proven. Hazrat Ahmed al is presenting the historical view. We've never denied this that the I, I, Jews I, accused. I understand. So you're conceding, you, so you're conceding, you're owning, you're owning the entire paragraph that yes. Mirza, this is Mirza's view. This is a historical is, view he's presenting. Therefore, brother. therefore he's endorsing it. Yes, that this happened. This did okay. happen. The Jews okay. did accuse Hazrat Mayyam alayhi salam. Now, it's now, in the Quran, Bohtan and Adima. That's What's fine. that Bohtan? That's fine. Can you tell us? I got it. I got it. You now, think they saw to... her pregnant and they let her go? They didn't uh, accuse the... her? They said, oh, this was the virgin birth? Is that no. what the Jews said? I, I got the answer. I got the answer. Over to you, Diaz. Bhai, to your your... Adnan, bhai. You're a historian. Okay. Yeah, two okay. minutes. Start now. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, Alhamdulillah, the first thing has been established that in this passage, it is the viewpoint of Mirza Ghulam. And the reason Razi provided is that this was something historical and Mirza Ghulam using those historical sources and in this one he is presenting his view. So this one thing has been established. So now there is no more uh, basically backing off from this one and again going back to Ilzami Jawab. So that door is closed now. Now, point number one is now once the passage has been established that it is Mirza Ghulam's viewpoint. Now I'm going to raise the questions because now the authenticity is established. So my question number one is, in this passage, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, he explained that how the, you know, the virgin birth miracle, how it got stained, mukaddar ho gaya, and how it became, how, khak mein mil gaya, how it was humiliated or ruined, okay? So, and I, I can show on the screen as well that this mukaddar ho gaya is, so basically, we'll go point to point. Razi, according to this established passage of Mirza Ghulam, 
do you agree with Mirza Ghulam that because of the mistake on the part of Maryam, the miraculous birth miracle was real? I am not saying that Mirza is denying that. I am not saying, please don't go on that one. He is saying that it is miracle, but the miracle got humiliated and was stained. Do you agree with this statement? I'm only asking you this one question. So please stick with that one. And don't go on that. The Quran clarify that. We are discussing this passage in this Mirza Ghulam is giving us a conclusion. That's the conclusion of Mirza Ghulam, which is his view. Please explain to us. Do you agree with that? Yes, you you time up, I can't see that yeah. time here. Yeah, yeah. His time is up to your time starts now. Okay, firstly, Ilzami Jawab, you're trying to close the door. The door is just about to be opened. I showed you four lines ago that Hazrat Ahmed Al-Azam is refuting the Christians that you people have made Hazrat Isa alayhi a god by saying that, oh, the virgin birth happened. The virgin birth even, you cannot prove it to make Isa alayhi a god because the Jews didn't even accept that because of the historical evidence of what took place behind the scenes according to the Jews, which was obviously complete lies as Hazrat Ahmed Al-Azam defends Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam and says she was free from any adultery contrary to what Adnan accused Hazrat Ahmed Al-Azam of. So Hazrat Ahmed Al-Azam refutes the Christians that look, you people see you had no father, right? And this makes him God, this is improving because even that great miracle, the nishan, the sign which was shown to the Jews, it didn't have any effect on them. They used that to accuse Hazrat Isa alayhi salam further. So yes, from the viewpoint of the Jews, the miracle, this miracle that should have, according to Christians, made Hazrat Isa alayhi salam a God, it, you know, backfired from the view of the Christians. Okay, Hazrat Ahmed Al-Assam's own view is that it was a sign Hazrat Maryam Alayhi Assam was pure, free of any error, blessed, you know, a lady of the paradise, like all Muslims believe. She never did adultery, she was free of anything wrong, right? And everyone must look at her with mercy. In fact, Hazrat Ahmed Al-Assam said that Allah said, I am in the likeness of Hazrat Maryam Alayhi Assalam. So this is the real picture. And you said, let's look at this passage alone. No, brother. You have to look at everything together to understand someone's views. Adnan Rashid said this about Ibn Taymiyyah when he was debating one of the Shias. I think that you have to look at everything together. But when it comes to the Messiah, the Imam Mahdi, our usul go out the door, unfortunately. <clears throat> Time's up. Time's up. Thank you very much. So now everyone can see that Razi has not addressed the point Brother Intiaz made, because he has already conceded that these are the views of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. This is not Ilzami Jawab. When Mirza said, Maryam was equally blamable and the miracle got stained, okay, and that she was five months pregnant when she was confronted, Razi did not address any single one of those points. Again, uh, Intiaz, bhai, I'll let you handle it. Over to you. Two minutes for you. Oh. <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, Razi, you know, this is the problem that how can we proceed in our discussion? In the first turn, we agreed both that this passage is giving us, it is giving us the viewpoint of Mirza Ghulam, which you said that he took from the proven historical sources. Razi, please listen. You said that Mirza Ghulam took from the historical sources, which are proven. It is on record, Razi. So now you again want to go back on that complex, you know, which nobody can understand that why you still calling it Ilzami Jawab number one. Number two, Razi, look, we are not going to ask you any further question. We are not saying that was did all we're asking you, Mirza Ghulam is giving us a conclusion. He say he said that because in her vision she saw the angel and she hid all of that. Because of that, what happened? Now she has the blame. She gave opportunity to the Jews to accuse her. And because of that accusation, the miraculous birth got stained and it got humiliated. This is not Ilzami Jawab. Look, Razi, please. Uh, look, uh, for the sake of Allah, Razi, you are my brother in humanity. I am begging you. Be honest to the truth. Mirza Ghulam is giving you a conclusion. And you know that he, and uh, you, you said already, that Mirza Ghulam took all of this from the proven historical sources. 
are you basically backing uh, going back from that statement as well and you again saying ilzami jawab there is no ilzami jawab here and now look at this reference in this reference it is again the same accounts which mirza gulam says that the christians cannot answer but he has got some jewish source through which he got the true answer sahi jawab and in this sahi jawab he again said exactly the same thing so mirza gulam is giving us historical using the historical sources to give his view point so rasi please don't back off from everything what you say in the in the term one how can you proceed then ji thumbs up thumbs up o- over to you rasi another yes. chance so first, to answer yeah, the he, question yeah answer so the I question didn't go directly against anything i said maybe you're having difficulty understanding so i'll repeat myself hazrat ahmed alayhi salam is proving to the christians that hazrat isa alayhi salam is not god because of this miracle or this sign of the virgin birth you brothers originally tried to claim that he didn't even believe in the miraculous birth so alhamdulillah we're moving forward that lie has been uncovered where you firstly claimed that he alasam didn't believe in the virgin birth and you asked me for the references and i presented them on the screen that day then adnan rashid you know i i won't call it a lie because it's a fresh start but he misattributed <laughs> the hazrat ahmed alasam believed the hazrat maryam alayhi salam did zina now the billah min zalik alhamdulillah he took that back today as well as for this point that this is mentioned al hakam 1902 where hazrat ahmed alasam says that a jewish person answered brother imtiaz on the same page he alasam says that no christian is able to answer the allegations the jews raise and adnan in one stream said no this is not true we're able to answer everything no the jews couldn't answer the christians cannot answer anything for example the question of elijah when they asked isa lesam where is elijah and he said it's yahya the christians can't answer that till today the jews reject isa alayhi salam because of that on the same page and i have the urdu i read this before many times as it ahmed alayhi salam writes that the quran answers everything and proves she was not touched and it was a miracle so that exposes the other lie that adnan originally made that now the bila Hazrat Ahmed Al Asam is saying it's zina. So Ilzami Jabab door just open. He's refuting the Christians that you people say Isa Al Asam is a god because of this. No, even this miracle was tainted upon. The Jews didn't believe in it. What are you people talking about? It makes him god. The Jews used this to accuse him further. And Maryam Al Asam, Hazrat Ahmed Al Asam explains throughout his literature that your, she was. Your time is up. Time, time is up. Can, I, can I just make a request? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't want you to call people liars anymore, please. Yeah, I didn't so, call appreciate. anyone a liar. I you, said you, you did. no, he didn't. He so, didn't do it. So, so no, I, I, I didn't. Now, it. Iman, why are you second, accusing second, me of that? I, I why like are you accusing me of that? Rosie, don't get emotional. Wait, wait, Rosie, calm, calm down, calm down, calm down. The second thing is actually, um, I just want to clarify a point because you made a very dramatically. You said that Isa Islam, you've you've shown that you believe in the verse. Obviously, from the Ahmadis that we've heard that they don't believe they believe that only natural events occur. and even the birth of uh, of Isa alayhi salam through Maryam alayhi salam however that was one some type of higher level natural phenomena and so the claim that you make about miracles and it's important because you use the word miracle like muslims use the word miracle but you mean something completely different by it i'm just clarifying that point for you that no one was saying anything uh, actually the point that was being made about that you do not believe in the virgin birth in the sense that it was a miracle from allah a supernatural event is actually <coughs> still valid and, and holds water so brother brother now i have to answer this yeah. in my yeah, turn you can answer right in your turn no yeah. problem you, 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 can, you, can, you can you can you can answer in your turn no problem can can i request something can i request we're going to have to do it slightly differently now because raziz uh, has been given three turns and he hasn't addressed uh, the the points so i would like some straight answers in light of that particular quote raziz do you believe sincerely from the depth of your heart that maryam al islam was confronted by her people at 5 months pregnant yes, yes 100% or no? she was confronted okay. that contradicts the quran she was pregnant no one said that, anything she didn't face any persecution that, Razi, you Razi, no, no, no. you going you going on Razi, you she you going on you going the church as a pregnant you going on razi you going on razi razi you going on you going on. You're going on one second that oh, contradicts i need 20 seconds to answer yeah. it doesn't yes. contradict the quran Fine. okay it does it does no, the quran it doesn't. says Okay, I'll I'll tell you. Re- open Surah Maria. Open I've Surah Maria. I've read it many times. Okay, it says when she gave birth, she yeah. carried her, she carried the child to her people. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, she carried. I'll read it to you now, word by that word, so that we can, we can nip. That no, 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 no. Okay, so now we need this. Adnan, by we should be going. My request is no, Adnan, by my request is that we should have one conversation at one time. Let me talk. And I have fourteen minutes left, but I want to discuss this now because this is a weak allegation which has to be answered. Okay, let me talk. 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 Let me
okay. writing in front of me. So, and I just, so, this ayah, these ayahs, ayahs don't support your claim that he alayhi went against the Quran. Are you saying, counter okay. question, are you saying when Maryam alayhi salam got pregnant, the whole pregnancy for nine months, she was, God forbid, in hiding, hiding somewhere. And she came out only when it was time to conceive. And then the Jews raised allegations. No one exactly. wanted. Where did she disappear? Where was she? I know because you're not Quran, Shia. So you don't believe in that hiding the Quran, concept. The Quran so tells clear. us. The Quran tells us when she was given the glad tiding, when she became pregnant. Okay. Okay. And when she, she came to her people in verse 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, so eat and drink and put your heart at ease. Okay. But if you see any of the people, if you see any of the people, so she hasn't seen people. She hasn't seen people. The Quran is very clear. Okay. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling her, if you see any of your people, فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ سَوْمًا Say to them that I have, okay, I have vowed silence. So here the Quran contradicts your Mirza and you. The Quran is saying she hasn't met any of her people. It's only when she gave birth, she comes to her people and then they accuse her. Then they point to her and then she points to the cradle. So your five months pregnancy confrontation didn't take place according to the Quran because Allah is still telling her, if you see any of your people, say I have vowed silence. So there you go. There goes your again, no, no, you know, it, Mirza. Doesn't, it doesn't. Now, let me answer that. Okay, I'm gonna spin it. You're gonna spin it. You're gonna spin it. So I'm no, gonna start I the timer because it. actually, I this won't is spin it, a... but I know Imtiaz Bey wants to speak as well. But firstly, you know, some commentaries of the Quran do say that Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam was told not to speak, but this doesn't mean she never saw any man for nine months and she was hiding in a cave, didn't have food, water, anything but like that's that. That's what the Quran Let is saying. Finish. Let me finish. She had no food, no water, no drink, no family, you know, no one took care for her. She was just abandoned. Now the Bilamin Zalik, for me, that is blasphemy. Number one. Number two, here when Allah is saying regarding that the expression that you know, um uh, that do not speak. It's regarding this entire matter. It doesn't mean no one accused her or she was in hiding like some of the Shias believe their mom Mahdi is hiding. Do not attribute that to Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. You're telling me that for nine months, the Jews who knew that she was, you know, a pious woman, they didn't even think, where did she go? They didn't see her. She went into, she disappeared completely off of the face of earth. God forbid, and no one raised any allegation. The Quranic ayah doesn't say that. This is your tafsir. I don't have to agree with your tafsir. You're not hujja upon me. You're not the prophet. You're not Allah the Almighty. Allah never said what you're saying. This is your own tafsir that, you know, she disappeared. It doesn't say that anywhere. When Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam got pregnant, the Jews did accuse her. And they continued to accuse her. And they actually said she had relations with the soldier. This the was Bukhtan and Avima. I have 20 seconds left. It's in the books, the historical Jewish literature, that they accuse her of having relations with the Jewish soldier brother. So they mocked her. And then this ayah shows that Allah made Isa alayhi salam defend her. It doesn't deny that she was mocked before that brother. So please do not insert your own tafsir and, you know, assume that it's in the Quran. Jazak. Thank you. Thank you. We were silent. We'll let you speak for entirety of two minutes. Okay. And I'm going to go to Brother Imtiaz very quickly because he wants to speak. But I quoted the Quran word by word. I did not add any of my words and tafsir. Just wanted to highlight that, Razi. So it's not working. Imtiaz, bhai, over to you. <clears throat> okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Once again, uh, I am compelled to say that we have again started a bunch of points. And uh, this was exactly what I did not want to happen. I wanted to go point by point. So now... Unfortunately, because of this, I have to leave the point which was very clear in which Mirza Ghulam clearly accused Sayyida Maryam alayhi salam that if she was blamed by the Jews of fornication, the blame is not entirely on the Jews. Yes. She has a fault. Continue with that point. Continue with. Make your point, the one he, you were making. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Our, our, our 
our conversations in between don't have to be relevant or uh, directly linked to what you, the point you're making. So continue making your point, please. Go ahead. So please. basically, all, all I'm asking, Razi, is do you believe that if uh, the Jews, if they blamed Maryam alayhi salam, Razi, please, my question is, if the Jews blamed Maryam alayhi salam, do you agree that the fault is of Maryam as well? Why? According to Mirza Ghulam, because she was hiding her pregnancy, which gave opportunity to the Jews to accuse her. All I'm saying is, do you agree with this? So please, Razi, do not say 10 things. All I'm saying is, tell me this simple thing that do you agree that Maryam alayhi salam has a fault as well because she was hiding her pregnancy and this hiding of the pregnancy gave opportunity to the Jews to accuse her of fornication. Do you agree with this? That's only one question. Please give me, I beg you, a simple answer. Over to you, Razi. Simple answer, direct answer. Your time starts yes. now. Uh, Imran Bhai, please start. Razi's time. I'll take my two minutes. Firstly, Brother Adnan, you tried to insert that you only read the ayah. You did give your own tafsir. If you open the tafsir, there's many... Are you cutting me off or am I just... Yeah, I was about to, to because you're not asking the question. I don't need your commentary, brother. Imran. I'm not giving you a commentary. I have, Look, I have not given you... Razi, I have not given you a commentary. I am asking you to answer the question. I'll now, the answer problem how is, I like, The problem bro. is this, is that... I'll answer you don't, how... You don't like it when I don't ask you to answer the question. And I don't understand why I that's the case. I don't need your help. But I'm not giving you help. I'm not giving you help, Razi. Why would I want to help you? All I'm trying to do is to get you to answer the question that's being asked and avoid because you're not helping the people in the in yeah, the yeah, chat that's, that's understand fair, what's Razi. going on. You're yeah, being asked fair, a Razi. very direct question. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed states that Maryam al Islam is equally to blame for what's happened, the allegation made against equally to blame. You said that this was a historical that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was referring to something that was historical. You accepted it. You are being asked to clarify that do you agree that he was equally, that Mary Islam was equally to blame? You've done everything in over 10 minutes of speaking that or time allocated to you, except for answer the direct question. Okay, can now, I answer? All we're asking for you, now, let me finish what I'm saying. If you allowing me, this, I'm leaving. Let me finish what I'm saying. So what we're asking will give you, you, Razi, he will give you time. Razi, question. he will give you time. Yeah. We're he'll asking give you to time. answer the question. I'll reset yeah. your time. The question is very clear. Brother Imtiaz, I want you to give the question in one sentence so Brother Razi can answer it, please. Brother, I know the question. Yeah, I'm just going to clarify it for you so you don't mistake it. Razi, please, uh, Razi, please, don't get upset because we are saying that we are trying to have a fresh start. Imran Bai is all Imran Bai is saying. Please answer the question. That's all he's saying. Okay, so my question is... Yes. So yes. Razi, Razi Bai, Razi Bai, allow me to finish. Razi Bai, my question is... You said that in these passages, Mirza Ghulam is using the proven, the proven historical sources. So within these proven historical sources, Mirza Ghulam is saying that Maryam has a share of blame as well. If, if the Jews accuse her of fornication, she shares the blame. Why? Why? He said because she was hiding the pregnancy and this hiding of pregnancy gave Jews opportunity to blame her. Do you agree with this, which you said is an approved and proven historical source in the Ghulam okay. court? So, Brother Imtiaz, you see when you speak and Adnan speaks, Brother Imran never cuts you guys off. This is why I tweeted that I won't come to the stream. This is the reason. Because whenever your brother says something wrong and I'm trying to correct you guys, you quickly say, oh, you're changing the topic. Who brought in that other ayah of the Quran? It was Adnan. And he just said, we disbelieve in the Quran because we see that she did speak to people and people saw her. Now, will he put the same fatwa on all the ulama who have made it? Clear? Like, I have to, don't cut me off, brother. I'm not Please. Off. I see the time. I don't need your help. Carry on, Razi. Razi, carry on. It's your, it's your I choice. Have to of Modudi in front of me. You know, because Adnan loves him. And he says, you need to not say anything with regard to the child. This is what Allah was saying, that do not speak to anyone regarding the child. So according to Adnan Rashid, Adnan Bay, Modudi Seb is also gone now. One by one, you take every scholar out. 
This is not just. You need to study tafsir and see what are the different opinions. This doesn't mean we are rejecting Quran. And Muhammad Imtiaz Bay knows this, that there are different opinions regarding this ayah. If he knows, he can correct you in your own time. But he knows what I'm saying is right. Allah is my witness. Maududi says tafsir is right here. As for the statement of Hazrat Ahmed Al-Assam, I already explained that the Christians use this to make Isa a God. So Hazrat Ahmed is saying that Hazrat Maryam Al-Assam had the dream and she kept it to herself. This is true. This is her innocence. You know, it's not a sin on her. She kept it to herself out of her innocence. And then the pregnancy actually happened. And not only this, Hazrat Ahmed Al-Islam explicitly says that we must look at Hazrat Maryam Al-Islam in every sense with mercy and not look at her with any evil intent. Okay, okay. This Time out. Brother point. Imran, one second. Uh, uh, Imtaz Bhai, we're not moving forward until yes. Razi answers that question directly. Yes. So Imtaz Bhai, can you point... To the question again and we will give another two minutes to Razi so that he can answer okay. and we will not interrupt him. We will not interrupt him. We will let everyone see what's going on. So yeah. answer, uh, repeat the question again, please. Go ahead. Yeah. So inshallah, in these two minutes, inshallah, I will repeat the question at the end. So Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So Razi, you said, for example, you said that Mirza Ghulam was telling the Christians that you make Jesus God. None of that is relevant here. What is relevant? Mirza Ghulam is giving us a conclusion about what? About the issue that the Jews, they are blaming Maryam alayhi salam of adultery. Mm -hmm. And he is giving us, according to you, from the proven historical sources. Now you cannot take that back. From the proven historical sources, Mirza is giving us the conclusion that blame is shared on the, on the, uh, uh, on the, on the shoulders of the Maryam as well. Why? Then he gave the reason that because she was hiding her pregnancy. So what Mirza Ghulam concluded, according to you from the proven historical sources, do you agree that Maryam salam shares the burden of blame as well? That's all. After that, you, you can explain whatever you want to. Please give us a state. I beg you. I beg you. Give us a state answer that do you agree? That Maryam alayhi salam shares the blame. Which blame? That she was being accused of zina, fornication. And in this blame, she has the fault as well because she was hiding her pregnancy, which gave opportunity to the Jews to blame her. Do you agree with this theory, which Mirza Ghulam, according to you, is giving us from the proven historical sources? No other topic. We are not discussing is Jesus God or not. Please give me this answer. Okay. Jazakumullah. So Imran Imtiaz, but you have 20 seconds left. Before I answer this question, was Adnan Bay wrong about the seer of that ayah? That anyone who says that it's about what we were saying, that that is against the Quran? Yes or no? No, I, I was not, not wrong. Answer Why were you not coming? This is not right, Imtiaz. No. Because I'm not, look, wrong. Listen, listen. I was not wrong. wrong but answer and the it's question. about Quran and you're letting Razi. it slide. That's Razi, listen, my answer. Wait, I, just, Razi, I, listen, my answer. I won't ask you. I'll Wait, answer now. I'll I'm answer. Razi, I'm ask one, me I'm a question. Guys, guys come. Can I everyone silent, please? Everyone silent. We want to have a very decent conversation. I will respond to Razi's point once he has answered. I have a very strong, very powerful answer, but I'm not going to because Razi wants to ride on that to avoid the question. Huh? So, Razi, I'm not going to do that. You're going to answer directly what Brother Imtiaz asked. Yes, so I'll start my time now. Firstly, Brother Adnan, I don't need to escape anything, Brother. I'm sitting here. I was busy today. I still came. By Allah, I'm not scared of any of these questions or I wouldn't be here every stream. I came to meet you downtown, one hour drive, you know, twice actually, once to Milton. If I feared you, would I be coming? Jazakumullah. So please do not say we're afraid of your streams. This, this excuse has to go out the window now. Secondly, Brother Imtiaz said that it's irrelevant that he Al-Assam is answering the Christians. No, it's definitely relevant because Christians are saying that Isa Al-Assam is God because of this birth. Hazrat Ahmed is refuting them. As for Hazrat Maryam Alayhislam's innocence, we accept that. That this is not about the this this passage of Nasim Dawat. Hazrat Ahmed is saying she was shown a dream that she will have a son. Hazrat Isa Alayhislam, who what happened? I'm on topic and you're cutting me off. 
No le hizo carino, carino. No, 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 Okay, so what I'm saying is Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, it was her innocence that she saw that dream and she never shared it. This does not see she hid her pregnancy, which Imtiaz kept saying. It's about that vision. When she became pregnant, as you know, Hazrat Ahmed alayhi salam's own works explain that the Jews knew and they accused her. So you're contradicting yourself now, brother. Sometimes you say that, you know, Hazrat Tehm is saying that the Jews accused her. Then sometimes you're saying that, oh, she hid her whole pregnancy. It doesn't work that way. Be just with the sources. So yes, her innocence, she didn't share that dream. But Hazrat Tehm is showing the Christians that that miracle that you're making Isa a God, it has no value for his Godhood. Because even that miracle becomes dubious because of the circumstances from the eyes of the Jews. So it's to refute the Christians. And this is Ilzami Jawab, whether you like it or not. But yes, it was Hazrat Mariam Alaihissalam's innocence, which Hazrat Mariam Alaihissalam says, we have to look at her with mercy. She was pure, the yeah, best time, of women. Time, your time's up. I request again, Imtiaz Bai, we're not moving on to another yes. question until Razi answers this question. Over to you. Uh, same question. Even if it takes us another hour, no problem. Yeah. We'll, we, 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 okay. we will stay. Hmm. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So for the sake of audience, I'm going to... Mirza Ghulam is giving us further the reasons that why he is blaming Maryam. Look at this one. Razi, please listen carefully. He says that... Uh, he says that... Uh, is liye wo is khab ko andar hi andar daba gai. Which khab? In which she was given th this news that she is going to bear a child. What, what else the khab was? What else the dream was? Lekin wo khab sachi thi. Which khab, which dream in which she was given the news of a child? Or saath hi amal ho gaya and she was, he got pregnant. Jis se Maria muddat tak pe khabar rahi. I'm surprised. A woman is pregnant and she doesn't know. Please explain how, how is that possible? Women, I, everybody as adult we know. Does he please explain for the people. A woman is pregnant for five months. And she does not know. How is that possible? She has no periods. Okay. She has no periods. Yeah, of course. No of course yeah. <laughs> if she misses and one then, or two periods, the woman knows that, okay, there's something and not then, right. And then, uh, not only period, every adult person and Dr. Imran will explain for us, when a woman is pregnant, during the first four months of pregnancy, she has many hormonal changes and whatnot. All of that, she does not know. How come? And then, when we have a lot of when people started to talk about that, Maryam ko hamal hai, that she is pregnant, or it's vakar logo ko khab sunadi, then she started to tell the dream. Lekin us vakar sunana be fayda tha. But telling people at that time was useless. Akhar buzurgo ne parda poshi. Razi, what is parda poshi? Parda poshi in Urdu mean that something wrong has happened and you are trying to hide that. This is called Parda Poshi. He said that Buzurgo ne Parda Poshi ke liye Yusuf naam ke shak se nika kar diya aur is tarah yeh aur is tarah yeh nishan mukaddar ho gaya. That is how the whole miraculous birth got tainted, got stained because of the fault. He explained further that why she was at fault because she was hiding and she was telling people on the wrong time. Razi, Mirza is giving a bunch of reasons that why Maryam is guilty. Yeah. How can so, you now say the that? so now the question is, Razi, do you believe that Maryam was equally to blame for the slander that was leveled against her? Okay. Very so direct question. Mean. Very oh, direct question. Brother, Two brother, Don, you think yeah. these are the first times we're the first time we're hearing this question? It's in the, the book, Sabut Hazir ha, has all of these allegations. They're not new. So if you can start my time, I'll begin answering now. It so started. He, pardon? Okay, we're well, time again. Time start time again, please. It started when you started talking. So I'll restart. <laughs> well, yeah, I thought start it started again. when you made the sound. 
So the imaginary sound. Um, yeah, you know, I just like, got a message from my brother right that Imran did make a Rosie, song. If you want Rosie, to Rosie, repeat Rosie, that. I'm, Maybe I'm it was totally... Adnan Bey getting Ilham. Don't worry. And there's no need to get agitated. I'll just start your time. Do, do, yeah? Maybe Adnan Bey was getting Ilham. Are, are you ready? The Bakra hiding in his room. We're going to we're gonna ignore everything. Go okay. ahead, Rosie. We're still so, waiting for the answer. Interesting. So, so first, start your time, thing is, first thing is, brothers... You have to understand that Hazrat Maryam salam, was the most pious woman of her time. Like Allah says in the Quran, she was given the status over all of the women of that time. Allah al-alameen is used, number one, okay? So because Hazrat Maryam salam, had that great status, she was so pure and innocent, you know, she never felt that this would actually take place how it took place. And this is normal with prophecies. Till they're not fulfilled, sometimes the person doesn't know how it will be fulfilled. So she had that dream. She kept it to herself, okay? Then months went by, you know, and she still never realized that what is about to happen, that she's actually pregnant. Now, Brother Imtiaz mentioned that period stop. That's fine, right? We didn't deny that regarding pregnancy but the point remains that Hazrat Maryam salam, this shows her innocence that she wasn't ready to accept that you know and she hid that dream she didn't share it with the Jewish elders then yes when it became apparent then it came out and the Jewish elders told her that she should get married and Hazrat Ahmed salam, explains that with all of this you have to look at Hazrat Maryam salam, with Rahma with Rahma with Rahma he defended her and responded to all the allegations of the Jews and said she was a pure woman and free of any charge. Now, as for the point of Barda Poshi is only of wrong things, in the sight of the Jews, it was wrong. So they tried to hide it. This doesn't mean it was actually wrong, according to Hazrat Ahmed who said she's pure of any sin and it was a miraculous birth. And your last point that how was she at fault? This is a fault by means of innocence. It's not a sin or anything like that. She didn't share this experience. It's not in the Quran either that when she had this experience, she shared it with everyone. So now you brothers are going against the Quran by suggesting, as I assume, that she did share this experience. We're still not moving forward, guys. One second. You're uh, going to say so that on everything, Adnan Bay. No, I'm no, still no, no. waiting for your answer about the ayah. Rizzi, 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 your time. Your time. Your time please. Rizzi, Rizzi, Rizzi. I, I literally had to go at 6. It's 6.30. Okay. So let's be 10 more minutes, then I have to leave, okay? Okay, Bismillah rahman rahim minutes. So basically, Razi said that Maryam alayhi salam has a high status. He quoted the Quran. You know, Razi, not only Quran, Bukhari as well, and you know this, that in the Bukhari, there's an authentic hadith that amongst the men, there are many who perfected themselves and their religion. But among the women, there are three women which are, na which are named, who perfected their religion. First one of them is Maryam alayhi salam. Who is saying this? Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. And as you said rightly, in the Quran, Allah says, we preferred her over all the women of her time. All of that. And this is the whole reason, Razi, we are disturbed. Understand our problem. This is the whole reason we are disturbed. That the women of this lofty status, the role model, is being accused of all of that, number one. Number two, you keep saying masoom, uh, innocent, innocent. Mirza Ghulam is saying she has the kusur. She has the fault. And you are saying innocent. Please, Razi, don't do this one. Show us in this passage where he says that she's innocent. Masoom means innocent. You are saying no. Mirza Ghulam says she has the kusur. She, is the, she has the fault. And you are changing his words. And then you are saying that uh, rahim ke kabil hai. Mirza Ghulam said that the whole family is needed our mercy. You know why? He said they have to compromise all of that. Because Maryam got pregnant and she was not a married woman. They got stuck in this situation. So then they have to find an old man Yusuf to, to get her married. And this is the context of why he said that the whole family needs our mercy. That's the whole context, Razi. Again, Razi, Alhamdulillah, you have said that you agree that that Sayyida Mari, the whatever Mirza said here, you agree with that. Right? Please clarify. Okay, so firstly, Brother Imtiaz, 
you know, Hazrat Ahmed Alaihissalam throughout his books has said Maryam Sadiqa and has praised her and has always defended her to the point where he said that Allah called me Maryam in the spiritual sense because Maryam Alaihissalam reached the highest stage of perfection. And in another book, in Brahim as well, many books, right? I can pull out the quotes if needed. He defends and says she used to get wahi and ilham. And she was masoom. So please do not spread falsehood regarding our beliefs. We will tell you what we believe. You can tell us what you believe. This blame, I told you, it's out of innocence. This does not make it a sin. Out of innocence, even if she, you know, did this, this, this has nothing to do with sin, brother. She kept that dream to herself. This is not a sin. Hazrat Ahmed is refuting the Christians that this miracle where you make Isa a God, even that was tainted. I can give you many examples from Islamic history, but you know them very well. Where even those, you know, Anbiya are masoom, but out of forgetfulness, if they do something, it doesn't make them sinners. Like Hazrat Adam salam, Fanasiya, right? He forgot the covenant. This is not a sin on him. It's still a mistake, but he's masoom. So please, basic Islam, Brother Imtiaz, you know it well. You've studied Islam. You know these things. As for Hazrat Maryam Alayhi being amongst the three women, I agree 100%. I don't disagree with that. So I don't know what you want. Do you want me to read this? No, 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 no. You carry on. You carry on. Yeah. So the point is Hazrat Maryam Alayhi was pure. She was, you know, innocent. She was the greatest of women. Hazrat Ahmed Alayhi defended her and protected her from every allegation. There's no allegation here, brother. This is historical facts that the Jews did Bhutan and Adima. If you want to reject the Quranic ayah, I cannot force you. La ikraha fiddin. If you want okay, to, Rosie, Rosie, one, one second. Time up. That's your time choice. Up. I cannot force you to believe time up. in the time ayah. Up. Time up. Okay, Rosie. One direct question and a direct answer. Do you believe Maryam was equally to blame for the slander against her? If you look at it the way Hazrat Ahmed is explaining that based on Christian saying he's God and using no, no. this example, no, no. No, out no, of her I... innocence, she has a right to be blamed out of her innocence. Yes. You're not answering. But it's not a you're sin not, or anything not, wrong you're, you're, you're on you're her not part. Answering. You're yeah, not I answering. am answering. I am answering. Mirza Allah, said, because he has to go, let me finish with him because he has yes. to go very soon. Okay. Go ahead. Finish so, with or finish with No, no, I said that I have to finish with finish him on with you. Topic. I finish thought you meant like finish, like you know, like Adnan no, 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 no. says, I finish. I, I have to finish with him on this okay. topic. Okay, inshallah, we can continue this next week as well. Whenever okay. you're okay. but Imtiaz, okay. before you go, before you go, please for future, right? Announce the topic a week before because you changed the topic last second. This is not fair. You announced the whole week that the topic is miracles of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And today in the morning you change the topic. This isn't nice, brother. It's moral ethics that we should both follow. Number one. Number okay, two. Let me Rosie, Rosie, this is you're, you're the making topic. A speech. It's not necessary. This is the topic. I'm not don't making any new yeah. arguments. I'm just saying. You're making a speech which is yeah. unnecessary. And then when we don't Razi, come, oh, you necessary. ran away. No, no, no. Razi, allow me to finish. I, okay. I respond to you. Okay. Because on the Twitter... Dr. Yahya made a categorical statement. He said, not only Dr. Yahya, but nobody is coming on the stream. That's point he number one. He said that. He said bias streams. To... He said bias streams. Uh, Rosie, you say, you, you interrupt so much, so often and so freely. So and then you get upset when people interrupt you. Resume. I don't understand this behavior. Please allow so them to finish the sentence. Yeah, yeah basically, Razi, because you guys have already said, uh, and you, by the way, you appreciated that video message from Dr. Yaya as well, in which he said, and you, you can watch it again, people have already, he said that not only Dr. Yaya, but because you believe that these streams are biased, so none of you is coming. So obviously, our topic is still on, and if you want to defend the topic of miracle, no problem, inshallah, I promise you, we'll do it today, right now. So basically, when you guys said this, we cannot just bore people with everything we said in the past. We have to continue educating the people because it was being said continuously on the media that the Ahmadi side, they respect Maryam alayhi salam. We wanted to show people that this is how they respect Maryam alayhi salam. So we are basically continuing with our topic because you guys said you are going to boycott this stream. Now, 
let's continue now, the topic now bismillahir rahmanir rahim so razi because you have to you said you want to leave very early so i want to discuss the topic because i don't want people to be confused on this one now i first want to show the reference which you are referring that in which mirza gulam is saying hazrat e masih ke be be baap paida hone ke mutalliq hamara iman aur aqeeda etc Every, everybody can read this one that yes he said our aqeeda but people need to understand people need to understand the details mirza gulam give as they say the devil is in the details now let's look at the details so he says that masih yeah, this is basically our uh, malfuzat volume 3 page 305 مسیح کی پیدائش کے ذکر پہ فرمایا کہ خدا کی سنت دو طرح کی ہوتی ہے ایک کثرتی جیسے عموماً عورت سے دودھ نکلتا ہے مگر بعض اوقات نر سے بھی نکلتا ہے ایسے واقعات دنیا میں ہوتے ہیں یہ قلیل الوقوع واقعات خارق عادت کہلاتے ہیں واٹ از ایڈریسنگ مسیح کی پیدائش اور خارق عادت امور دس از دا ٹاپک آن دس ٹاپک ہی از ٹیلنگ پیپل دیٹ دا ورجن برتھ آف مسایا از لائک اے میل گونگ ملک اوکے اینڈ آئی لوک ایٹ نیکسٹ ون He says that جس حالت میں برسات کے دنوں میں ہزاروں کیڑے مکوڑے خود بخود پیدا ہو جاتے ہیں حضرت آدم بھی بغیر ماں باپ کے پیدا ہوئے تو پھر حضرت عیسیٰ کی اس پیدائش سے کوئی بزرگی ان کی ثابت نہیں ہوتی رسی مرزا غلام از کمپیرنگ دا ورجن برتا عیسیٰ علیہ السلام ود ہو ود مینی انسیکٹس وچ ہی سیز دیٹ تھاؤزینڈس آف انسیکٹس دے آر کمنگ فرام دا ارتھ فار نو ریزن خود بخود اینڈ دین ہی سیز ہی لک ایٹ دس ون بیسیکلی آئی وانٹ ٹو شو دس بغیر باپ کے پیدا ہونا بعض کوا کے محروم ہونے پہ دلالت کرتا ہے دیٹ بیکاز جیزز از واز بورن ود آؤٹ فادر اٹ از اٹ سیز دیٹ اٹ امپلائیز دیٹ ہی واز لیکنگ سم آف دا آرگن اینڈ وچ آرگن وچ آرگن لک ایٹ دس ون اعتراض بہت بڑا ہے سوری یہ ٹائم از اپ Okay, no problem. I am done. So basically, Razi... Before his time... Just to surprise. Let's read your last reference you were going to say. That's a significant one. Okay. Then we'll carry on. He says that the Etraaz is very big that the Prophet Messiah is a great gift of the Prophet Messiah and the Prophet Messiah is a great gift of the Prophet Messiah and the Prophet Messiah is a great gift of the Prophet Messiah. Razi, let's look at the argument first. Mirza Ghulam said that Mirza, because Isa was born without father, it shows that he was lacking some of the organ. Okay. Now, which organ? No, no, be, be, organ? Hello, be blunt. Be specific, uh, please. Be, be specific, uh, Daz Bhai. What do you mean by that? Lacking the male organ. Of course, he was lacking. Yeah. And, and then I gave this reference to explain that what, which organ he was missing. The male okay. organ which can help him to get children. So okay, this is then no, Mirza Ghulam believes no, in the also virgin Islamic birth. So now please, please give me three minutes as well and be a fair moderator. Jazakallah. Okay, three minutes. Go ahead. Jazakallah. Answer to these points. Okay, so the first point is, unfortunately, there's another mistake that was just said. Brother Adnan or Imtia said, how could Hazrat Maryam a.s. be five months pregnant and not know? The book doesn't say that. It says... سے مریم مدت تک بے خبر رہی جب پانچواں مہینہ حمل پر گزرا تب یہ چرچا پھیلا it doesn't say for five months she was unaware it just says muddat tak so you need to take that back if you fear allah number one number two you said you quoted three references which i will now refute first you said that hazrat ahmed alaihissalam compared it to males giving milk and insects being born brother this is an analogy he didn't compare the virgin birth with these examples he's showing the hindus and christians that these extraordinary events happen sometimes and you have no right to reject the birth of <coughs> hazrat isa alaihissalam and if you read jashmai marfat and also also surma jashmai arya the same examples are given there and batalvi said said this is one of the greatest services to islam that book So you should take this back as well. It's showing that Kharike Adit events happen. He's not saying just like insects are born. This is exactly what happened with Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. He made it clear that Isa alayhi salam's birth was a sign and a miracle for the Yehud and for the uh, for those who believed in Isa alayhi salam. Then Imtiaz was unfortunately dishonest. He quoted Nurul Quran in the Hashi of Nurul Quran. Hazrat Ahmed alayhi salam explains that everything in this book is just to refute the Christians and their self-made Messiah. By the way, this example of male giving milk is in Sanaullah Amrit says Ahli Hadith Akhbar. 
And it's also mentioned, the goats that are mentioned are in Bidaya wa Nahaya, books of Imam Siyuti as well. It's to show out of the ordinary events happen. So how dare you people raise an allegation on Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam who had the miraculous birth of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. So this is the point. And you brothers were unfortunately unjust with the five month reference. So I'll have to repeat that. In that page, Hazrat Ahmed al-Assam says that Jisse Maryam muddat tak be khabar rahi jab panchwa mahina hamal per guzra tab ye charcha phail gaya ke Maryam ko hamal ho chuka hai. It doesn't mean she remained unaware for five months. Please be honest, okay? And Nurul Quran, Brother Imtiaz knows and Surma Chashma Arya Batalvi said wrote a review of that. You know you want to raise allegations on Hazrat Ahmed al but please... Do not raise allegations on those books that your, you know, scholars have praised and written reviews on that this was the greatest service to Islam. Male organs. So please, please be just with the sources. I need, I need to go and form it. So male, male, male organs, organs, male organs. And then we'll okay. end. Male, male male organs. Because just to save the time. Yes. So, Razi, first of all, you are saying again, Razi, please, we do not need any of these uh, tactics here. Please you start said that we need to. Please start yeah. Yeah. Just one second, actually, Imtiaz, before you start, um, Imtiaz, I have three minutes, just let him yeah. speak. One second, uh, Razi, calm down, just be relaxed, okay? You didn't answer the question about the male organs, please. If you could respond to that, and then, brother, okay, I'll uh, answer that now. Zakumla I'll give you a minute to do that specifically. Yeah. yeah? Zakumla for giving me another chance to answer, even though I have Nurul Quran. Have not, you, have, brother, let second. me answer. I'm, I'm you about to give you the answer. Let no, me. Uh, one second. You need to calm yourself down, Rezi, because you're becoming uh, a bit rude in your behavior. I don't think so. Okay. I believe we, you're rude. You're, you need to just calm uh, yourself down. We, we, look, try to brother, have Imran, conversation. brother Imran, you have to you have to understand why Rosie feels like that. There is I a understand. Reason why he's, he feels under yeah. attack. I understand. Yes. Yeah. Now, and plus, uh, plus, he's he's struggling to answer all these yes. questions. So. so that's why I'm giving you this no, one, opportunity to answer the question. I'm starting your time now. Okay. So, brother Adnan, no one's struggling. By Allah, I'm not struggling. This is nothing big. You know, this these are simple questions we've answered. Male organs, before. male organs, please. So the male yeah. organ question is from Nurul Quran. The Christians were saying Isa Lesam is a god because he has the power of Allah. And some Barelvis also recently said he's Ruhullah, so he cannot be touched. He's free the of anything. The Quran let me calls finish. Him let me finish. I agree he's Ruhullah. That doesn't mean he can't be persecuted. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the male greatest organs, please, Ruhullah. Please. He asked a question in between, you didn't stop him. See him, Mom, Logan, this is unjust. Nabi you haven't touched my Logan and you're already Ruhullah, into this. But he was persecuted at Uhud. It doesn't make Isa alayhi God. So as the Tehm explains that Isa alayhi salam, he was born without the agency of a father, but your God, oh you Christians, that makes him less of a human being. This is Ilzami Jabab, not his own view. So Adnan, read Nurul Quran, then raise allegations. You don't even understand what's being said. It's against the Christians. It's Ilzami Jabab. Razi, I really, I, wallahi, I, I, I feel so... I feel sorry for you, man. And I feel Ilzami, sorry Ilzami for you. Jawab, Ilzami Jawab. 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 Ilzami Philosophy teaching of Islam. I hope you fulfill that promise soon. Imtiaz, okay, let me, let me. But speak I will now. listen to your full answer on my phone. I just need to rush now. But I will. I promise you, I'm turning it on right now. The same channel, and I'm going to but listen. Razi, to you. But Razi, the point is this. The point is that after that, you are gonna. You, you will sit on your channel to say that I was misquoting. That what is the point? But that's my right. Just like you have your right to. Then you have. To, then, then does it? Then you stay here. Okay, Let's I'll, tell I'll sacrifice two extra minutes. But don't raise okay. anything new then. Because then I I'm have to stay in response. I then am I'll not get laid. I you am not a snowstorm. There's a snowstorm outside and it takes triple the time to get where you want to get. I hope you understand. I okay, stay first, of all, Razi, first of all, you are saying that you are saying to us, Muddat se be khabar rahi. it was not five months. You have to tell us that what was this Muddat? You have exactly. to give us the reference. If you give us the reference that this muddat was not five months, something else, inshallah, we'll take it back. Please give us reference. And then point number two is, you said that it was Ilza. Razi, please stop this game of Ilzami Jawab. I beg to you, look at this one. Masih ki paidaish or harke adat umur. Mirza Ghulam is explaining for the whole humanity that the virgin birth of Isa as a, as a miracle. Okay. 
खुदा की सुन्नत दो तरह पे है एक कसरती जैसे अमूमन औरत से दूध निकलता है लाइक नॉर्मली द वेमेन गिवस मिल्क ओके मगर बाज अवकात नर से भी निकलता है बट समाइम द मेल गिवस मिल्क एज वेल ऐसे वाक्य दुनिया में होते हैं एंड सच इवेंट हैपन इन दिस वर्ल्ड ये वकू वाकयात हार के आदत कहे जाते हैं दीज रेयरली अकरिंग इवेंट्स आर कॉल्ड द मिरेकल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस लास्ट स्टेटमेंट इज अ लाइ दीज आर नॉट कॉल्ड मिरेकल नंबर वन नंबर टू ही इज दिस दिस हेडिंग इज नॉट माइन दिस हेडिंग इज गिवन बाय योर ओन कंपाइलर्स दैट मिर्जा गुलाम इज एक्सप्लेनिंग द वर्जन बर्थ ऑफ ईसा अलैहि सलाम बाय गिविंग द एग्जांपल ऑफ अ मेल पर्सन गिविंग मिल्क एंड दिस इज exactly is doing that and then you are saying he was not comparing that how else he could compare does he tell us if he, if if mirza gulam really wanted to compare the virgin birth of isa alaihi salam with a male giving milk how would he compare if not this one okay and second point is when he said that the bin uh, baap ke paida hona baas kawa ke na hone pe dalalat karta hai he says that he was born without father and him being born without father is a dalil it implies that he was lacking some organ and then i gave the reference to explain to explain that which organ he meant he meant the male organ and you said that oh it was nurul quran the whole book is about the christian listen very carefully when i presented izala oham in which mirza gulab is responding to the muslim you said that in in you said in your video the in his book It's not that every book has to be about them, etc. And secondly, my brother Razi, do I get five that, minutes as well? Did I take five minutes? How much time have you t- taken? It's been at two <coughs> minutes. I thought, I thought you were leaving, Razi. So I didn't time. No, but there. I said if he mentions new points, I'm going to take so my. No, no, I did not point. mention new points. No, no, I did not point. mention new points, brother. Yes, you mentioned like six new things, brother. No, no, no new points were mentioned. Razi. They were mentioned. You're obviously going to say that. I want my full time okay. now. I think okay, Razi. Time is done. Razi. Let me answer now. Razi, if you want, Razi, if you look, want look at this one. Look at this one, Razi. Let's make it simple for the people. All I'm saying is. Please do not give this false impression that this was Ilzami Jawab. Mirza Ghulam is comparing, explaining the virgin birth of Isa Alayhi Salam by a male giving milk, and he is calling this event as Har Ke Adat, miraculous event. I don't want to go anywhere. I want you to explain this one. What he is saying here? What he is trying to say? Okay, can I take my five minutes now? Which fi- I did not take any five okay, minutes. So your your three minutes will start when you start. How much time questions? did you take, brother Imtiaz? How much time did you, you have? Take? I don't know. I okay, don't I'm know. going to check. Bro, let let me check. You have let two minutes to start. Time you, I'm going to start your time. No, no don't start it yet because I'm he gonna, took way more than two minutes. I'm going to start your time because it's your time to answer because you're not moderating. Don't worry, brother. Don't worry. I'm going to take my. And you remember the male organs that you keep forgetting about. Please answer those as well. This is the commentary you don't like. This is the exact commentary that you try to slide in. Which is this? I'm not sliding in. You're unjust. Uh, Who's Rezi, on sorry, one I have one second. I'm not sliding anything in. Brother, I'm being very direct, and I'm telling you very directly me. that you need to answer the question. So there's no sliding here. Direct answer. You need to answer the question about missing male organs attributed to Isa Islam by Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Very big, serious claim. <laughs> no slides. No sideways. Okay, so let me I'm answer very directly. <laughs> So please answer that question. Brother, I'll stop start the muting. Me. I'll start the time in a second. Okay. Stop muting me. Your time starts now. Give me three minutes. Then you gave him extra time. <coughs> Adnan, by this is unjust. Imran, by give him three minutes. Give him three Zaak minutes. Three, three, three minutes. Three minutes. Go ahead. Three minutes for you. Okay. Time starts now. Okay. Yeah. Jazakla. Firstly, yeah. brother Muhammad Imtiaz once again he was unjust, and this is why we keep calling him out. He said, "Give us the reference where it doesn't say five months, brother." The reference itself shows it wasn't five months. Al Hazrat Masim or the last one says, "Mudda tak be khabar rahi." Then he says that five months the Jews found out. So obviously she found out before the reference itself refutes you. But you saying he said she was unaware for five months is not right, brother Imtiaz. Be just. Allah will question me and you. You won't get a free pass. 
I won't get a free pass. So we have to be just. Then second, you said, stop saying ilzami jawab. I beg you. No, I will keep saying that because this is what it is. Unfortunately, if it bothers you, I'm not going to stop saying the haq, right? Just to please you, I can't say Isa Lassam is alive in the skies. I'll never do that. In the same way here, Nurul Quran, Hazrat Ahmed Lassam makes it clear that this whole book is Ilzami. The Christian said Isa Lassam is a, you know, is God because he was born without a father. Hazrat Ahmed Lassam says, what are you talking about? You're making him a God because he's born without a father. This proves he has deficiency. The Messiah of the Christians, not the one who is a Rasul and Ila Bani Israel, who Hazrat Ahmed Lassam said, I am in his likeness. And Brother Imtiaz, you can nod your head all you like. When you speak, I respectfully listen. I don't go like this. I don't go like this. Even though 99.9% of what you say, I believe it's against Quran, right? But I don't make these, you know, I don't do all of this. It's not needed. Anyhow, kharik adat means out of the ordinary, extraordinary. The Urdu word is mu'jaza for miracle or mu'jaza. So Hazrat Ahmed al-Assam here is showing the people that you know, many people like the natures, they were saying Isa Lassam can't be born without a father. Hazrat Ahmed Lassam says anyone who says this is outside the fold of Islam. He was born without a father. And why are you people shocked? We see out of the extraordinary events all the time. One example he gives are the, uh, the bugs coming. He also gives the example of male giving milk, which is in the Ahli Hadith newspaper. This same example is there too that this happens. So it's to show the people that out of ordinary events happen. It doesn't mean that that is what happened with Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam or that he is comparing these miracles. Brother, it doesn't work like that. You need to understand analogies. Like Allah says his nur is Male like organ. Male organ. Does it mean his nur is actually like the mishkat literally? Of course not. The male, male organ is for the Christians that look you people are making him God he's not even according to your understanding that he's God he's not even proven to be the Messiah of the Bible can't even be proven to be male like others the Messiah of the Bible not the Quran so with that Imtiaz Bay, I end I hope you don't take another turn on these points because that's unfair one, and what does it does one last question when is your milk coming the goat milk, the bakra? No, your milk. Ask Sanaw, like it's in his newspaper. You have to ask him when the milk is coming. Razi, no, no, Razi no. can I request you? Razi, look, brother, I beg you, just give me two minutes. Brother, Allow you me, want to, me to get late. You want me to get late? I give Razi, you I beg you. I need to Razi, go. Brother. I beg you, give me just two minutes. I want to speak in your presence. I will not say anything to you. I promise. Then I'm going to take two more minutes and we'll be here the whole night. Okay, you can take. No problem. Okay, you can go, take. No go. problem. You can take. But promise me last turn needs. <laughs> no, no. You can't stop me from speaking. I'm saying from this discussion. For this discussion. Back and forth. Okay, then stay. Let's have back and forth. Last one, right? But if you say something which I have to... Uh, I'm compelled Please, to respond. Okay, never no problem. End then. Okay, no problem. This is my last turn. And, and then, then I will give last. you last turn. Does it? No problem. Perfect. I Just want you to stay here. Okay? Okay. okay. Okay, Razi, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. First of all, Razi, I don't know that how to make it any more clearer for any of the viewers. When Mirza Ghulam is explaining the version birth of Isa Alayhi Salam and giving the example of a male giving milk, and this is how and this is the reason I always say that I wish Mirza Ghulam had not defended Islam. We don't want this kind of defense, number one. Point <laughs> yes. number two is and then and sorry, then sorry. and then and then point number two is I beg you, Razi, please, there's no Christian Bible which says that Isa Islam was lacking a male organ. This was the accusation Mirza Ghulam made on him. So you cannot call it Ilzami Jawab. Ilzami Jawab means that something is, is found in the Bible, he's quoting that. No. He was attacking Isa, and this exactly I always say, Mirza Ghulam was attacking Isa alayhi salam. And that point number three, you, you keep saying Ali this. In your turn, I, I challenge you, show me that the Ali this uh, says that the virgin birth of Isa alayhi salam is like the goat giving milk, a male goat giving milk. Because our, our, our problem is not that Bakra giving milk. No, our problem is to compare a goat giving milk and Isa, 
Adnan, may you make me laugh, please. So our problem is when Mirda Gulam compares the goat give the male goat giving milk and Isa Salam's virgin. That's when the problem starts. And last point is Razi. All I want to say is this. Razi, please tell us in which Bible ever any Christian has written that Isa Salam was lacking a male organ. So you are calling it Ilzami Jawab. Okay, was that two minutes? Less than two minutes. Less okay, than two minutes. It, okay, so I'll start now. One second. I'm just opening one reference. Okay, so firstly, the first point is every kharake adat is not a miracle, but every miracle is kharake adat. So you didn't address that point. Like I said, Hazrat Ahmed is showing analogy that you people are uh, accusing this grand miracle that Hazrat Isa was born without a father. When you see these events happen all the time, I mentioned the Ahle Hadith Akbar to tell you that it mentions males giving milk because Adnan requested that like he requested the Bakra. I never said that they're speaking of the virgin birth there ever number one number two the lacking male organ ilzami jawab is giving a response to someone that silences them it can be through many angles and i explained this to you i showed you the definition of ilzami jawab from reikhta as well how this is used so hazrat ahmed al-islam used common sense and common logic that you know you people are saying isa al-islam is a god because he had no father but we prove that Books prove that from the male you get some qualities as well. And this is proven, okay? And Hazrat Ahmed refuted the Christians that you make Isa a God. Your God was not even as manly as other men. This is not the Islamic view. We believe it was a miracle and he was the greatest of men. He was Minan, one of the greatest messengers, right? Rasul and Ila Bani said he has died, but he was still one of the greatest messengers. Then... The last point I want to mention is you said we didn't need his defense of Islam. Brother, now you're saying that. If he didn't step up for the defense of Islam, who knows what would have happened? The ulama couldn't answer anything. It was him who defended Islam greater than anyone else, which is why Batalvi Seb said, greatest book of Islamic history, Adnan Rashid testimony, till Qiyama that testimony of Adnan Rashid will be a proof for the truthfulness of Hazrat Ahmed Islam, Jazakum Allah brothers for your time. May Allah guide you all to the true Islam. Islam. I need one Islam. more chance. Both of us. Both of us. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's, 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 These are not akhlaq. I'm giving you so much time and you keep saying stay longer, brother. You said, does he, you said to me that I have not. He said, Rezi mentioned snow outside. Rezi mentioned, sorry, just one second. Rezi mentioned snow outside. Rezi said that I have not addressed such and such point. Because you said, Rezi, that I have not addressed such and such point. Brother, I'm going to say that every turn, but what does Imran want to say about the snow? I know you guys don't have the snow in the UK. Sorry, Rezi was saying that outside there's snow. He's got far to travel. We wish him safe journey. Uh, if, if he's not able to stay here for the uh, the rest of your response, please I'm respond. Sure, I'm sure. And I'm, I'm sure he I'm won't sure. put you on Twitter. Razi, Razi yeah, yeah. Razi will be looking for a male organ and some male milk on his journeys. And I might <laughs> good, find you a good good here or the she camel. <laughs> Okay, Razi. I'm just trying. Razi, on the light you go, on the I want to thank you. Aradi, before exactly. you go, I want to thank you. Regardless, I would disagree with Absolutely. you. But Indeed. I always, uh, but I always admire one thing that when uh, when Adnan Bai came to uh, uh, to Canada, you came to face him. This shows Absolutely. that you are very passionate about your religion, and we admire that. And Jazak, Absolutely. And the last Absolutely. point I want to request from my end, it's a new start. You know, today was really respectful. My thoughts changed on Imran Bay as well. He was, I agree, he was today was much more, you know, uh, he didn't cut me off as much. So I hope we can continue. But Brother Imtiaz, just a request. If you can announce it earlier, let me explain why quickly. Because once you said on your stream that you have family, so you cannot come to our streams, you have to give us the benefit of doubt as well. That sometimes if we don't come, just saying God, the is there, they've been banned. Wallahi, no one's banned. We're here every time, brother. You know, like our rate here, we literally come every time. Just we missed one or two streams and there were reasons for that. But... We have events too. You know we're a busy Jamaat. We have events all the time. You know, 
tomorrow in the morning we have an event for a dawa as well i haven't prepared for that yeah i have to go work on that as well so my point is that give us a week's head notice number one give us the topic a week ahead because obviously we need time as well you research we research as well we're not hufaz of the books of hazrat ahmed alasam you know how much he has written you know and sometimes you need all the references in front of you to understand just like some ayat of the quran you need to look at you first rubadu bad so two requests announce week earlier with the topic and fair moderation because we want this to continue till qiyama i love this you know that's why i go to visit adnan bhai saraji like uh, saraji i promise you saraji i promise you that we will definitely but just uh, just give me one just give me one a uh, favor obviously yeah. week before there will be a big because we need to see the which topic should we should choose okay so let's make it four days i will give you and every ahmadi a four days notice that this will be the topic is it fair and what will you do and from now on like you agreed on twitter we will have two moderators one sunni moderator and one ahmadi we need this razi razi that yeah. was razi look that was about if if we have a formal debate if, even if you want to debate me formally on the topic of miracles i am already inshallah prepared you want to debate me on that topic yes but let me finish first one important thing we also want well i want this is an official i'm not official representative okay all my social media work is unofficial earlier someone was saying i get paid for that i don't get paid for that let me make that clear when i come to visit adnan bhai that's my personal time that i do this work okay number 1 number 2 brother imtia we need i want two requests from you number 1 this should be equal moderating okay we should have our moderator and no, that, that's, even, let me that's, just finish two points at number quickly yeah. even if i come here and i start reciting the quran let me say my points refute them simple we don't and we've been more. doing that okay, today we that, did that. that yeah and i believe we did that to you guys and second point but then please give us permission allow us to use the footage why is there copyright threat we should be allowed adnan bhai tweeted at me no you cannot absolutely, use their footage absolutely not right. because Razi, because after Razi, Razi, after Razi, Razi, wait, wait, Razi, 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 i don't know if it's worth by one second it for it two by hours, one second. to be honest with you razi after what you did to my clip 14 minutes response you cut it down to 38 seconds because you lied against Make, no 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 no, no wait 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 we will never anything. we it's will never short. allow you razi razi we don't use your content we don't use your content you might have you ever seen us using your content we don't likewise we will never allow you to use our content because the way you twist things a 14 minute a 14 every reference a 14 minute response i posted it on twitter i posted it on twitter a 14 minutes response you cut it down to 38 seconds insinuating that i didn't have an answer what no, no. let people see so let people see hold let the whole thing you won't let us use the content right you, you won't let wait, us wait. use the footage you, you cut out a, you cut out a question and an answer no, what if you i don't cut, cut out i just put what? the full the bay we don't allow you because we don't this trust you this is really this is all me let me last thing let me last thing before you go let me last thing look you said that and there's nothing wrong with that razi there's nothing yeah, wrong yeah, with razi, that. Why is that razi, wrong? it's your channel razi look like like look razi with regard to giving you the permission about the content inshallah yourself adnan bhai myself inshallah we can discuss it offline inshallah we may think of a fair way let's leave it offline discussion but with regard to your first point you want to let us he's clear on this allow me to finish razi okay that's fine with regard yeah, to your I'm first clear, point razi. So, Razi, with regard to your first point, you said that you the you said that the style of moderation you want that when you are speaking, nobody should be cutting you off. I promise you, as we did today as well, nobody will cut you off. No, he did okay? cut me off. Imran did cut me off a few times today. Yeah, okay, think, will you apologize? I'm, I, 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 I'm, okay, so you, you can promise discuss me I'll never be cut off again. Can, uh, guys, second, guys, we're going on. Rosie, I yeah. think Rosie had to think, leave, uh, and we're going on. Okay, Rosie, so, right? nobody will cut you off. I need to get for a shah, brothers. It's there's a snowstorm. I have another task before a shah sala. Pray for me that Allah guides me, and pray that Allah unites us upon the hawk. of the quran I mean, the ahadith the sahaba and if hazrat ahmed alaihissalam is true then may allah guide you and if he is not true then may allah guide ahmedis but you brothers should also pray to allah 
that O oh, Allah, if what they're telling us is right, and Isa Lassam is dead, and Hazrat Ahmed Lassam is your Messiah, then guide us and may Allah unite us upon the true Jamaah. Jazakallah brother, brother, for your time. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you very much, Razi. Uh, Razi had to go. And on that note, uh, you know, I wanted to respond to Razi that we cannot pray like, if the Quran is true, oh Allah, guide us. We don't pray like that. That's kufr. Uh, guys, you've put me out. Hello. No, no, you are you on a screen now. Okay, can you can you hear me? Okay, sorry, what happened to the screen? It's gone small for some reason. Okay. So yeah, okay. So I'm saying I'm saying that if um if we cannot pray like that, oh Allah, if the Quran is right, guide us to Islam. We can't this is kufr. Okay, just like that. We can't say, Oh Allah, if Mirza is true, guide us. We know Mirza is not true because of the Quran. We know Quran is true. And we know Quran has told us that there is no prophet after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we can't pray, oh Allah, if Mirza is true, guide us. Because we know Mirza is a liar. It's like uh, Allah has revealed in the Quran, Abu Lahab is in Jahannam. And we're praying, oh Allah, please put him in Jannah. That prayer would be in itself, it's, it's kufr. You're going against the Quran. You're contradicting the Quran, even in your salah and your beliefs. The fact that you have the belief that Abu Lahab may be forgiven is against the Quran. It's against the Quran, right? Okay, so there are things, again, I would like to th thank from the depth of my heart, Tahir, Tahir Sahib, Razi Sahib, for coming and joining us for these streams as problematic sometimes as these streams can be, but no problem. We have patience, you have patience. And as they said, it's a, it's a fresh start. We will continue in this spirit. And let's make these conversations light, light hearted. You know, uh, these, these are very serious conversations. Of course, we believe that we don't agree with each other. We don't believe in the same thing as each other. Uh, uh, Kadianis are disbelievers to us and we are disbelievers to Kadianis. We both understand that. And this shows our human side that we can still talk and disagree and let people decide. Let people decide. This, this stream is for the people. It's not for our entertainment or for us to gain knowledge from each other, which we do eventually, of course. But at the same time, this is for the larger audience out there. So, halas, this was a very good discussion and we should continue like this, inshallah. Okay, we have uh, a, a couple of Ahmadis in the back. Um, there's only one that I can see the camera on for, and I'll bring that gentleman on now. Um, okay. <coughs> I think his uh, camera got stuck or something. Or... Can you can you see? Him? You, are muted. you are muted. Okay, uh, Muslim preacher, if you could kindly reset your um, your devices because your screen has gone uh, it's frozen. I think so. When it's coming up, it's blank. Um, Saeed, are you there? Are you by your PC? Saeed. Can you just turn your camera on for a second so I can just you can just wave at me? You're in the back chat. I won't bring you on with your camera on, don't worry. Just turn your camera on for a second. Your camera is gone also. Uh, we've had a breakdown of the cameras for the Ahmadis in the back chat. Uh, Brother Effen, did you do you saw the camera earlier on? I okay. think uh, I'll, I'll bring you on, Say. I'll bring you on now. Okay, uh, brothers, I will uh, request your uh, permission. Uh, wa alaikum salam. Um, brothers, I will request your presence. It's 5 a.m. where I am right now. And I'm going to go and pray Fajr and sleep. If that's okay. You carry on, inshallah. Okay. Jazakallah khair, non bhai. May Allah reward you or bless you. And we Thank know you. that you have been traveling, but still joining. May Allah reward yeah. you greatly, brother. I mean, Jazakallah khair, Nimtaz bhai. Thank you so much. Allah bless you. Thank you, everyone who's been watching and participating. Please keep us in du'as. Please uh, subscribe to Imtiaz Bhai's channel. It is called uh, Dialogue with Imtiaz. There's a lot more content coming on that channel. Uh, we will start something in Urdu as well very, very soon so that Urdu-speaking audience can also benefit from our work because there's a huge uh, Ahmadi community that speaks Urdu. So we want to reach out to them as well in Urdu. So please do subscribe. 
And thank you, Imran Bhai. Thank you very much for your patience and your perseverance and your thank grace. You. Uh, I would like to thank Rosie and Tahir Saab again for uh, coming and participating. And Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank I'll you. join the next stream, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Uh, Said, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can I speak? Uh, yeah. So let brother, I'll bet brother into yours. But if you, because you were in the background for a while, uh, put some specific questions to you, and then you can start. So, <clears throat> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, first of all, uh, Said, uh, welcome to the stream, and inshallah, we hope and we pray that it will be a fruitful discussion. So uh, instead of uh, me saying something, obviously I am uh, I'm assuming say that you have watched uh, all the discussion so far. So uh, Imran Bhai, I will give Saeed uh, to choose from our discussion that which topic he want to discuss, inshallah. And you can start his time so we can make it like a fruitful discussion, inshallah. Saeed, whenever you're ready, please start. Topic. <laughs> I want to start like this, that uh, from him say, uh, just told us to follow Holy Prophet and Quran and Allah and obey both of them. And this way, person can get uh, some fruits from God. He can be Aulia Allah, he can be some Muslim person, he can be Shahid, he can be Sadiq, like Ibrahim, Abu Bakr. So he can be last part Nabi, like he, he was himself. But our son is Holy Prophet. We are like Ummat, and we we are getting everything from Holy Prophet. We are trying to follow him, his Sunnah, and try to reach some Jannah, of course. So, real message is like this his, there is no other message. And he came to remove Biddat from Muslims. And Hukma Adal means to remove some Biddat which Muslims cannot understand. So if somebody recognizes him as from Syria, he can stop those Biddat. If he don't recognize him, he can continue with his Biddat. But the real message to follow Holy Quran and Holy Prophet Sunnah to read to Jinnah or something like that. Okay, you can start this. So, so Nanbai, uh, sorry, Imran Bai, uh, I don't think that uh, Saeed has any question or he wants to have any discussion. So I just, inshallah, want to uh, make a comment uh, with regard to what he said that as Ahmadis, they are also commanded to follow Quran and Sunnah. So for example, Saeed, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, to be honest, I'm not arguing with you because you gave your point of view. I'm just giving my point of view. There's no argument between us. Look, for example, uh, Saeed, today, we were discussing that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this good news to Maryam alayhi salam that she, Allah has selected and chosen her over all the women of her time. In the Quran, there's a complete surah dedicated to her name in which Allah has explained many things about her and ab about Isa alayhi salam. And likewise, I said before in the hadith, there are great virtues mentioned about Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam. Now listen very carefully, Sayyid. If somebody would say that this Maryam alayhi salam, this blessed woman, she was moving around with a Yusuf, uh, with, with a person like, with, with the name of Yusuf without nikah, that is unacceptable for as Muslim because it's against the Quran because she was a purified woman. And secondly, for example, as we have presented, and there was a lot of back and forth between us and Razi and, uh, and Tahir Sahib. When Mirza Ghulam is saying that if she was accused of adultery by the Jews, she bears the blame as well because she has hidden the whole dream and the pregnancy and the whole issue. And then he says that when she started to narrate all of that, this was too late. It was useless. So, Sayyid, in the Quran, none of this is mentioned. In the Ahadith, none of this is mentioned. Now, you said that you want to follow Quran and Sunnah. My brother, all I invite you, when you go home, ask your scholars that all of these things show you from the Quran, from the Sunnah. They already accepted. It is not even in the Bible. It is not even in the Bible. Mirza Ghulam is saying that he has found a book from a Jewish scholar from which he got all of these details. 
is the book written by an anonymous Jewish scholar, which Mirza did not even give us the name of. Why that book should be authority for us? Why should we be care anything about that book? So, Sayyid, this is all we want to say, and thank you very much for joining. Can I can I speak a little bit? Yeah, yeah you can. Speak we know that Hazrat Maria was married with Yusuf, a man at that time, and we know he was a kind of father for Isa, Jesus now, and we know that Jesus was working with him. So, as as much how it married happened is, of course, we we had, we, we were not there. And history book is used to explain that. But we know Mani was married to Joseph Lansa. He was his husband. She has more children. Uh, Said, 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 just to make it more fruitful, Said, do you agree that if when when the Jews, when they accused Maryam salam, of adultery, do you agree with what Mirza said that she bears the blame as well? Do you agree with that? Uh, We are humans. We are weak people. Uh, no, no, no. Say it. Look, say it. Look. My question is: Do you agree? I'm talking about money. Money was a human also, but what I think that this is a little sensitive topic. She was the best woman ever in this world, and uh, this is sensitive topic and. You would want to blame more than Maryam. Said, Jews, Jews who want to blame more than Maryam, I say. Like Said, I am not arguing with you, Said. Look, I'm asking a simple question. Do you also believe that when Maryam salam, was accused of adultery, she has the blame on her as well? Do you agree with that or not? Simple question. Yeah, we are humans. Like Jews are humans also. So things happen. No, no, you agree or disagree, Said, please. When you agree or disagree. Someone can blame God also. So we are no, no, Said, we can do I, Said, Said, please, Said. My question is: do you agree or disagree? After that, you can explain, no problem. But first tell us: do you agree with this blame or you disagree? That Maryam was five months pregnant and she did not. No, 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 no. That Maryam, that that Maryam has to be blamed as well because she 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 kept the dream hidden, which give which gave Jews opportunity to accuse her of zina or fornication. So as a result of all of that, there is a blame on Maryam as well. Do you agree that there is a blame on Maryam as well? It's a kind of faith matter because Jews has faith on God also. No, no, and Sayyid, I'm asking you as a Muslim, do you believe that Maryam has a share of blame in this one? Our heart are weak. A Jews heart can be weak. It's a it's blame Sayyid, the kind of faith matter. If you understand, Sayyid. Jews, we are blaming 100% Jews. Maybe they, we are giving... No, 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 Sayyid, look, Sayyid, Sayyid, Sorry, Sayyid, 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 please, Brother Mishas. Um, brother Sayyid, what's, what Mishas is asking you is that... The, would it be reasonable? Do you agree with the idea that Maryam alayhi salam? So now we're not asking about other people's views or their opinions or whether people are human or not human. We're asking you, would you agree with the statement that Maryam alayhi salam? So you personally, you know, Brother Said is on who's on the channel now. Do you agree that Maryam alayhi salam is to blame in any way, partly, equally, portionally? For the accusations made against her chastity, do you do you agree with that statement, or you disagree with it? So ask me this question. I say no. I disagree with this statement. Very clear. There's no. I, I will not say anything else. So I'm asking, and it's just as I can say that, uh, brother Imtiaz, do you agree or disagree with this statement? I absolutely disagree because it is against the Quran. Okay. So now, brother Said, we're asking you the same question. Because you started off saying that we come from the same, uh, we accept the Quran, we accept the Quran, the Prophet, and we believe in Allah. So now we're asking the same question: Do you agree with the statement or disagree with the statement that Maryam alayhi salam was to blame in any way for the accusation made against her? She was pregnant. This is a reality, and yeah. So we're not talking about brother. You see, say you see, when we have conversations. Uh, 
it's important that we hear each other's words and it's important because if you're trying to help it'd be nice if you to help help for us to help to you help us to understand yeah. you even she tell about so, her when dream when i'm telling you i'm telling so, even she tell about her dream on time i i believe that some people will not believe her they will so that's, that's not the that. question brother say we're asking you because you understand how we're you're asking a, you're answering a question that we not asked you the first so we have to have the first step the first step is if someone if anyone made the statement that maryam alayhi salam was um uh, sharing in blame for the accusations against her chastity would you agree with this statement whoever this person was would you agree with this statement would you said would you agree with it somehow i agree yes that's okay, the, that's the right. answer that's the answer that we were want because it's important to take the step so you agree that maryam al islam was in some way to blame for the accusation against her who who did accusation jews no no um, yeah. that's not the, that's the second question so the first question is do you do, do you actually agree with it and you said you agree that she is some she is to be she is blamed worthy in some way Now, brother imshas please uh, please continue yeah, india god now, is blamed <laughs> india no, god no, is say, blamed let's say let's continue look say look we are not trying to trick you in any way shape or form i swear by allah we are genuinely having a conversation so say so far you said that you agree that when jews blame sayyida maryam alay salam of zina or fornication there is some fault on maryam alay salam as well now said because you said in the beginning that you believe yeah. in the quran and hadith said can you tell me anything from the quran or from the authentic hadith which can is which can agree as what you have said already that you believe that there is some blame on maryam as well which ayah of the quran or which hadith is telling you this i will say when god so dream to maryam give ilham to maryam only maryam knows that other jews who don't have connection with god they don't know what happened and they have to believe maryam if they want to believe so maryam have connection with god they don't have connection Sayed, with that they have Sayed, a doubt Sayed. my brother said my question is can you please tell us the ayah of the quran or any hadith or for example if you don't know just simply say i don't know because we are interested because you said you believe in quran and hadith so we are interested to discuss with you quran and hadith i can i respect your opinions but that's not our topic our topic is because your principles are quran and hadith so you said that you believe and you agree that there is some blame on maryam as well when she was being accused of fornication by the jews we asking you that which ayah okay because hadith is a big literature leave them on the side which ayah of the quran tells you this i am saying quran tells maryam is the best woman so we don't want to blame like that but jews are not the best persons there and god has connection with maryam not with all jews and we are humans we we have minds who think when things happened and who can see that things has happened she was pregnant and you have to blame god in the end because god did the this and we are human we don't have connection with god god is not loving oh, every person sorry brother said so, so there's a there's a there's a you will blame in the end to god no no, well, no we're not blaming imran by imran by imran by i think that uh, i don't think that said uh, has basically any you know response i would say that if you want to conclude inshallah because there are few other people in the back chat and okay. they really want to come and interact okay no problem so brother said that i appreciate your answer uh, but uh, the because what the question really was do you agree with this claim and you said you agreed and i think that's a problem uh, and i think this is and i think that the reason you're saying this is because brother imtiaz has already presented the evidence that mirza ghulam ahmed made this claim and so you're in a bit of a tight spot that you have to agree with this idea that maryam al-islam was blamed uh, in some way for the accusations made against her and and i think that your the the response you're giving that you know in the end you, everyone has to blame god i think this is 
you know, the blood. This is not how we would uh, conduct ourselves. But, but we appreciate your time. You know, um, keep listening, keep hearing the discussions, open your heart because the truth is clear. You said that you believe in Allah and that you believe in the Quran and you follow the Prophet Muhammad and you say that this is all that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed came to do. If that was the case, then the religion already is completed and no one else is needed to come and you can't complete additionally complete anything that's already completed. The only bit that is there still, he was there to, to sure. remove that. I, I appreciate that. We wish you all the best, uh, Brother Sayyid. Okay. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Sayyid. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's see who else is in the back chat. We had... I think Muslim preacher was waiting yeah, for a long Muslim time. Muslim preacher. So we're going to bring you back on again, uh, Muslim preachers one, and let's let's see what uh, uh, if your if your camera is working now. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, I think to today's stream, yeah, today's stream has been has been a very good one, and I will entreat all of you to to treat each other in the way that you did, even though they were. You know some some hiccups little here and there but i think it has been very good and i'm very grateful to the ahmadi muslims who can understand urdu who came on to to respond to this uh, pro, uh program but one thing that i that actually made me want to come on the stream was that there was one who claimed to have come from africa and he's saying that Ahmadiyat doesn't have any number in Africa. And I really wanted to have him on and and have uh, a discussion with, you know, with him uh, and expo expose him. Sure, brother, brother preachers, that's not what he said. So he was talking about his, which, which area of Africa are you from? Which country? He was talking about, first he mentioned Africa yeah. and he, he later on brother came to Nigeria. But from? I am from I. Yeah, I am from Ghana. Okay, so what the brother was talking about was his specific area in Nigeria, and his specific area, and he mentioned the number of schools, etc. So I understand that you want to represent a different picture from your specific area, but you can't compare two different countries and say he's misrepresenting Africa because no, I'm going to, I'm going to speak about I'm going to I'm going to speak about Ahmadiyat in Nigeria. In fact, I was going to speak about both countries, Nigeria and Ghana. But if you want to restrict me to Nigeria, no, I, I don't want to restrict to you to Nigeria. But what he what said like, about what Nigeria, I, because what I would like when you go to Nigeria now, preachers, one second, brother, preachers, look, I don't want to. We don't, uh, to be honest with you, I don't want to talk about Africa or Nigeria or anything else. We've had a stream. We've raised some really specific points that we'd like to discuss. And that's really what we're interested in discussing, because there's no way for but me. But you allow you, you, you are, uh, Imran. You allow the brother to come on, and all the things he was saying were lies. About so, no, he was are you about interested? Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Are you interested in allowing people to come and lie to your audience, but you are not interested to allow others to respond to them? No, Imran, can I yeah, respond to him? So, uh, okay, uh, brother. If you think that uh, the, the the side of the story he mentioned about his area of Nigeria, if you believe that that was wrong uh, story and uh, you want people to clarify, Imran, by give him two minutes and so he can inshallah tell the people right story and no problem. Okay, no problem. Tell us all about. Yes, Imam, Africa. please, uh, please, Imam, tell people your side so of. So we the give story. you two minutes to talk about Ghana, please. Your time starts. Okay, so first of all, f first of all in nigeria even even if you don't do any search at all you just google you you get to know that ahmadiyat in nigeria are about 2.8 million people in nigeria alone when you come to ghana the ahmadi muslim sect is the second largest sect in islam in ghana and according to a census that we dispute, they are giving us about 16% of the Muslim population. So for someone to come and say that I went to their mosque and they were just about 10 people. And the second thing, so that was a complete lie. He did not know what he was talking about. That is why 
I really wanted him to be on so that I ask him certain questions. The second point that he mentioned, which was a big lie, and I was shocked that a Muslim would lie like that, is that Ahmadi Muslims do not preach our belief in public. I am Ahmadi Muslim. I stand in public and preach to the people. And I mention our belief that Mirza Gulam Ahmed alayhi salam is a prophet. So I would be shocked that someone will come and say that I have a friend who, who told me this, that all what he said were complete lies. And I was shocked that you allowed someone like that to come and lie to your audience. And my question is, my question to, you, to both of you is, did you really believe in what he was saying? Okay, have you uh, finished your your your? Yeah, your we will respond really after you complete your complete. Have you, have you finished your clarification of the figures? You're happy now that we've allowed you to speak about your experience in Africa. No, no, I just wanted you to answer the question, so no, I go no, on. No, but well, um, preachers, this is very clear. I said to you that we weren't interested in this discussion because it's off topic. You you had a problem with an African coming on and saying something about Africa that you disagreed with. Brother Imtiaz kindly gave you time to say what you needed to say. Now you have clarified for the people of the world that uh, Ahmadiyya is a great force in Africa. Thank you very much. Um, there's two options now. We can bring somebody else on to have a discussion with us, or you can discuss the points specifically raised within the within the tough stream. What would you like to do? Uh, because I asked a question, I, I was thinking that because Mtiaz wanted to answer the question, so I thought you would allow him to answer the question because yeah, I really want... Just a, just a minute. I really want an answer to the question merely because as Muslims, we don't believe things just on the face value. Pre but preachers, we have allowed this brother to... Preachers, to one second. Brother preachers, you, you've made a claim about him and his perception of Africa. Okay, he And you're saying he made a claim of, uh, that was not correct about Africa. Uh, you've, you, you've now balanced, you've made the scale balance now, okay? People can go away and they can have a look and see, and that's no problem. You're in Ghana, he's in Nigeria. You can that's that's irrelevant to our topic that we're having today. Okay, you now that you've had the okay, chance. Okay, so let me let me now you, I, I, I wanted I wanted let me finish my sentence, please. So you have again, I'm gonna give okay. the two options for you. Either you can engage with the topic that we have for today, which we'd appreciate, or we can make you can make way for the other Ahmadis who may want to discuss with us in the back. Please let us know. What would you like to do? Um, so, yeah, Imran, first, I cannot read Urdu. Mm? So I, I really will not want to have this engagement. I'm sure no, our no friends who, just, just, just a second, I'm sure our friends who can read Urdu have done a very good job and I'm very happy with their responses that they have given. But okay. because MTR, because you did not allow MTRs to answer the question, if you get if you give me just two minutes to, to, to make a point on that, because it's very important. And that Which is question? that the question was, did you guys believe in the things that the African brother, I think his name was Redwan or something like that, that that African brother was saying? Did you believe in that? Um, should I believe what you're saying? I mean, this is really, I mean, this is just a game of he said, you no, said, I, she I, said. I'm, I, so, uh, well, let me just clarify. So I'm not, we are not interested. I'm going to, this is going to be the last opportunity for you, uh, preachers. We are not interested in your personal view of Ghana and then Africa and then the brother's response about Nigeria. It really is not to the point. If you want to, dis you've, you've, you were upset with what he said. We can see that. You wanted the opportunity to clarify and it was, it was graciously given to you. You've clarified now. Should I accept what you say? Should I accept what he says? I'm not interested in this particular irrelevant question to the topic. So either have okay, either have the okay, just have just, the just give me. You said that you, you you're not able to go forward with the discussion. So uh, let us bid you farewell, and then I wish you all the best. No, no, just 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 one just one just one minute, just one minute, and and I'll and I'll end my my this. Yeah, please take one minute. So take, take. I wanted him to answer the question. Then I will I will bring. Yeah, I wanted him to answer the question, then I will, I will add some other comment. And that is that 
many people are accepting Ahmadiyyat from my country and other parts of the world, not even based on what Ahmadis are telling them, but based on dreams. And Ghana okay, in I particular, like Ahmadiyyat, like just, just, I, oh, let me, let me, let, can I land? Can I, can I land? Can I land? Can I, can I land? Can I land? No, 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 no need to land. No need to land. Uh, Im Imran, you, you are not, you are not, you are not being fair to me. I, I just asked for one minute. There. Can I land? Because, no, one second, because this is the problem. So the, the point, the point, the point that I'm making is that Ahmadiyyat came to Ghana, not because someone came to Ghana to preach, to preach to them. Okay, brother preachers, one second. So when the, when the Christian comes to me and he says, I had a dream, that Jesus is God, when the when the Buddhist comes to me and he says I had a dream that Buddha is God, when the Hindu comes to me and he says I had a dream that Ganesh is God, when the atheist comes to me and say I had a dream that there is no God, this is not an evidence for anyone. And, I, and it's a shame that you're bringing this up. So I'm going to respectfully say now, thank you very much. We understand wow. that the people in Ghana are coming to Ahmadiyya because they're having dreams, but this doesn't help us in our evidence-based discussion. Imran, one comment no, but 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 Imran, 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 just a, just a minute, just a second, Im, Imran, what you have just done is not fair to me. At least you should have allowed me to land. Then you bring this comment. My point is that the Jamaat Ahmadiyyat came to Ghana not because someone came there first to preach to the people. No one had known about Ahmadiyya. They did not know about the name. They did not know about anything but someone having a dream and looking for that Jamaat to come and accept it. So when okay. you see that Ahmadiyya is growing in Ghana or other parts of Africa, it is not even because some Ahmadis went somewhere to preach to them for them to accept. That is why recently in Senegal, recently in Senegal, some Muslims, some Muslim terrorists went into Ahmadi Mosque to ask them to denounce Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Alehi, and they refused. Told them bluntly that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Alehi is a prophet, and they have accepted him, and they will never refuse to denounce him. I mean, they will, they will not, they will not denounce him. And for that reason, nine of Ahmadi Muslims were killed in their own mosque. Yeah, and that's terrible. So we wish you all this the best. This is how Mother strong preachers. Ahmadiyyat is, is, is in, in Africa. The preachers. And when the Christians met much, the disciples, they were persecuted and they were thrown to the lions and they did not give up the belief that Jesus is God, then this is really a sign of how strong. And this is not an argument, brother. Whatever happened in Senegal, this is not correct, but this, you're not helping giving me any evidence to believe in. Imran, can you quote, can you quote, because, can you quote anywhere? One, can, can you one, quote two, anywhere? I'm going to ask you to leave. No, the point because you are making is wrong. The, the point you have no, made... The, the, no, listen, it's a hist people, the Christians claim, just like you and Ahmadi is making the claim, that people died for their faith. And therefore the faith is true. This is not a, it's not consecrated. This is not true. This is illogical. Having a dream, wonderful. Have your dream. Personal experience, you cannot show me your dream. Uh, dying for you, something that you, you can be sincerely wrong. Dying for your faith doesn't make your faith true. This is illogical. These are emotional arguments. These are arguments that are not based upon the, the rationale. But uh, uh, preachers, I wish you all the best and uh, uh, you know, stay safe wherever you are. Uh, okay? One comment, Imam, before he leaves. Please. Is it okay? Okay, Imam. Uh, first of all, I thank you that you came and uh, because you said that Ridwan gave his point of view and you wanted to give your point of view even it was not the topic but just to be fair with you we gave you the opportunity to give your point of view now your question was that do we believe in Ridwan we have no interest what, what Ridwan said we have no interest what you said okay Ridwan gave his side of the story we gave you the opportunity to be fair with you to give your side of the story we have no interest in that thank you very much all right, Jazakumullah Khairan. But uh, Imran, just to uh, conclude on what you said, I agree that someone might have, you know, dreams about anything. But if you have a dream, seeing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who directs you to, to accept Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Alayhi Salam, I'm very sure that will not be a mere dream. So Jazakumullah Khairan if, if, for... If you, if you know what the Prophet Peace Wayne looks like, but... I wish you all the best, brother preacher. We'll take care. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you.
So we have uh, we have someone called Anonymous who's been verified, and then after that, I think there's uh, Brother Ahmed. I think Ahmed uh, Ahmed Saab is here. Let's take uh, Rahil Ahmed. The, the brother Ahmed, there was a brother anonymous who was before him who was already verified. Okay, so okay, 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 yeah. just, just give us a few seconds, brother Ahmed. We'll bring you on. Yeah. So, uh, anonymous, you're on the stream. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think I've listened to these streams on both your stream and UK Islam as an MD over the last six months and stuff like that. You know, and I you usually hear you guys talk about this is for the general MD and stuff. So, this is me coming on as a general MD. The top of the discussion today, that exact line, and I'm answering this as an MD, is categorically, Hazrat Maryam is not to blame if it's meant in a context that is negative. See, we want it out there. Like you said, everyone's born their faith, right? But if anybody comes in front of us, even as MDs, and disrespects, we are going to respond to that. That's just me. I live in whatever country I live in. That's why I want to get into these. These are sensitive topics. You presented Qabbas last week. Il Zami Javab was talking to Muslims. I understand. It's a totally different context. When I'm speaking about even the events that happen in Israel and Hamas today, when I'm speaking at home as compared to what I say at work, it's different. You're saying, is Mariam, as an MD, I'm saying myself, she is not to blame for anything because she's the pious of them. That's the MD view as a normal person. I'm not going against anything. If people who have much more knowledgeable, any of these comments that you say, to me, watching this, the first thing I thought of when you talked about private part, I thought inside my heart, forget it. Why is this discussion even coming up to one of our prophets to even be having this discussion? I don't know the context, but I'm saying if you're Muslim or not, whether or not who's Gafir, uh, in the Azbai, you said this is all done for that day when we stand before God. This is the only reason why someone does it. I feel like you're here. I feel like Razi Bai is there giving you his versions because they deep down himself believe this person to be a prophet as we do and you don't. So that's what we're going to have to answer in front of. You're right. If a prophet has books, his writings as compared to prophets before him, we don't have literature from new but if your question was related today and i only came on here in honestness because i think if i speak for many amdis if you're saying to us that we blame mariam we blame mariam for nothing but being our mother that we love her to the extents and our lives are for there that's all i want to get into i will study the sure. passages and just like last week uh uh Impiasa brought up from rohani khuzai where it was Zami javab that hazrat isa left this life in a bad state crying i went back and asked him and asked them exactly about this question because my heart didn't feel content with that and they answered but our you know you guys always come on and say our marabbi say this no our door is open we can go and ask them questions and no not all the maldives are bad i don't see anybody in that light i think that this has to be portrayed because if you leave this you leave it like Muslims or Amdis believe deep down in their heart. I mean, I'm bothered by hearing that. Now I have to study as my own person the context of what it is. If it's responding to someone, yeah. If it's not <clears throat> responding and you're just making your so, own. So, brother, uh, brother Anonymous, I, I just, uh, first of all, brother Anonymous, I want to really appreciate your honesty and it has to be appreciated and admired that despite the fact that the Ahmadi clerics, they were defending all of that, but as a common Ahmadi, you rejected all of that. For example, somebody discussing about the, the male organ and you know, and we agree with you, it is so disgusting that somebody would talk about this thing, about the prophet of God. And you know, uh, Anonymous, I just want to say one thing. First of all, if you find okay. these things disturbing, obviously you said that you do find these things disturbing and you cannot agree with these things. That is something you said now. After this, you are going to your Murabbis or your scholars and they are giving you the how they explain all of that. So I would say anonymous, is it not fair that you contact us as well, that how they have explained to you and then let us respond to that? Because, well, you know, anonymous, Abby, if I'm you say, you know, just one, thing, one, just one thing, just one, one last thing, one last thing, because if you say and if you believe that Maryam alayhi salam is free from any fault with regard to Jews accusing him of adultery. It is, it has implications. 
anonymous listener, it has implication. Implications are that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was lying. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, because that's the question I would ask is if why is it being said and stuff? That's okay. You can go back and ask. My thing is you presented your argument for what you said it is. You provided it from his books. I listened to that. I went back and referenced it. Now the discussion is between me and my Lord to go and him and such then ask him if I have questions. Now that's between me. On that day, I will be answerable. If they, I accepted a prophet of God who Allah didn't appoint. I understand where my path will be and I will be in Jahannam. And if you don't accept uh, a prophet that we who came from Allah and you cursed him, then there's no other way to put it. I work at a place and someone said, you're a really nice person, but if you don't accept Jesus as the son of God, you're going to burn in hell. I said, well, it's good that you're not deciding for me today. So that's what I'm saying. This is a discussion. You have known that in our, in our, Mirza Saab has said, we do jihad of the pen. You make an argument, we can respond to it. Then you have to go to your heart. I do ask questions. I understand it's not a sensitive, it's a very sensitive topic to bring up anywhere, but I'll speak to everybody and I'll feel comfortable speaking to that person and you I have no problem on that the reason I do it there is but but I just to me nationwide or worldwide people can curse and say whatever they want that's not the issue the point is you have to be able to when you hear something like this I'm not saying that if they they can explain better the context it was set in right now it's for me to research if i don't feel like it's set in the right context then that's up to me to study if i accept that it's said as ilzami javab or not that's for me to study and go for but i want to say but i don't want it to be left as that a general md feels like nauzubillah that a hazrat maryam is to blame we don't find faults in other prophets to say this person can make a mistake or this no they are beyond reproach they are perfect and stuff. If we have a difference on something, it's brother, brother it's anonymous, brother, brother anonymous. I once again, everything, pretty much everything we say, you said, we agree with that, and again, we appreciate that. Last thing, because obviously there's no uh, back and forth between us, because we are both on the same page. So one last thing, brother, and I want to. I want to make it clear. It's not about me being on a side and stuff. I'm in the search of just listening and respecting everyone's. But when you, I haven't. I've listened to all the streams, and they make the points on Fatma Nabuwa, the death of Jesus. Everyone studies their own way. I listened to you guys. I've listened to Ramdi Saab. I've listened to our thing. So that's the way you approach it. You can't just. Be that's fine. Minded. That's fine, brother, 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 anonymous. I am. I, I am. I am agreeing with you. Obviously, you are on the path of research. All I said is, if you come to a point of concluding your research, that's all I'm saying, brother. When you come to the point of conclusion, it is only fair, brother, that you listen to us as well. And we, as your brother in humanity, we are at your service. If you are a genuine, allow me finish. If you are a genuine seeker of the truth, obviously, after your sincere research, if you still want to conclude that Mirza Ghulam was our true prophet and he was the Isa ibn Maryam in his second coming, it's your choice. Nobody can force you. I totally agree with you. But all I'm trying to say again and again, yes, you are on the path of research. But when you, when you come to the point of conclusion, would it not be fair that you listen to our final point of view as well? That's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm here. It's seven hours long. I'm listening to it. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, you know, uh, brother, I really appreciate, it. and I, and I, you know, what I completely uh, understand your perspective, and I, and I'm glad you clarified this because we had the brother before, uh, before preacher who came on, and I was, I was quite saddened by that response, if I'm honest with you, but I understand that, you know, that yeah, this is not something that sits well in the heart, and you need to clarify that, and we appreciate that no one would regard Maryam al-Islam as being at fault for any accusation that's made against her. And I appreciate your response about checking the information. No one is here is saying take what we say verbatim. And what we're saying is that look at the sources of Brother MTR because he does reference and he gives the sources. You can go and uh, read for yourself or get you know get that information and clarify for yourself. Yeah, and, and it should be it should be a it's a two way thing. Uh, you know, Brother MTR does a lot of research when he comes in uh, before he uh, even brings points up. No, and I, I think respect, that that's a good approach. I respect that when he brings it, and I take those same resources and screenshot them and go back and ask the questions because yes, good. you you have to ask the questions because we've been clearly told, and and I and I I think it's wrong on your part to say our rugby's are forcing us. No, they answer to the best of their knowledge, and no, no, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I, what what I the only thing that I've ever said actually about the 
is that actually coming on the streams is something that we found in the past. Actually, it's better in the last few, actually. We've had more people yeah. um, from, that, from a more laid background. But it's been restricted to maybe two or three specific people that I'm come on. And that was the lay, I'm just speaking from a layman, MD, who's not in, in a scholar or knowledgeable in that level. But you do have the basic studies. You understand the fundamentals. Yeah, of course. No, I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. And God bless. No, no. We really appreciate you coming on. And I'm all the best. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so we've got Brother Ahmed in the background. I'll bring you, uh, bring you on, Brother Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How's everybody? Welcome to the stream. How are you? How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Uh, I didn't know the stream was happening. I've been away from social media for some time. Been busy with my own work. Um, but randomly, I came across it. So there's a few points that were being mentioned. Um, I thought I would come on and address one of them. I don't want to delve into every single one because... Um, I personally do my own research before coming, but there was specific reference, you, uh, Brother Imtiaz, you mentioned from Nurul Quran, um, uh, uh, number two, Rani Khazan, Jild 9, where you said the Promised Messiah wasalam, said that Hazrat Isa salam, did not have a male organ, and you were saying to Razi, he did not address it, he did not address it. Can you, uh, are you saying this was two things I want to ask you? Does the reference say he did not have a male organ? First question. The second question is, was this the belief of the promised Messiah والسلام, that he's mentioning there? So whatever three three lines, I don't know whether, not, not this one, the, I think the one above. So the, whatever three line reference that you presented, was is it is this the belief of the promised Messiah والسلام, or is this an Ilzami job as Razi was mentioning? Uh, so these are my two questions and after that I would like to uh, respond to you. Very can straightforward you please, questions. Uh, can you please repeat your question again, Ahmed? Okay. Two, your, my your two questions. Yes. My first, my first question with regards to Nurul Quran number two. You you brought up this reference. This, this is the time that when I joined the stream when I was I was coming back from football. So I saw that you were, you were having a discussion with Razi. So I saw this one thing that you mentioned as a, as a uh, and Adnan was very much laughing at this and he said and said that the promised Messiah has said that has Isa salam, did not have a male organ. Nauzubillah. Okay. That's that's that that that's what you said. So first of all, you need to you need to say uh, you need to show me where does he say he doesn't have a male organ? This is this is the specific word you have used, male organ. My mm -hmm. second point is my second question is is that in this reference of Nurul Quran that you've mentioned, whatever is being is being mentioned with regards to Isa wasalam, is this the view of the promised Messiah that he believes in that, or is this an Ilzami jawab? These are my two straightforward questions, and it should take 20, okay. 20 seconds to answer. <laughs> No, inshallah, I will explain no problem at all, Ahmed. So, uh, Imran, by let's inshallah start the timer for both of us. So, inshallah, we okay. can uh, be on the time. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so brother uh, Ahmed, uh, first of all, <coughs> I appreciate that you came and you engaged. So, Ahmed, your first question is that uh, where is the reference that Isa alayhi salam was missing the male organ, right, uh, Ahmed? Is it the question? That's, the, that's not what I said. I know where the reference is because you showed it. I'm saying, does the reference say specific words okay. that you used? male organ isa okay. salam did not have male organ first question the okay. second question is whether this was the belief of the promise of islam whatever that was being mentioned so i'm going to address okay. both of these things and that's the okay. only reference that i'm going to discuss we're not going to go no anywhere problem. else just this no specific problem. reference today no problem so uh, with regard to question number one so this uh, this reference i gave us it's uh, here you can read the context mirza yeah. ghulam is discussing the miraculous birth of jesus he says that بغیر باپ کے پیدا ہونا بعض قوار سے محروم ہونے پہ دلالت کرتا ہے. He says that being That's born without father. I'm sorry can to I interject. Complete... That's what no, the reference no, no. is. I'm can I complete the Quran. point? Nurul Quran is the reference I'm referring to that I want to engage with. And, and that's the reference you used and Adnan was laughing to suggest that the Prophet Messiah alayhi salatu was salam said that Isa alayhi salam does not have a male organ. And that this was this was a belief of the Prophet. Do me a favor. Let Please. him let him let him respond to your question, because I, I know. Can like, you restart my time? Because yeah, I want to. I want you to. What I like you to okay, do. Is let him respond yeah. to your question, and then if it's not the right reference, or you want him to, you want a restriction to a specific reference. Then he knows it. And mentioned after he presented that. the reference. But yes. Okay. Absolutely. So he's giving you okay, that I'll information listen. because you're asking about the male organ. He's going to go there now. Okay. Listen to him, please. Okay. Okay, so again, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So this reference is in which Mirza Ghulam is saying <coughs> that being born without father, it implies 
missing or not or being deprived mahroom being deprived of some organs baz kawa se mahroom hona so kawa mean organs you can check in your dictionary so anyhow so mirza gula Okay. Uh, can you please allow me to fit? Ahmed, you again interrupting me, Ahmed. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna mute you for a while, Ahmed. Yeah, while it's no worries, no worries. So basically, Mirza Gulam is telling us that to be born without father, it implies deprivation of some organs. Now, after that, because this is how the academic works. Now, there is one thing has been established that there is some organ which Mirza Gulam believes. that isa al islam was missing because he was born without father after that i did not include or that which organ this could be rather i started to research from the books of mirza gulam and and then i came across this one as explanation that which organ it could be etraz bahut bada hai ki hazrat e masih al islam mardana sifat ki ala tareen sifat se be naseeb e mahz hone ke bai se azwaj se sachi aur kamil husn e mashrat ka koi namuna na de sake he is saying that the big objection on isa alay salam is that because he was lacking mardana sifat the manly qualities the male qualities and ala tareen se from the manly qualities he was missing the top manly quality because he was deprived of that and this is the reason he could not give us A, a role model or example of living as well living with a family and giving us a role model that how to live with a family now i am more than happy to take this one back because one thing is established that isa alay salam according to mirza gulam was missing some organs i did my research and i concluded that this is what he meant if you mean there were some other organs please tell us So it's my turn now, yeah. Bismillah. Yes. Yeah. Bismillah, Rabbi Rahim. So I was specific, specifically talking about the. And you didn't answer the second question, brother. So uh, I'll, I'll give you. No, I can. Yeah, please. Me. So please take thirty seconds and answer whether it's a very simple question. This okay. reference of Nurul Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioning these three yeah. lines you presented. Yeah. Did yeah. whatever context you take from, whatever understanding you've given, did he believe yeah. in this, or was this an Islamic jawab? Okay, because in the Bible. There is no such thing which says that. Listen, Rahil, allow me to finish. Okay, in the second, Bible, just, one second, in, So what Brother Imtiaz is doing for you, he's yeah. he's defining <coughs> Ilzami Jawab. He's doing tafsir, right? Yeah, of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's, okay. he's no. defining no. Ilzami Jawab. That's yeah. not for, that's not specific to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. He's defining the so the definition is giving to you so you understand that why your yeah. claim cannot apply. This is what he's trying to do. So let him do that yeah. and you'll get on to the point. Okay. So yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So, so basically, <coughs> Ahmed, in Islami jawab to Christian will be if yeah. Mirza Ghulam is pointing something in the Bible in the form of raising an objection because Bible is a binding source for the Christian. So now this is not Islami jawab. Why? Because you have to show me in the Bible. where bible says that isa alaihi salam could not, because isa alaihi salam was not having the manly qualities and amongst them the top manly qualities that's why he could not give he could not give the role he, 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 he cannot be the role model for a family is waji zindagi for the family if you can provide this from the bible i will say oh it was ilzami jawab if you cannot provide from the bible that it will be considered as the attack of mirza gulam ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam from his own self the belief okay, of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah that was a simple yes. question is yes. the belief yes. yes you said yes, yes. yeah that's good it's yes. good that is being is yes. being recorded okay so can you can you start my 3 minutes please yeah yeah your 2 minutes is starting now one second one second can, can i pull up the reference quickly yeah so uh, so i want everybody so please start my time no problem bismillah ar rahman ar rahim So I want everybody to go back. This is Rohani Khazain, Volume Nine, and uh, Nurul Quran Number Two, Page Three Hundred and Seventy Six. All the Razi had already mentioned that this entire book, Nurul Quran, is replying to the Christian attack on the promise on the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I will take my first turn to read what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has written. So on page three seven, three seven six, he says, "Alhamdulillah, he was salamu ala ibadihi ladi stafa." Amma baad, vaze hoke, make it clear. چونکہ بیکاز پادری فتح مسیح متعین فتح گڑھ ضلع گرداس پور اس پر پادری فتح مسیح واز ا کرسچن ا مسلم ہو بیکیم ا کرسچن ہماری طرف ایک نہایت گندا خط بھیجا ہے ہی از ریٹن ا ویری ڈرٹی اینڈ فلتھی لیٹر ٹو اس 
اور اس میں ہمارے سید و مولا محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پر زنا کی تہمت لگائی ہے he has written a letter to us and in that he's done uh, a tohum you know an attack on the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of zina and, and, and the whole context is that he had numerous wives and on as aisha radiyallahu anha as well and siway iske aur bahut se alfaz ba tareek sab wo shatam istemal kiye hain and 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 away from that he has used many words of of harshness of of uh, of filthiness against the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam isliye karine maslahat maloom hua ke is khat ka jawab shaya kar diya jaye so that i should respond to this letter اور ان کے اور اس کے الفاظ سے رنجیدہ خاطر نہ ہو کیونکہ یہ تمام پیرایا میاں فتح مسیح کے سخت الفاظ اور نہایت ناپاک گالیوں کا نتیجہ ہے سو ایور ایم اباؤٹ ٹو رائٹ ڈونٹ بیکم اپسیٹ او کرسچنز بٹ دس از ان ریپلائی ٹو وہی از ریٹن اباؤٹ دا ہولی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نا وٹ ہی سیز نیکسٹ تاہم تاہم ہمیں حضرت مسیح علیہ السلام کی شان مقدس کا بہرحال لحاظ ہے دیٹ وی بلیو ان دی دی ان دی ان دی بلیسڈ کیریکٹر شان مقدس you know the great status of hazrat isa alaihi salatu wassalam aur sirf fateh masih ke sakht alfaz ke is evas and because of the language that fateh masih has used ek farzi masih ka bil muqabil zikr kiya gaya that this fictitious masih is being mentioned what i'm about to mention okay and then he says aur wo bhi sakht majburi se and it was not something out of his interest but sakht majburi se out of out immense necessity okay kyunki is nadan ne because this ignorant man both he shiddat se gaya but please give me some more time i would appreciate 30 more seconds just the quote and then we can aur aa hazrat sallallahu alaihi wasallam ko nikali hai is aa he swore the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then when you skip forward comes the three lines my brother in humanity let me uh, let's be very clear brother intiaz had mentioned which is in page 392 where he begins and says پھر آپ حضرت عائشہ صدیقہ کا نام لے کر اعتراض کرتے ہیں کہ جناب مقدس نبوی کا بدن سے بدن لگانا اور زبان چوسنا خلاف شرع ہے The promised Messiah at the beginning of this mentions and clarifies that this is not the Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam of the Quran, but a Farzi Messiah, those who know Urdu language would understand what a Farzi Messiah is. And then lastly, he ends this, and I wanna, I wanna go there quickly so that Brother Intiaz can respond. He's, he ends this letter, whatever response, and I like, oh ignorant one, Kya tu apne khat mein sarwar-e anbiya sallallahu alayhi wasallam ko zina ki tohmat lagata hai, that you accuse our uh, 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 Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam of zina, اور فاسق فاجر قرار دیتا ہے فاسق فاجر اور ہمارا دل دکھاتا ہے اینڈ یو ہرٹ اس ہم کسی عدالت کی طرف رجوع نہیں کرتے اور نہ کریں گے مگر آئندہ کے لیے سمجھاتے ہیں بی بی اوے ان فیوچر کہ ایسی ناپاک باتوں سے باز آ جاؤ دیٹ ڈونٹ ایور اٹر دیز فیوتی ورڈ اگینسٹ ابل پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نا ہی سیز اف ہی ڈزنٹ اور حضر مسیح کو بھی گالیاں مت دو اٹ از یو اسلام بائی ڈوئنگ دس وہی تمہارے فرضی مسیح کو کہا جائے گا اٹ از ایگزیکٹلی وڈ بی اسٹیٹڈ ٹو یور فکٹیشیس مسیح مگر ہم اس سچے مسیح کو مقدس دیٹ ٹرو مسایا وی کنسیڈر ٹو بی مقدس بزرگ اور پاک جانتے ہیں اور مانتے ہیں وی بلیو ہیم جس نے نہ خدائی کا دعویٰ کیا ہو نیور کلیم ٹو بی گاڈ نہ بیٹا ہونے کا ہو نیور کلیم ٹو بی اے سن اور جناب محمد مصطفیٰ احمد مشتبہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے آنے کی خبر دی He informed us of the coming of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Unpar Iman Laya. Okay. I rest my case. Okay, one second. Before you rest your case, let me just help you, yeah? So the, the, I don't need the help. First, yeah, I've, I've read it out, my brother. One second, I understand. Uh, just you don't need to help me. me. Uh, okay, I won't yeah. help you. I'll help the people who are listening, yeah? Please, yeah. So let, me, let me mute you for a second, yeah? Uh, oh, actually, I won't mute you, because I need you to understand. So the fictitious Messiah that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was responding to Yeah. about yes this was a yeah. this was a fictitious messiah where yeah. was the fiction coming from because an ilzami jawab that this is why brother mtrs in the beginning gave you the definition yeah an ilzami jawab is you take the claim made by the person you're giving the response to i.e the christian or the jew it's in their text this is the claim they are making and you respond to that this Not is necessarily this is the fictitious okay i want to understand this so this is the, this is the clarification it. yeah let me just finish yeah. because you said okay, you made your, your rest of your case yeah. so let please me finish, finish it. please please finish yeah. uh, before brother intiaz comes in because it's actually his time i gave you extra time to finish your quote no but then i, w- I would forget what you're mentioning yeah, no, so you won't i, I want to address your point you and then we'll go to brother forget. intiaz don't worry you won't forget i'll remind you if you forget okay so the first point is the definition that brother intiaz gave you 
now it's interesting to if you want to change the definition that's something you can do so the first thing is no i'm going to mention this, the definition this fictitious mercy that was being responded to where is this fiction from is it from the text of the Christians or the Jews that he's responding to? Did this father, who you said uh, was a Muslim that became a Christian, did he hold this belief? So that's something that you've got to... This is the thing that you've got to produce to make the claim that this is Ilzami Jawab. One second. I have can, I get, just, can I get 10 seconds? Brother, it's in Brother Imtiaz's point. I'm just, making, I'm just clarifying for you because he gave yeah, yeah. you... There was a reason he no gave problem. you the definition of Ilzami Jawab. Yep. The second point is you didn't respond to the, uh, you know, in the beginning, he, I know you're not, you're going to do that later, I'm sure. He gave you the yeah. references that talked about a, a lack of organ and then a lack of something about the manhood that prevented him from becoming a, fam a role model as a family man with a wife. Now, oh. now this is, a, this is, this is where the, the missing man organ comes from. This this clarification is very important because you because what you did was you asked for the specific term and brother MTRs very graciously said that the specific term is not there. But the way that the Mirza Ghulam Ahmed writes is very clear what he's talking about. <laughs> lack of organs, lack of organs. <coughs> and this lack was such that he was not able to be a role model as a father and as, as a as a as a family man and produce mm -hmm. a family uh, and be a role model with a wife. Now you can we can give an explanation of that because you haven't done that a bit later. But brother MTRs, I made those two points because I wanted to clarify that that this is uh, some of the things that stood out for me. So you you give a clarification, to brother Ahmed. Come back to you, brother Ahmed. I want to see you, inshallah, once we start my response because uh, it's more interactive for me. Are you there, Ahmed? Please, Bismillah, take it. So, Ahmed, uh, first of all. Uh, with regard to because your first question was that where it says that the male organ was missing please listen very carefully uh, some organs are missing because isa alayhi salam was born without father if you can help us that which organs were missing and we are misunderstanding there were some other organs were missing then i will take it back but first, first you need to establish or you should say that when mirza ghulam said the Isa salam, because he was born without father, some of his organs were missing. He did not mean this or he meant something else. Okay, you can explain to us. So without giving us explanation from your side, you cannot just be commanding me just to take it back. Point number two, is it the Ilzami Jawab or was it the attack of Mirza Ghulam? I gave you a simple invitation. If you can produce this from the Bible, we can consider that as Ilzami Jawab. But if you can't produce this from the Bible, the Isa alayhi salam was missing some organs. And because of not having some manly qualities, qualities of a man, he, he could not give us a role model for to be a family person. Okay, now you need to help us understand and the, and, and the viewers as well, which organs were missing. Help us understand. And secondly, please produce that from which sources. Mirza took this information. The Isa alayhi salam was missing some organs. If you can produce from the Bible, because Bible is the binding scripture. Look, listen very carefully, uh, uh, Brother Ahmad. Because Bible is the binding scripture for the Christian. If Mirza Ghulam wants to give them Ilzami Jawab, he has to produce something from something which is binding on them. So it, it is your job to produce something from the Bible which can establish this so we can call it Ilzami Jawab. Otherwise, it was attack of Mirza Ghulam himself. Simple as that. I'm just going to restart your time, brother. Brother in humanity. Well, just not by my request is, inshallah, two minutes are enough for both of us because yes. if we go too long, it gets complicated. No problem. So I'm just going to start your time whenever you unmute. you're muted. But, uh, you're muted. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, so one of the things I want to address is first your point, Brother Imran. This is a uh, illogical and uh, a, a, a fallacious explanation of Ilzami Jawab that's been mentioned by Brother Imtiaz. A book doesn't have to be necessarily mentioned. I'm, I'm, and I'm going to read a dictionary from Rekta, which uh, Razi was mentioning as well in Urdu first. It says, Ilzami Jawab, under it says, Motaris ka etaraz rafa karne ki bajaye. Vesa hi etaraz us parvarit kardena jasa ke usne kiya hai. Okay? Which translates to in English, is, and, and the mantak is logic. Instead of removing the objection of the objector to introduce the same objection to him as he has done, or a similar objection as he has done. Okay? It doesn't mention anywhere that it has to be written down in their book. 
when they are, when they are cursing Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when they are accusing him of zina, the Promised Messiah sallam, replies to them and says, and qawa qawa in the Arabic language, I don't know, and I'll go back, uh, brother Intiaz, and look into this. Qawa doesn't mean organs only, my brother. Qawa and qawa also means your your faculties, which Allah the Almighty has given you. And also, the, I, don't, I don't know whether it's, it's something wrong with your translation or there's an issue with with uh, with, with what it is. It, it, it's, it's a mistake. But the reality is the Prophet Muhammad has not used Aza. Aza or Kuwa me both farak hai. Aza kehte hai ye haath, naak, kaan. This is Aza. Kuwa are not, uh, are, 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 are not body parts, but rather they are faculties and, and, and are attributes. And hence why the, the reference that you presented, the Promised Messiah has mentioned, he says, Hazrat Masih al-Islam mardana sifat ki ala tarin sifat se. So how are you taking two separate references from different places and putting your own meaning into the text of the Promised Messiah So this is, this, this is clearly, you know, clearly against uh, justice and, and, and it, go, it goes totally against what we should stand upon, which is truth. Allegations are allegations, but let's be very honest about it. I, I've addressed two things, that Ilzami Jawab does not mean what you're saying, what you're attributing towards the Promised Messiah with regards to the un un understanding of Kawa, which, 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 which means a body part. That's, that, that, that's not the translation or understanding of Kawa. And in the okay, second thing that you met, one second, one second, I'm just ending, I'm sending in 20 seconds, brother uh, Imran. Yeah. In Nurul Quran, which you've used to join two references, the Nurul Quran explains it. If you're joining two references to do tatbiq, as you use in the, in the, in the ahadith, then it is the, the, the word that I use is sifat, which is attributes. So my brother, please be honest about this. He hasn't used kawa or aza. Thank he hasn't said much, anything man. of that sort. Okay, so before you start, um, so th there's a there's a couple of things. So I just want to clarify this. Yeah. So one <laughs> one thing is that that a problem with the word organs. Yeah. This is the claim that being made that this is not a problem with the word, but it's actually a, a faculty, a manly, a, a male faculty or something that prevents you from being a role model as a uh, as a, uh, as a as a family man with a. With a, with a wife for the people. I've got a simple question and for you, Brother Antias. Can I ask a no, question no, to you? Just simple. Just, it will answer everything. It will answer literally, well, Allah, you answer everything. Okay, you can ask a question, but you've had your moment, so let's give it a okay. chance for a second. Yeah? The, se the second uh, point here is that look, look, uh, Brother Ahmed put, he put, he brought a dictionary, and he's saying the dictionary says, make the same claim they made against you to them, yeah, or against your prophet to them. Yeah? Now, but there's a problem here that I see that I don't see, uh, unless Brother Ahmed can show us the same thing from their source, if he wants to change the definition, where this specific claim about manhood being lacking, uh, safat of manhood being lacking from the Prophet, peace upon him, that did not allow him to be a role model as a husband and uh, uh, provide that, that would be something that... We, he can give weight to his argument with. But Brother Imtiaz, you, you, please go ahead. Your two minutes. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, uh, Rahil, by can you my Rahil, by just request to you is can you please note down my points so you can respond to them properly? So, the first let thing me you Let me grab a pen. Let me grab a pen. Also. Okay, please, please. I stop here. Let me restart no your time, uh, Imtia, uh, Imtia, because. Uh, because it's interesting, because this is often, this is almost like the, the pattern, a, a, a redefining yeah. of terms and words. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Ilzami Jawab, all the time we've been told this is responding to them, and now we're having a, a new it's definition yeah. being, being yeah. provided. The definition, the definition should be uh, given by the claimant. No, this fine. I give you, but I give you. I give you, you, give, okay. you, you don't give interpretation okay. there because it, it okay. distracts the public. No, no, okay. Okay. Follow the argument. I know you have a distraction. I'll mute you for Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So first thing about the Ilzami Jawab, in English we call it accusative answer. And Rahil, he rightly pointed, he said that accusative answer is when you raise the same objection on your opponent. But one thing is missing, from where? To raise the same objection from which source? For example, if I say to a, uh, for example, if I say to a Christian, for example, okay, that you cannot marry more than one woman. And he wants to raise the same objection on me. What he will quote from where? Either Quran or Sunnah. So Rahil, I agree with you that in Ilzami Jawab, instead of answering the question or the objection, you raise the same objection. But understand the same objection from where? From the sources which are binding for the opponent. Please understand. It's called in, uh, in, in the technical term, Musallimate Khasm. From the arguments of the other person. Now, you need to tell us Rahil, 
that where in the binding sources of Christianity, which is a Bible, the canonical Bible, where is it mentioned Isa alayhi salam was missing some faculties. Which faculties we can discuss, but which you have to first produce that which faculties he was missing because he was born without Bagair Baap ke Pada Hona was kawase mahroom hone pe dalalat karta hai. Because of being born without father, it employs deprivation of some kawa. You can tell us that which where which Bible says this, then it can be called in Zami Jawab. At second point, you said, uh, yeah, you said that you know the kawa does not mean organ, no problem. One thing you we both agree, listen very carefully. Rahil. One thing we both agree, Mirda Gulam is saying that Isa alayhi salam is missing some kawa. Okay, I want you to tell people which kawa he was missing, which faculties he was missing. Please tell people. I'm done. Okay, Jazakallah. So can I start? Yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim First of all, the, the understanding that you've given of the accusative answer, my brother, as I've explained over and over again, it is a wrong explanation. What were the sources the Christians were using? What sources were they using when they were attacking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of, being, of doing zina? They were saying he married uh, he, he married all of these different women. He had different wives and, 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 and then he married a woman who was six or nine, whatever the case is. So they were using a reference from our books, whatever, or alluding towards there. But the allegation is not going to be mentioned in that book. They're deducing from their filthy mind something which does not exist. That's why when the promised Messiah Islam is replying to that, he's saying that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam did not have children. And therefore, therefore he's replying to them in that manner that he could not, that your Jesus, uh, what I've established very clearly so far, this is not Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. This is something that the scholars, uh, you know, Ramatullah Kiranvi and many others that we have previously mentioned as well, have used this tactic, tactics of accu accusative answer. Now, accusative answer by definition doesn't have to be that this has to be mentioned in their books as an allegation. You understand the point, Brother Intiazo? You don't understand it. That, so, so, okay, let me explain what, what I'm saying. So, no, when no, they're no, saying, you, you, you complete, yeah, so when the Holy Prophet, وسلم, they're accusing him of zina and they're accusing him of, of not being a prophet, billahi, when they're accusing him of these things, then why are they? Do they find something in our books of a hadith? Do they find something in, in something Quran to for us to believe? Yes, they, they believed in this. Of course not. This is their deduction, their, their basic their, 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 their deduction of, of, of something that they cannot understand. And now, what is the promised Messiah is doing? He's, he's, he's reversing that. And he's mentioning that your fictitious Messiah and your from, from, from your biblical sources, he did not have any children. He did not have any children. So what example does could your Messiah leave for us? Do you understand now? Or you still don't understand? Or you don't want to understand? So this, this, is, this is the understanding of accusative answer that I've given you from dictionary. So Brother Imran mentioned something, and I'm ending, I know my time's up at 10 seconds. Brother Imran mentioned something, and people can go back and listen. He said that the accusative answer, Islamic Jawab, is something that has to be mentioned in a book. There's no such a definition that exists. You've just made it up. And no, since no. you're the claimant, no, no, no. since you're the claimant, let me clarify for you. One second. Since let you're the claimant, okay, let me finish my sentence. Let me finish time. the sentence. Sorry, go on. Let me finish the sentence. sentence since, you're the, since you're the claimant of something or mentioning two references and you're saying Islamic Jawab is something, it is for you to prove that it means that, not for me to uh, oh, bring a book. So let's, 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 let's think of the yeah. logic of this because you're making an illogical claim here. First of all, you produce, so I'm sorry, brother, I'm just going to clarify a few terms. So, f so first of all, you produce a dictionary. What you said is you say the same claim, you make the same claim they made. So now you're saying that the claim is is verbal and it's not written. So this is not you now. So there's a, there's there's a problem here. Do you understand now? I'm clarifying for you. You because now Zami Jawab has gone from this is interesting. There's a, there's been an evolution of definitions. So Zami Jawab is you respond to what the, the claims they make against you for, uh, uh, about a fictitious a fictitious Messiah that they have. You make they you you respond uh, to, against that as a response. Then you said no, it doesn't have to be something that they have about the fictitious Messiah. It can be you're making the same claim that they've made, and now and so we say okay, that's fine. Show us from their texts what that claim was. That is is the same claim. What you did was you, you did two things. First of all, you produced the opposite claim. So the claim being made about Isa al Islam is that according to uh, the text that we have we're looking at, is that he did he lacked a manly quality and could not produce children 
uh, and it's interesting. Uh, I just want to clarify that you, you obviously you don't believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, had, had any children, even when he went to Kashmir, etc. I, 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 that would be interesting to know. But un, unless you do, unless you do think he had children, because it doesn't make sense that you would respond to something if you said Jesus didn't have any children. Biblical and you're, and you're uh, one second. I have not finished the point. So you're so you're the claim that Jesus peace be upon him. You're making the claim that Jesus didn't have any children. This is fictitious. The opposite of that is that you believe that Jesus peace be upon him did have children, and this is why you'd be responding in that way to clarify that their understanding of Jesus is fictitious. That's one part, one aspect. The other aspect of it is the claim is not the same claim that's being made against the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because that's a claim of opposite. He's he's having access to many women, and actually showing very very overtly manly qualities in in accessing many women. The claim being made is the opposite. Jesus peace be upon him has he has lacking a a, a something about his manhood, his, his manliness that prevents him from having children, that prevents him from being a role model as a father. And you haven't clarified what manly uh, faculty this specifically this is. So there's lots of layers, but there's an evolution of the of the terms. And now the now the last bit of it was, in <coughs> fact, they don't have to write it down. They don't yeah. have it doesn't have to be in their books. You can just respond. Now, I think that's I think that's because you can say that about anything that's written. It's an Islami okay. Jawab, according to your definition, doesn't have to be in their books. Can I respond to you within that, 30 seconds? Be, one second. It doesn't have to be in response okay. to anything specific. It can just be the same or the opposite. You've so taken, you've taken good uh, two, three minutes. Can I can address you first? Because otherwise, uh, people are not going to understand. I'm just uh, People are not going to understand. Just okay. Brother, can I take 30 seconds? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Give him 30 seconds. I am 30 not seconds. saying, I am not saying, let me be very clear, that Ilzami Jawab does not mean that you can, you can, that, that something that's mentioned in their books, you cannot mention it. I'm not limiting it to that. You're limiting a term in Zami Jawab to something that something that's only mentioned in the books, you can mention it. Now, when the Promised Messiah used this way of responding to Fatima Masih, we don't have an evidence of Fatima Masih coming back and saying, May, you, you, there's no, nothing of, of that exists. Because he knew he believed in it. Even these Christians didn't raise allegations, the one that you're raising on the stream, my friend, because they know what the Promised Messiah was speaking about when he was responding to them. So when he's speaking about a, a, a this fictitious Masih, they knew in their mind that their Messiah did not have children according to their understanding. So therefore, they could not respond to him or they never raised this point. Oh, Mirza, you are you are uh, historically incorrect based on what you're mentioning. So, 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 so clearly, I'm not I'm not I'm not limiting the term to what I'm saying. I am so, saying, I yeah, I'm, so I think I, I, hope, I hope it clarifies because okay, it, sounds very, it, very, it sounds very childish because I'm, because once I consider, childish. it hasn't it hasn't it I'm hasn't evolved. Nothing, nothing has evolved. Nothing second, has evolved. Second, I don't know why you keep on saying it's evolved. So what you've done is you've added on possible definitions to that definition. If you don't want to say, you cancel it out. But brother Imtiaz, please uh, continue. You got two minutes. So uh, first of all, I am not, I'm not by inshallah. I will take three minutes because, as you know, he took yeah. uh, three minutes. No okay. problem. Okay, let me just. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So we are discussing two points. One is about the Ilzami Jawab. Because the question, was it Ilzami Jawab or was it the belief of Mirza Ghulam? That's one question. Other is that uh, Sayyidina Isa salam, was missing some organs or faculties. No problem. Now, right now, let's stick with the Ilzami Jawab part first so people can follow discussion as well. So with regard to Ilzami Jawab, Rahil Bhai, when you go back, please watch the stream again. You said earlier that when Christians were saying that the Prophet وسلم, was making love with his wives, he said, you said, Rahid, that all of this is found in our books. You said this on the, uh, on, on the live stream. It means that whatever objection, you already said this, that the objections which Christians were raising, you said this, they are found in our books. And I agree with you. So but my brother, all we are saying is, and secondly, you said that it does. You said that it doesn't have to be written clearly. You can deduce that. No problem. Tell us that which part of the Bible Mirza Ghulam was using to deduce all of that. So, I'll, so you have said two things, Rahil. One thing you said is, you said that these things, that the, the objections of the Christians, they are found in our books. So if you want to be fair and consistent, then the objection Mirza Ghulam was raising, they have to be found in their books as well. Only then they can be binding, binding on them. Otherwise, why would they believe in that? Otherwise, why would that be a objection on them if it's not in their books Se second point is you said that you can deduce as well you need to tell us 
that which part of the Babi Mirza Ghulam was using to deduce all of that. If you cannot establish these two things, then it proves our point that Mirza Ghulam was attacking Isa alayhi salam and he was not having any source for the attack. It was with all respect for you, Rahil, and for your faith. It was the personal attack of Mirza Ghulam on Isa alayhi salam. That's all we wanted to say. And if you if you want to deny that, listen very carefully, if you want to prove otherwise, you need to produce the evidence. You said the ilzami jawab means that you raise the same objection on the opponent. Same objection from where? From where? It has to be from the binding sources of the opponent. Otherwise, it cannot be the answer. Every, every person with a common sense can understand this point. And you already said earlier that the objections of the Christians are found in our books. And Mirza Ghulam was responding to them. So please address these points. We don't need to go too long. Let's discuss the ilzami jawab point. So I, I don't want extra time, by let him discuss. But let me stick with two minutes. No, okay, we, minutes. We're, gonna, we're just going to revert back to two minutes because there is a bit I, of, think uh, I think it was good. I might, I might need three minutes. That's oh, fine. no, you'll That's be fine. fine. Two, minutes two minutes is what minutes. we're going to have. No problem. <laughs> okay, okay, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, Bismillah Rahim. So, so he wants to stick to... So there's two things. That, uh, it's good that he reminded the listeners that there's two things that brought up. One was, was it Ilzami Jabat or was it an attack on Isa alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa I showed you a few pages back and where he ends the letter that it was clearly an Ilzami Jabab where he says specifically that I'm talking about a fictitious Jesus. Now the question is where does that where where does that point where is the point of reference that is taken from? Something doesn't have to be mentioned to be taken a point of re reference. If something isn't mentioned, that is also a point of reference. For instance, when we go to, uh, and, and you can smile at this and inshallah I will, I will give an example. Do a simple search right now, brother Imran, and show on the screen did Jesus have children? And the first thing that you get from the is is from the Christian sources is uh, and, and they're answering this and they they categorically state that the Bible gives no indication that Jesus was married or had children nor is there any evidence from re reliable historical sources to give credence to such such an idea. So they don't believe that he's so when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is replying to their view which they hold, he doesn't have to quote something. They believe in it. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? For instance, Christians come up to you and say a lot of things that these things do not exist. If something if, if something does not exist, right, that is also a point of reference. So this is what the point of reference from society has used, right? Now, the second point was, I hope I've answered the issue of male organ, which is a, which was a point of, uh, uh, which was, a, you know, which, 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 a point, which was a point of ridicule for you guys before, when you guys were laughing, you guys were smirking and smiling, that no such word the promised Messiah has used, Aza, Brother Imran, I think you don't know Urdu, go back and read those pages, with open heart, because I, 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 I be think nice. you're a just man. Nice. I'm, I'm being nice. I'm, I'm saying, be a just man. Go back and read those pages and see two things. Whether an organ is mentioned, because these are very these guys are very literalists. So I'm saying, show me where it says male organ. It doesn't say it. It says sifat. It says it says sifat. And I've said since he didn't have children, the Prophet Messiah was replying to the Christians who were saying he had zina. He said, you cannot tell us about this fictitious Messiah who did not even have children. Yes, so how can you tell us? How can you give us, present an example to us? So how it clarifies to you now? Thank you. So Brother Ahmed, what was the safat that was missing? Just tell me that, please. What was the missing, what was the thing that was missing about the manhood of Isa Islam? Sorry? I'll clarify to you. What was missing? Sifat, you mean? Attributes. Yeah, the attributes. This is what you're saying. Male attributes. He didn't have children. You guys, oh, thank God you reminded me. You guys were saying that Na'udhu Billah, he didn't have male organ. Brother Imran, you're an intellectual man. Does a, does do you, do you know that people who still have organ can't have children? But that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> no, 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 but before you guys were laughing, <laughs> he didn't because, have male because, organ. Because, but the point is, do you agree? One second, brother. Do you agree? Do you agree? One second. My question. I want to ask you a question. One second. Because do you agree? Last question. I don't want to oh mute you. So one of the okay. things that it's actually yeah. really interesting, your behavior has changed into like this. No, no one was mocking your, your the way you were talking or the way you were doing. Not stuff. me, not the me. Way, no, you were right now. You, you guys were, doing, were laughing. He, he, he. Listen, you did this. You guys were. Well, you remember that? I do not. Okay, I would. I, I would okay, take so out now, the snippet and we will publish it. Ahmed, one second. One second. The conversation has been useful so far. Yeah. Okay. It's been it's useful. Good. And what you're doing with this behavior is you're 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 showing a lack of sort of. Decorum, and I don't. Brother, want the, when the answers are given, you say his behavior. When Adran was laughing, he was he was smirking and laughing. And but, Adran, that, and, but, but, but did you say Adran, you're making me laugh? Did you say this or not? 
he did he did say Allah, did you say this I, so so point, how are you saying he wasn't point, laughing what, what were they laughing at what were they laughing at at one point i muted that now you're very emotional so are you in the are you in a, are you in the mental state to have a conversation now or not I am not. I'm not emotional. I'm. I'm. I'm you're, just showing you're, you hypocrisy. You're being very emotional because you're. Well, I'm, just, I'm. I'm just showing you, you guys hypocrisy not, because not, as soon as answers not. are given, it's no, you, you it's a change not, of mood. Uh, eh? Ahmed, you, you haven't given an answer. What you've said is what you've done is you said there was a fictitious. Let the Jesus. public decide, bro. You've, Let the public no, decide. No, I'm going to clarify for the public because it's very interesting. Public have already decided. So number okay. one, you said there was a fictitious Sheep Jesus. Following, isn't it? You said there was a fictitious Jesus. Where was the fiction from? You said. You brought out a new definition of Al Islami Jawab. You can make the same claim that they make. Then you yeah. change that. Actually, it doesn't have to be the same claim that they make. I didn't then say the same claim. It doesn't even have to you're, be mentioned as a point. You're putting words in my mouth. It doesn't even you can, be, you, it oh does my not even, Lord. Uh, one second. You said they, the dictionary definition you read of Al Islami Jawab make the same claim they make. I wrote it down in quotes so that I okay. can quote it back to you. I, I, but I, but I didn't say that. One second, one second now. If you're quoting, you're, I didn't say that. You're saying you're giving answers. I'm telling you why, from my perspective, you have not given a single answer. I'm going to tell you. Then, brother, no can carry on. So, no first problem. of all, you you said there was a fictitious Jesus. So there was a a Jesus that the the Christians believed in that was being responded to. Yeah. Yes. Now, you, so we said we're, that that means you have to quote from the source. Oh, Allah, 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 Allah. Do okay. Christians believe their children? Then you said one second. Then Do you Christians said, believe their children? Gave, Simple question second. to you. you I'm gave, asking you a question. You I'm asking you a question. One second. Do I'm Christians asking, believe one that Isa alayhi salam had children? One My question second, to you. One Remember second, that you. You're a very intellectual guy. I'm responding yeah. to you. If you hear Answer me. Answer this question. Then you said. Then you brought a definite dictionary out, and you said you have to make the same claim. That they make now. You're, this is a defense of the Prophet Muhammad. So this is the claim. Al Nizami Jawab in defense. Was it not? Was it not? Claim that's being made. I, I read it out to you, my brother. I read it out to you. If you can't even accept that, then you're. Where's down. the honesty, bro? Just where's the down. honesty? Just one. Well, calm down. So you're saying that this, this is, is why, the, brother. This you know, is, brother Imran. You said you said, you said to someone. Come on, second. You said to someone. You're passive aggressive. You are the definition of passive aggressive aggressiveness. You're very clever. There's a reason why they bring you here. You dictate the conversation. You want to just take the conversation in a certain way. Ahmed, be patient. Allow don't put words in my mouth and don't don't draw I'll, conclusions I'll that I, you know, I haven't you said. said. So these are your words. You can go back and check. Okay. You you first of all you you made this claim about the fictitious Jesus. We I said that you have to refer to a you have to refer to where that fiction came from. Then you I gave did. a dictionary definition. You said that you're referring to you're making the same claim that they make. Yeah. Then the point was made to you. Actually, they're making the claim <clears throat> that Islam lacked some manly quality. That prevented him from being a role model as someone with a with a wife. Repeat that, please. Repeat what you said. Repeat a man uh, lacked something about his manly quality. That Who believed that? Christians believe that. I said it. this. If you want to, if you want to hear my words, yeah. then you have to stop uh, saying something okay. after every word I say. Can you start again? I'm going to write it down what okay. you said. You you can you can rewind back and you can listen. So let's bring yeah. brother can bring it up. You gave the definition yeah. that of a fictitious Jesus that Christians believed in. Then you said that 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 um, this was uh, this was an Islami Jawab, <coughs> Islami Jawab definition. You changed. You said that you have to make the same claim that they make. Actually, the claim was against the, the some some quality. Let's just use your word quality about Jesus peace be upon him. A quality about he was missing a quality. There was something in him that was missing yeah. that yeah. prevented him from being a role model as a mm. as a husband. Do you understand? Mm. So that, that quality you haven't clarified. You've just said he didn't lack children. That does not mean a quality is missing from you. That means you just didn't have children. This is a, a, a straw man. Then what it's you did was you clarified <laughs> for you that the, 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 the claim that they're making about that the claim that they're making about Isa al-Islam lacking manhood quality, this is not a response to the claim that the Prophet peace be upon him had more than that. He had he had many women access. That's the claim they're making against him. It's the opposite claim. Then what you did was you said actually <clears throat> the reference that whatever the fictitious Jesus has been referred to, it's not it doesn't have to be mentioned as a point of reference. So now we're talking about Mirza Ghulam Ahmed responding to a hypothetical point of reference, i.e. something that they don't say that you can just respond to. And so they don't say or they don't believe. You've taken away all of the do, meanings of the words that you're. Do providing. they believe Isa al so, had children? So from yes my or no. Perspective, so this is in response to your. You know, you're talking okay. about. You've given all the answers, and people be quiet. From my perspective, I have not heard question. an answer from you. But I'll let Brother MT no ask you, Brother MT. But, uh, can you answer my question? Can you answer my question, Brother Imran? You're you're muted. 
Do Christians, believe, do bit Christians believe Isa alayhi salatu was salam? Maybe I'm, 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 I'm unaware. So I'm gonna, I can I'm answer. Gonna I can answer. I'm, no, 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 answer. I'm going to quote your words back to you. Yeah, yeah. There, there does not have to be a, a, a there does not have to be a point of reference. Huh? There does not have to be a point of reference. Are you satisfied? I'm, being, with I'm, saying, I'm saying a book. I'm saying a book. I'm 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 giving you instance, your. The I'll tell you. Gave, I'll tell you what I mean. Ilzami Jawab. You're giving Ilzami Jawab. I'll answer, take you fifty. I'll Ahmed take fifty seconds. Maybe Ahmed, you're not understanding Ahmed, me. Maybe I'm not Ahmed, able to explain Ahmed, myself. Ahmed, Let Ahmed, me explain Ahmed, to you. Ahmed, listen okay. to me. Ask me the yeah. question again. Okay. Ask me what the question. Ask me the question you're asking me again. Reply if you if you ask me the question. Reply. Ask the question. No, no, I'm saying, do Christians believe that Isa alayhi salatu salam okay, had children? Now I'm going to respond to Muslim. you. I'm going to respond to you the same way you responded for Mr. Ghulam Ahmed. There does not have to be a point of reference. Okay. What do you, you mean by that? Are you satisfied with that answer? What would I say? What do you mean by that? Exactly. See, I'm not see what? I am not now satisfied. Ask me. With that. Therefore, I am ask satisfied. me. I am not satisfied with that answer therefore, either. Therefore, ask okay. me, what do you mean? One therefore, second. ask me, what do you mean? One and I'll reply. I'm just, ex I'm just illustrating yeah. for you. I'm going to illustrate as well, my brother. That I'm just I'll illustrating you. for you that your response was not satisfactory. Your definition was ask, please, that it has to be mentioned in a book. Imran, by let me continue. Yeah, thank you. Brother Imtiaz. Okay, okay, two minutes, Brother Imtiaz. Brother Imtiaz. Start the time, please, yeah? Two minutes. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So uh, let's have the last back and forth, uh, Rahil, between you and me on the Ilzami Jawab, and then we can move on to the uh, the Isa was missing some of the uh, some of the faculties. Okay, regarding Ilzami Jawab, okay. listen, Rahil, very carefully. You said that the Christians were raising objection about Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from our books. In response to that. If Mirza yeah. Ghulam wants to raise the same objection on them as Ilzami Jawab, what he needs to do? He needs to produce from their books. And no. we are asking you no. that, oh, and we are asking you, Rahil, that oh, all of that Lord. was a personal attack. This was a personal attack invented by Mirza Ghulam to attack mm. Isa alayhi salam because this is <clears> not found, number one, this is not found in the Bible. And number two, this is not the belief of any Christian. They don't believe that because Isa Islam was missing some manly faculties, that's why he did not have the family life. They don't believe this. Okay. Now, this was with regard to Ilzami Jawab. Now, let's move on now. You are saying, Rahil, listen very carefully. It's going to be a very important point now. Please take note. Rahil, you believe and Mirza Ghulam believed as well that when Isa Islam will come a second time, he will get married and he will have children. It means that Mirza Ghulam knew the Isa Islam was not missing any manly faculties because the marriage and the children of Isa will take place in the second coming. How come that if Mirza Ghulam knew something, he is still, first of all, it is not found in the Bible. Christians don't believe this. And Mirza Ghulam knew that this was a lie because he knew Isa will come and get married, will have children. Then why he still attack Isa al Islam by saying that Isa al Islam was missing some kawa, some faculties. And then we gave you his own interpretation that these faculties were the manly faculties which makes a person live as a time family up. person. What else you brother. want us to explain? Bismillah, I'll explain. Bismillah, your time's up. And you will only I'm, take two minutes it's now. Laughable. No extra Wallahi, time. It's laughable, man. It's laughable. Go on, start my time. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. So, so. The definition that you presented for Ilzami Jawab, I countered it from, from a dictionary and I mentioned to you, a book doesn't have to be mentioned. If I've said there doesn't need to be a point of reference, that's my mistake in wording. I should correct that. that, that therefore, let me clarify. So for instance, if Brother Imran, and don't take this as an offense, if you call, if you say to someone and you say, Brother, uh, you say, Bro, you don't really have nice hair. And, and the guy returns and says, Bro, you don't have any hair. Right? Now, you, there doesn't have to be mentioned in a book. You gave my point. I'm observing it, right? I'm observing something. So the Christians, of course, they don't believe Isa alayhi salam lacked any manly qualities. They believe him to be a god. They don't believe him to be a man, bro. They believe him to be a god. So what are you trying to say? So when Christians were quoting, your definition is so flawed, and this is what people want. To, uh, I want people to understand. You're saying a book has to mention. So when they were reading the texts of hadith about the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, did the hadith say or did the Quran say Naudu billah he did zina? Did it say that? It never says that. 
but they are deducing something from an information. You, I understand what you're saying. You're saying provide me an information from which the Promised Messiah deduced that. Okay, you're saying provide me an information. The information I'm giving you is that the Bible does not mention anything with regards to their children according to the Christians. They don't believe in it. They don't believe that Isa al-Islam had children. When they don't believe Isa al-Islam had any, any children, the Promised Messiah mentions to them this as a point of reference and says, since you don't believe Isa al-Islam had any children, how can you present a Messiah to us against a beloved Prophet وسلم, who had manly qualities, right? who had children, who had progeny, and who left for us a Uswatul Hasana, a perfect example. Therefore, this is al Zami Jawab. And if you can't understand it, wallahi, there's no even point of me being here. <laughs> it is it, literally dishonesty. And Brother Imtiaz, you know very well the mistake you made. And be honest, and this will show your character. Be honest about it and take it back. There was no such thing as Azar mentioned. There's no main organ mentioned. You are you are a literalist, you are Ahli Hadith. Yes, Madana is Sifat, Madana you. Sifat is manly attributes. Okay? Oh, now Zami Jawab. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So, inshallah, this is my this is my last turn on the Ilzami Jawab because we only wanted to have one term each. In, after that, we will discuss what Rahil said at the end that Isa al Islam was missing some uh, focalities. So, with regard to Ilzami Jawab, this is my last turn, and I want all of you to listen very carefully. Rahil Sahib said that Christians, and he he again said that that they were using our text. Yes, they were mis misrepresenting, but they were using the text from our books. Mirza Ghulam do not have any text from the Bible, which ever said that because Isa salam was not having some faculties or some manly qualities, that's why he did not get married. So Mirza Ghulam has no source to say this. And when this, when this is not found in the biblical sources, when this is not the belief of the Christians, when brother, Mirza Ghulam have you started knew, the time? I'm sorry to interject. Have you started the time, brother? I think you forgot, maybe. I will maybe take less then... time, inshallah. I will take 30 No problem, no problem. Time. You can take more, but I'm just saying maybe you forgot. No problem. Okay, no problem. So basically, all I'm saying, Rahil, is if this thing is not found in the sources of the Christian, number one, number two, they do not believe in this either. And point number three, Rahil, is that Mirza Ghulam knew that Isa alayhi salam has these faculties. He will be getting married when he will come second time. He'll have children as well. Mirza Ghulam accepted this hadith. After all of these three things, it means that Mirza Ghulam was, at, it was fabricating a personal attack on Isa alayhi salam. And in Zami Jawab, you said that Motari's uh, uh, SI etraz Varid kar dena. I agree with you that you raise the same objection on your opponent. But from where? From, from where? It has to be from the sources which are binding on your opponent in the case of Christian in the Bible. And this is not found in the Christian. So our point has established Birza Ghulam fabricated lies to attack Isa. Up, and that's exactly what we want to prove. Bismillah. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. I, 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 I think there comes, to, there comes a time in a discussion our Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I'm not calling for mubahla or anything, but by Allah, I'm 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 able to say lanatullahi al kadhibin because there comes a point in discussion where, when it goes back and forth to a point where, you know, you're not leaving your point while knowing the fact that the Promised Messiah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is talking about a fictitious Masih, he's not talking about a Masih of the Quran. Clearly, I prove to you categorically from the from, from his writings that I I have read. I have told you that do Christians believe Isa had children? You had no response. They don't believe Isa Islam had children. And therefore, when they're attacking Holy Prophet, and also you made a point, the Christians don't just attack the Holy Prophet based on the based on the things that are mentioned in our sources. They also attack him for things that are not mentioned in our sources. Okay, I will prove it, inshallah. I will bring references. Now snippet this, snippet this. They call Rasulullah, you know, uh, as, as some someone like because I've read this somewhere myself, some, some a book called Yanabi or something like that. Uh, and inshallah, I'll bring the source in the next time where they, they accuse him of beating his wives. Where did they take that from? There's no such reference whatsoever, right? So they say a lot of things that don't have any base in our sources. You can shake your head whatever you want. But Brother Imran, if you were to go back and read what they wrote about the Holy Prophet, وسلم, you would be ashamed to bring these allegations against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi You would be, truly be ashamed to bring these allegations. Now, I, I, I said clearly, I don't know what I need to say is that the Promised Messiah did believe in Isa to be a messenger of Allah, a beloved of Allah. 
a muqarrib of Allah. All of these references we have presented to him. You can shake your head and I will say, Lanatullahi al If I'm a liar, if I'm a liar, and if what I have read so far from the books of the Prophet, I have confidence to say, Lanatullahi al kathibin because I know you are deliberately lying. A person who brings three liners or four liners to present his point, his case, his premise, he's a liar. He's a kadhab to bring against the promised Messiah Salam, such things we have, he hasn't attributed from his belief, but what the Christians believe and what they said about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's fine. I, th I, th I think there's no really need to continue this because I think Thank we've gone back and friend. forth to a, to a point where, um, and can you say Amin to that? Can you say Amin to that? We because I'm, I have a comfort of, of, of saying Ahmed, Allah Ahmed, Ahmed uh, you know what? Wallahi, bruv, is a playground game. And I it's not Wallahi, it's not the verse of the Quran. Wallahi is not the verse of the Quran. This is, this is where people get reduced to, where they don't have an argument and they start to do this sort of stuff. So what I would like yeah, yeah. to do... So what I would let like people to do, decide. Adam, just make your last I know point. you're upset. Uh, yeah, I know you're very upset. Why would I you're very upset. upset. Passive okay. aggressiveness is all over your face, bro. Okay, all over your face. It's like, okay, for understanding my insides better than I do. I appreciate that. Brother Imtiaz, please. Okay, Rahmanir Rahim. Okay, for, for the viewers, first of all, there is one Jesus mentioned in the Bible. There is one Jesus mentioned in the Quran. Where is the fictitious Jesus mentioned? You need to tell us. Number one. Point number two is you said that Christians were raising the objections on us. They are not even mentioned in our books. If they raise something on us which is not in our book, that has no weight. Okay, they don't even, it will be a stupid person to raise on us the objection, which is not in our books. And then you gave the example of beating the women. Rahir, you know the Quran. In Surah Nisa, there is a verse and the people, they misuse that verse to Stop blame us that Quran says that you can beat your women. It is in our did the prophet Did the prophet beat his, Rahil, did he beat his wife? Rahil, wait. Wallahi. You're, Rahil, interrupting, wait. you're interrupting. Rahil, How can you, 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 you. Uh, brother Mohammed, I've interrupted Rahim, you're, talk please. you're talking over you're someone else. Very else's emotional. Mind. Listen very carefully. Um, listen very, second, Rahil, listen second, very, please, very carefully. One second, I am please. saying, okay. I am saying, Rahil, I'm saying, Rahil, there is a verse in the Quran in Surah Nisa which Christians are misinterpreting to accuse us that according to Quran, you can beat your women. But what I'm saying is. They still quote something from our sources. And this is exactly our point. Mirza Ghulam has no sources. He was fabricating lies to attack Isa. So this is our point, Rahil. And then after that, you said that Mubahala. Okay, listen right, very carefully. Even though there's plenty of time, Alhamdulillah, I responded to everything you said. Now listen very carefully. Let's both you and me, let both you and me, we invoke Allah's curse on the person who attacked the honor of Isa salam, and who believes in that person. Say Ameen. 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 And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy that person. Listen, listen, okay. listen. Okay, may Allah the Almighty. Okay, listen, listen. You said one, one. let me it, say it. It, it. it is my turn. I'm not doing Mubahala. I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying. One, uh, one, 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 my turn. Okay, finish it. Finish and I will speak. Finish and I will speak. You can respond. You can respond. I would say Rahil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy that person and humiliate that person and curse that person in this dunya and akhirah. Which person? The one who attacked the honor and the miracles of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and the one who is trying to defend that person. May Allah curse this person in dunya and akhirah. And also, may Allah curse that person who is intentionally trying to misquote anything. Anything at all in dunya and akhirah, please say Ameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Alhamdulillah. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Finished? Okay, it's my turn now. Are you happy now, Ahmed? Uh, I'm very happy because so, you know why I'm happy? Because so, so from now, my understanding, can, can you start my two minutes? I, I, I don't need your commentary, but then run. Well, I, I don't need your commentary. Let I'm me go back and forth with him. I'm not giving you commentary. Your tafsir is good for your people. It's not I'm, good for I'm, me. I want to have a conversation with him. I, I want you to calm down for a second, okay? So what I'm saying is this is going around in circles now. You've got okay. to the stage where you've done more bahala. So that means that that means the conversation no bahala. has stopped. No bahala. It's not bahala. The conversation has gone forward to, got to a place yeah. where it cannot go forward any further. And so this is when we get to these places as the Wallahi bruv, you know, tactics yeah. on the playground. <laughs> So what we need yeah. to do is I'm gonna give my two minutes. Two, I'm gonna give you your last two minutes and then we'll move on from that point. Okay. Okay, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. 
So let me be very categorically clear. I did not invoke Mubahala. I did not say this is Mubahala. What I said was that there comes a point in discussion where I, where I quoted the verse of the Holy Quran where we say, May the, curse of, uh, May the curse of Allah be upon the liars who are intentionally lying. If you present a reference or three lines and you try to deduce something which isn't there, then you're clearly kadhab, you are lying. When Mardana Sifat is used, and now coming, coming, coming to the point of you're saying, uh, you know, some of the things, and I want people to go back and actually read this. Kitab al Bariya, I mentioned a few streams back to uh, brother, in, brother uh, um, Adnan Rashid, who's using this stream, uh, you know, where they accuse, and the Prophet has given lists upon lists of what they were accusing of the Holy Prophet. I don't even want to repeat it. I want people to go back and read it. Kitab al Bariya, Ruhani Khazan, Jilt 13, page 122. And go and read if your heart can, if your eyes can see, and if your if your lips can read what they wrote about the Holy Prophet Sallallahu And how can you say some that that I said I, I, I did not say did did do they have a reference from the hadith where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi beat his wives? No, they don't. They don't have any reference. So now, Zubillah, you are defending a fictitious, you know, Messiah of the Christians who they when they were attacking the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are actually defeating Islam by saying, yes, they had some point of reference in the Quran to say, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the Prophet beat his wives. Na'uzubillah. Have some shame, brother. You have to be very careful when you use these things. And this is the same reference I want to go back to that we were having a discussion with one of the Molvis in, 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 in Birmingham. And uh, we said, oh, you believe in Isa al Islam brought back the dead to life and all these things. Is there anything with regards to it about the Holy Prophet? He said, no, brother, there's nothing like that. But there's a weak hadith that exists that he broke back a goat to life. This was his response. So the point I'm trying to say here, be very careful. It's not about defeating me, brother, in Tiaz. This is about Islam and Rasulullah Wasallam. And people can see clearly that the honor that we have for Rasulullah Wasallam, and the, the honor that the, the promised Messiah Wasallam, had for him. So you and me can be lying, no problem. I want people to go back and read the source. And as the previous Ahmadi came, and I'm ending this, brother, in Tiaz, uh, brother Imran. Please, your time is up. I'm just the, giving you the, the, the previous, The previous Ahmadi who came, who said he goes back and read. I want our non ahmadi brothers to go open the books, although they are banned in Pakistan, and MTS can answer why they're banned in Pakistan, but they can open this Ruhani Khazain and they can read which Messiah is it? Is, is it the Messiah of the Quran? Secondly, is there any male organ even mentioned there? What is he defending? And people can come to the conclusions themselves. And that's all I have to say. And, and, and lastly, lastly, apologies, 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 apologies. If this has gone to uh, gone to a point of being very emotional, we were both de defending our case. And Brother Imran, I sincerely apologize if I've said something that that's hurt you, Brother Intiaz, and I sincerely apologize to you if I've I've, I've hurt you in any no way. Problem. I don't take anything personally. Sorry. Right. This no, no, but I, I I sincerely do because this is not the intention, and I hope things were going, but it did get a bit heated, you know, um, be no be because of the passion that we have for our beliefs. I sincerely apologize. Okay. I wish you all the best. Rahim. So first of all, uh, Rahil Sahib, you said that it is not Mubahala. Obviously, you have the right to say, but I, Alhamdulillah, because I am sitting here with full confidence. So for me, it is Mubahala. For me, you, you don't have to agree with me. For me, it is Mubahala. I am literally saying, I invoke Allah's curse on the one who is disrespected Isa salam, and the one who is trying to defend that person. In dunya and akhamela curse him. So it is Mubahala for me. And then you say that, uh, you know, three. I quote three lines, three lines, Rahil. The three lines I have quoted, you have conceded them, and that's why you are defending them. We both have a different interpretation. I agree with you. You are interpreting in a different way. Yes, I agree with that. But you have accepted that the three lines I have quoted, they do say this thing. Okay, then after that, you said that I, I was going to mention that you calling me kazab and shame. And because, because you apologize, I take... Uh, I don't want to mention that, okay? Because uh, And I appreciate that this should be the spirit moving forward that we respect each other. And I appreciate you, Rahil, for that. And then you said that, uh, okay, you said that I am defending, you know, the Christian. They said, look, Rahil, you are the one who said, you are the one who said that the Christians, whatever they were accusing our prophet of, you said it is found in our books. And you said to me, you know that. I agree with you. You said this. You said this, Rahil. And after that, you gave the example of women beating. Okay, I was telling you that Christians do misinterpret our sources in order to accuse us, but they do use our sources. They have to, everybody has to give Ilzami Jawab from the sources. And the next point is, now inshallah, after this point, now we are going to discuss the point of 
that uh, you said that I have mis uh, translated Mirza Ghulam said that Isa alayhi salam, because he was born without father, he was deprived of some faculties. This is your own translation. Now, in your turn, you tell us that which faculties Isa alayhi salam was deprived of. You tell us. Okay, you know, just as a point of interest, yes, that there are yeah. hadith that Christians point to to make the claim that the Prophet beat his wives. We refute them regularly uh, all the time. And so even this is a maybe maybe you haven't come across that before, but that's just a point. I of I, I, I haven't come across a hadith. Yeah, I've come across in Bukhari a Muslim. Is, is yeah. in Bukhari a Muslim hadith? Which I, says I, I can get it for you if you want, but I'd rather not have post it here. But I can I'll send it to you in the back. Yeah. Chat. Okay, that's not that, that's that's not a problem. It's, it's not an issue. It, it will be a matter of learning from you. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's not an issue of. Uh, I'll start uh, your time that. now. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Raisa, before, Raisa, before you start, Raisa, yeah. we have we, we have enough back and forth on Ilzami Jawab. Now I want us to discuss the second point, which was that because Isa Islam was born without father, so he yeah. was deprived of some faculties. And then you admitted that they were One mainly second. faculties. Please tell us that which faculties he was deprived of. You're saying you're saying the Nurul Quran, yeah? You're saying the red, red no, references no, no. that are that no. came specifically for, yeah? Which Rather, reference you're saying? Let me Jashma let Masihi. me Jashma Masihi. Jashma Masihi, you're saying. No, I had the question. He's not talking about a reference. He's giving you a no, question. He is. He's particularly talking about a reference. I know. He is. He's particularly no, about Rahid he, type. Rahid, look at yes. I, I am asking you a question. You said yeah. that when I use the reference in which Mirza Ghulam said that because Isa alayhi salam was born without father, it implies yeah. deprivation of some faculties. This is your translation. I use the word organ. You want to use yeah. the faculties, no problem. Use the word faculties. Yeah. I want you to explain for the you for the people and for the public that which faculties Isa al Islam was deprived of because he was born without father. Okay, brother. Uh, if, if you're referring to the rare, rare reference that I mentioned of Nurul Quran with the Prophet Messiah said, and I'm gonna quote here. Haan ye itraz bahut bada hai ki Hazrat Masih alayhi salam mardana sifat ke ala tarin sifat se be naseeb mehz hone ke baiz az azwaad se sachi aur kamil husn e maashur ka koi amali namuna na dikha sake this was the reference that you you put up okay which which says that uh, this is this is, a, this is a big itraz this is a big allegation ke has the isa alayhi salatu wassalam mardana sifat ki ala tarin sifat se that he was um, deprived of the the male attributes the the greatest of male attributes uh, and therefore, he was not able to show true and kamil husne mu'ashirat. Husne mu'ashirat, what do you translate as the best uh, way of living with your wives, you would say, right? Uh, Brother Mtiaz, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Europe orte nihayat kabale sharam azadi se fayda utha kare tadal ke dara se dhul. Now, the, the first point is very, very important. Is to establish the fact that whether this is an ilzami jawab or it's not. And once, once we cannot agree on that fact, you're saying this is not an ilzami jawab. Whereas I have mentioned to you the reference from the page 376, 376, where he says, ke sakht ke ke bil zikr kiya gaya hai, aur wo bhi sakht se. Meaning based, based on the things that Fateh Masih has written, in, in reply to his, a fictitious Masih is mentioned, and that, that is out of um, majburi, right? He didn't want to mention it. Right, and then at the end he says the, the you know the same part that you were men mentioning. Right at the end where he ends the letter, he says to him, "Ke if you agar hazil masih ko bhi galiya mat do, don't swear, swear or abuse Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Yakinan jo kuch tum janabe mukaddas nabi ki niswat bura kahoge, whatever you would say it wrong about the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasalam, wohi tumhare farzi masih ko kaha jayega, farzi masih ko kaha jayega. Magar ham is sachhe masih ko mukaddas aur buzurg. Rather we believe this masih to be true." Mukaddas, pyo, buzurg or paak jante hain or mante hain ke jis ne na khudai ka dawa ki. All these things I've already read it. Last point is, this is the belief, brother, brother, very clearly. This is the belief of the Christians when they were attacking the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their belief is that Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam didn't have children. Meaning they believe that he didn't have children. Since he didn't have children, how are they accusing the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of doing zina and all of these things? When their prophet could not mention to us or show us any example of manly qualities which a father has, which which if someone had children, whereas the Prophet showed us how he treated the youngs, you know. But this is the fictitious Masih. This is what they believe in. 
you understand the point? Now, if you don't understand this, then uh, it's, it's just going, uh, you know, it's just going around in circles. There is no such thing with regards to the, the most important point is about Azar, my brother. You said male organ. This is a big blunder you made. So you should take that back. It doesn't say male organ. So you said yourself before that I reduced from this based on I read this and I read this. I joined this. You did say that. You did, did say that. You said, did what did you say? That. What did you say, brother? I will say I'll take my it turn. Out, inshallah. Your time is finished, Ahil. Okay, okay, last thing. Time, so so I believe no. you said, time, okay. Five Rahim, seconds, you always I speak okay. almost one minute okay, no after problem. your time. Yeah. No, no, five seconds, I said. Well, no problem. Right. You start. So just one second. Let, let Brother MCR's respond to you now, yeah? Yeah. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rahil Sahib, I'm asking you one question continuously. Please note down the question and answer. My question is, yeah. there is one Jesus in the Bible. There is one Isa in the Islam. And according to Mirza Ghulam, both of them are one. Listen very carefully. The Isa al-Islam of the Quran and Jesus of the Bible. These two we know. Yeah. And though both of them are one. I'm asking you, <coughs> where is this fictitious Messiah? What, which, what is the source of fictitious Messiah? In which source there is a fictitious Messiah who is lacking some manly faculties and that's why he could not get married. That's why he could not. Where is it? Please tell us, Rahil. Okay. And the point number two, you said that, you know, uh, is it not the case that the Christian believe that Isa was not married? This is not the point. Rahil, listen very carefully. The point is accusing that when Isa al Islam is not getting married from this one, concluding that because he was deprived of some manly faculties, that's why he did not marry. This is the question. Question is not that did he marry or not. The question is why did he not marry? Mirza Ghulam is giving us a reason because he was deprived of some manly qualities. Do you agree with the reason Mirza Ghulam gave or you disagree with that? That's my question. And then point number three is, you said that, <clears throat> you know, uh, you, you, you again saying that, that, uh, that is, uh, there's a, uh, because you repeatedly said this point, Rahil Sahib, that there is a Farzi Masi and you have proved that. Please tell the audience, what is the source of Farzi Masi? Number one. Number two, when Isa alayhi salam, when Isa alayhi salam, the one Christians believe, the one yeah. mentioned in the scriptures, None of that is mentioned there. And they don't believe in that. How can that be Zami Jawab for them? How can that be? You have oh not... You, you I gave understand, the definition. Understand. I think two minutes you are over. It's going to three. Rahil, yeah. bye. Uh, okay, okay, I done. No problem. I take two minutes. No, brother, no Intiaz, because I, if you want to take, take time more, but you, uh, you're repeating your points. You've mentioned it three times the same thing. No worries, but, Where, but Rahil... What bhai, is Rahil the, your question is, what is the source of the fictitious Messiah? That's your question. No, in let, one me, sentence. Let, me, let me phrase my okay, question. Okay, yeah, yeah. very clearly, and you can write it down. Yeah, I am saying that there is one Isa in the uh, in the Islam. There is one yeah. Jesus in the Bible. We know mm. them, and both of them are same, according to Mirza Ghulam. Okay, I'm mm. asking you that where is this fictitious Messiah? It is definitely mm -hmm. not the biblical, not the Quran. where is it? What is okay. the source? And then you okay. need to tell us that in this source, it is mentioned in about this Messiah. That because okay. he was deprived of some manly faculties, that's why he did not get married. Okay, Zakala. Okay, can you start my time? So clearly, when 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 I establish and I mention to you, it's a fictitious Messiah. You know, e even for a ten-year-old child, you can understand that the promised Messiah Salam, did not believe in the, that Isa Salam, was missing any male faculties. This is a way of responding, my friend. It's just a way of responding. It's a it's a way of speech. So when, when you said, where is that? I think the most important question is, where is that fictitious Messiah of Jesus being taken, the one he's referring to here? At times you refer to the book and there are times you can refer to the beliefs of those people. So when Christians read the Bible and they don't have evidence for Isa Islam's children, they believe that he did not have any children, right? Since he did not, did not have any children, he's referring to this fact. It's a, it is a fact. You, you don't have to, you don't, you don't, you, you, you're asking for me for a reference point written in a book. It's not necessarily needed because they believe in it. If you were to bring, a, you know, Christians sex to say, no, 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 no. He had children and therefore this, is, then you can say this. But again, this is an Islami Jawab that they are, they are, they are accusing, you know, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, they're accusing the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of, of these things. Now, the thing you said, uh, three line, 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 as I mentioned, whatever is mentioned is there. Brother, the thing is, look, that's why I said people need to go back and read. 
when the Quran says la taqrabu salah it doesn't end there it says you know when not when when you're not in a state of full consciousness right so when you're mentioning these three lines you did not by my brother imtiaz gave a context if you started your stream and you gave a context that Mirza Sahib, you know, he was responding to the Christians, he was writing a reply to Fateh Masih, and in that reply, this is what he had said, this is what the, the Christians were saying about the Holy Prophet وسلم, and Mirza Sahib was writing this, and I, I have to be honest, he was replying to them, but here he has mentioned something which is not stated in the Bible. Your allegation would be this, that this does not exist in the Bible, or this it does not exist in a reference that he's attributing to us, so it's a misattribution. Is not attack on the true Jesus. These are two separate things. What you did was you took these three lines you and your yourself, and, and the and the and the last thing. The 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 title of your stream is from the past weeks or something. The Promised Messiah, the enemy of Isa Islam, the Promised Messiah Islam attacking the Isa Islam. So it, yeah. that's why when I said dishonesty is there, this is what I was referring to. Okay, thank you. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So point number one, Rahil, you said that this was a way of responding from Mirza Ghulam when he was creating a fictitious messiah. So Rahil Sahib, for the last time, I'm just repeating this thing since beginning. If something is not in the Bible, something is not the belief of the Christians, and Mirza Ghulam knew that it was factually wrong as well, because Isa salam in his second coming will get married, he will have children. So when it was factually wrong, when it is not the belief of the Christians, it is not found in their books, then on what basis Mirza Ghulam used this to answer the Christians? Please, you are not addressing the elephant in the room. Okay, now, second point is, I would say, Rahil Sahib, please tell the public very clearly, is it permissible for us to fabricate lies in order to refute the Christians? Because in this case, we have clearly established Mirza Ghulam was fabricating lies, quote and quote, to defend Islam from the Christians. Because this thing is not part of their belief. It is not in their books. It was factually wrong as well. Why did Mirza Ghulam fabricate lies about Isa al-Islam? And third point is, according to the teachings of the Quran and Rahil Sahib, you know this. You cannot disrespect the, you know, the, the deities of the other. Because it is in the Quran. Allah says that, that do not say anything negative or bad about the deities which they worship other than Allah. Otherwise, in their ignorance, they are going to say things, bad things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Mirza Ghulam must know the Quran. How can he just use this excuse that it is about the fictitious Messiah? Because Christianity worships Isa alayhi salam. How can Mirza use this language about Mirza Ghulam has went to the extent of saying that Hello. some of the grandmothers of Isa were prostitutes. You know this, Rahim. Brother, listen, listen. You know listen. This. Zakallah, thank you so much. Your time's up. But let's stick to the reference that we're discussing. Don't bring things from here and there. When, 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 when the time for this, discussing that, okay, that please, allegation, please, we will please, discuss it, okay? Please, so please, be, please. Be, be honest about it. So you see, they are... They are so I uh, am honest. Alhamdulillah, I am honest. I, I, I don't believe so. But Bismillah, let's start my time. So, so you know, so, uh, brother Ahmed, uh, before I start your time, I don't believe that. I don't. Sorry? I gen. I, gen I genuinely yeah, don't believe that. I, I understand. I, I understand. Don't. It's not a disrespect. Obviously, I obviously don't we believe. don't believe each other's positions. Yeah. And the explanations you're giving, we don't believe them, and you don't believe our explanations. We understand no this. No problem. No problem. But yeah. when you're trying to have a conversation, saying that every moment is not going to be helpful in that discussion. Okay. I, because I, if, you, I, I, if you're feeling, if you're in a conversation and it's not, because I, I think actually that we're going a little bit of a circle. Okay. And it's very clear that you, you know, you're not responding to the things that we're, we're trying to ask you. Maybe That's you're not understanding, you, yeah. maybe we're not explaining it, or whatever that might be. If it's not yeah, fruitful, then, you know, it's it's six and a half hours, you know. Yeah, uh, we all have we'll things that we'll be needing to do. We'll end this soon, we'll end this soon, inshallah. Yeah, so I, let, I think I'll this is, uh, Brother Imtiaz, my request is last two minutes each, and Last then we'll two. move on from that point. That's fine. I agree. So okay, Jazakallah. Uh, Brother Imtiaz, for the hundredth of, hundreds of time, there are references in the books of the Prophet Muhammad where he lived in a colonial time where these Christians were writing books, thousands upon thousands of books and literature, which if you go back and read some of the references from Muhammad has given in his Kitab al Bariya, people should go back and read. You were not living in that time. You don't know what they were uttering against, this nonsense against the Holy Prophet and what extent to which they were doing that, publishing books. And they were, this Padri Fatima, he was a Muslim. This Padri Fatima, Masih was a Muslim. Among the people that from Salaam debated were Muslims who became Christians. He was debating them. He shut their mouths. 
So the point I'm trying to make here is what I'm talking about fictitious Messiah. Now, you see, when we read the Quran, where, where Allah says, uh, <clears throat> with regards to, uh, we know there are general references in the Quran, which is which is the gen which is the actual belief, and there are specific cir circumstantial re re references. For example, when Allah the Almighty says in the Holy Quran, "Faktuluhum haythu thaqiftumuhum," kill them wherever you shall find them, and ter ter and terrorists use this right to to, to kill non-Muslims. We believe, and when we defend Islam, we said, no, this is a circumstantial verse, so it's a circumstantial point in, in those who were combatant against the Muslims and who were killing them. Whereas we know, La ikra hafidin, min al that there's no compulsion in religion. Man al yu'min, man al yakfur, whoever would like to believe, believe. These are categorical things. So I'm about to mention to you something which is categorical in the books of the Prophet Messiah. And you have to be honest. He says, you say, that I have as if insulted Hazrat Masih, the Messiah, to some extent by using an abusive word with reference to him. This is a misunderstanding of yours. I believe Hazrat Masih to be a true prophet, a chosen one, and a beloved servant of God. What I say in retaliation, what I say in retaliation was, keep, it was in keeping with your own faith. Hence, it is you, not me, who stand accused of accu uh, accusation that you level at me, meaning Jangay Muqaddas, this was the, the debate that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi had with the Christians. They raised this, raised this allegation. He says, when we are deeply hurt and, and unjustified yeah, attacks, yeah. can I get 10 yeah. seconds? Brother, brother Imtiaz also got 10 seconds. Can it's, I finish this off? Please, the sentence, brother please, very quickly. Yeah? Now, can I finish this uh, quote with Brother, brother Imtiaz's permission, sentence, please? Be very, I want you to truncate it and make your point because you're talking yeah. over the time quite a lot. I know I mean, you don't like, uh, brother, let me just finish I this. I don't please, say that right? I don't like it. I've given you so many opportunities. Oh, oh, right. Can I get 10 seconds to finish this off, please, then? Yes, yes. That's um, what I said. Make it short. Zakallah. Okay. When the Promised Messiah Islam says in Mal 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 Fuzat, Volume 9, uh, page 479, he says, we are, when we are deeply hurt and unjustified attacks of all kinds are made on our Holy Prophet Wasallam, only then as a warning, we retaliate in the kind of basis of their Christians' own authentic books. They ought to point out in my writings anything which I have written as a retaliatory response, and it is not found in them, in their beliefs. After hearing the insult of the Holy Prophet I, 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 you want me to remain silent? So you see the point, the point, this is the general, general belief. This is what we believe in as, as Ahmadis. Where, whereas what you're men mentioning, these are circumstantial things and that has to be clarified. Okay, so uh, it's an interesting quote, Brother Imtiaz, before you make that, because in the quote actually is a response to uh, Ahmed himself. <clears> but, but I want, so is it, is it, uh, is it reasonable? I'm going to ask you this question, Ahmed, because I just yeah. want to understand. Maybe Please, this yeah. is the crux of the matter. To say something that yeah. people don't believe in, you know, to to uh, respond to an allegation they're making against whoever they might be making on your side. What do you mean? Okay, can you repeat it? So, so is, I, is, is it? Is it, is it, is it one second. Let, let, let Imran, Imran, Imran repeat this. Imran by, Imran by saying yeah. that yeah. it is is it permissible that in order yeah. to defend Islam. We can manufacture something or put an allegation on other people which they don't believe. But but if but, but I've showed you they believe they 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 don't believe Isa Salatu Salam had children. Okay, no, no, do no, we? No. Can I ask so, you a question? So the question. Do we first, believe? Brother, before you do explain we, it, up there, Before you explain it, yeah. The, yeah. The, well, the ask the question. Yeah. Principle. Is yeah. it okay to fabric to make up something about someone, some people's, yeah. make a make a response to them that isn't yeah. true? They don't believe in it. It's not in their books. Yeah. In, a, in an effort to defend Islam from anything, is, is that is that is that as a principle? Can you do that or not? You can do that, yes. Okay, then that's fine. The ba ba based you know, on their beliefs. No, no, no. Let me no, explain. no, because no, I said no, 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 in their no, 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 in responding and defending Islam, that you say something about some people, uh, yeah. what, the, what that is not in their beliefs and not in their sources. Yeah, perfect. Now don't interject. No, is that it's, it's 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 not acceptable. And this is what the Christians were doing. That's fine. So when they were, that's, so, that's the question that we were asking. One second. So when they, when they, brother Imtiaz, brother Imtiaz, I want to ask you a question. Brother Imtiaz, I want to ask you a question. So when the, let me, brother, <laughs> you're, <laughs> on turn and you're asking a question. Okay, 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 okay. Continue. Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Because this was the because Imran Bai said we want to make it the last term. So first of all, Rahil Sahib, you did not respond to anything I said in the previous term. I said that there is no such thing as Farzi or fictitious Messiah. There's one Messiah in the in the Bible, 
there's one messiah in the quran and listen carefully both of them are isa salam, according to mirza ghulam what is the source of fictitious messiah now i give you the answer mirza ghulam went to disrespect isa salam, and then discover discover of a farzi messiah was invented we have already established mirza ghulam was saying things which are not found in the bible which are not part of the beliefs of the christians which are factually wrong how can you use information which is not in the bible not part of their belief and factually wrong for example saying that Isa al-Islam did not get married because he was deprived of some manly faculties. This is the biggest disrespect and it's a kufr. It is a kufr. And listen very carefully, uh, Rahil Sahib. You cannot interpret a kufriya statement just by saying, oh, he meant this. It is a clearly a kufriya statement which Mirza Ghulam was. And this is exactly what we want people to know. And after that, you said that, um, uh, you know, Secondly, you did not address the question, Rahil Sahib. I ask you, Quran says that do not say something bad about the false gods of other people. Otherwise, they will attack your true God. And this is exactly what happened. Because Mirza Ghulam was saying all of these things against the Christians, Mirza Ghulam gave them the opportunity to disrespect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the reason. Mirza Ghulam was the reason for them to say all of these things. He was not defending any Islam, okay? I think your time is up. Point... Your time is up. Bro. Oh, okay. yeah, last point, no problem. You're gone. Okay. <laughs> no you, problem. You, you, so I was in the middle of their time. No, no. In, in my, in, in what, my what case, he, I, I, you are he, very he was, quick. He was still talking. There was still time and you interrupted it. I was talking. <laughs> no, I think it, it, it said time's up for me, but no oh, problem. Continue. Yeah, I'll Just give him another problem. 30 seconds. Start, please. Okay, continue. now in 30 seconds, I am not yeah. going to say anything new. I'm going to give another opportunity to Rahil Sahib to address two questions. Question number one, what is this thing fictitious messiah? It does not exist anywhere. Number two, is it okay? Is it permissible to say bad things about the deities of other religions? Please answer this question. Are you done? I'm done. Please answer the question. I beg you, please answer this the question. Gonna be, yeah, this is yeah, going to yeah. be part of your last two minutes. Uh, okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So fictitious, now particularly, the fictitious Messiah part that you're saying, the, the Messiah of the Bible and the Messiah of the Quran. There are certain things which are directly written in the Bible, but there, and there are certain things which we deduce from the Bible, or the Christians deduce from the Bible, or from, from, from the Quran, and it becomes part of their belief. Okay? Now you can shake your head whatever you want, but when the promised Messiah peace be upon him was replying to Fatih Masih and he wrote what he wrote there with regards to manly qualities, Fatih Masih understood very well what the promised Messiah peace be upon him was saying. He, we don't find any historical evidence for him to come back and say, what is this fictitious of Messiah? Where are you finding this fictitious of Messiah? We don't find anything of that sort. Because he understood exactly what the promised Messiah was saying. You mentioned something where Allah says in the Quran that do not abuse their deities. But Allah the Almighty also says in chapter 20 verse, 21 verse 99, wa ma min min antum laha waridun. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, broke the idols. Why did he broke the idols? So, you are, so, so either you know very well the understanding of that verse, what it is in the true sense, right? Or you're deliberately trying to swear. The third point, which was the most hurtful point you made, and which was a historical fallacy, and I'm saying it as a fact, not as a not as a, an accusation on you, that it was a complete kidnap and a lie. I'll tell you why. The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, first writing was which one? Brahine Ahmadiyya, the one that we know. And before that, he was writing, which was published at Majmu'a Ishtiharat. He was writing uh, Majmu'a Ishtiharat. You were saying you're writing a PhD on the Promised Messiah Islam. You should know this. The first book, Brahine Ahmadiyya, that we know, was in response to the allegation of the Christians. The Christians came centuries before in India, before even the Promised Messiah Islam was born. So you, na'udhu billah, lied on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that he was attacking their God and therefore they were attacking Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You should repent from this, brother. You made a big blunder and please, uh, and my question to you in response is, please take this back. Either you are, you are mistaken in what you're saying or you truly know and you're smirking your, now. Your, your time is right? up. Take this back, the Prophet Muhammad was the one who attacked their, their God, their false God first. Your, your time is up. Yeah. Rahmatullah Kirani existed before yeah. the Promised Messiah. Rahmatullah Kirani is all of this. Because he, time is up. Unfortunately, because he said many things, and obviously, 
We cannot just. I responded to you, brother. No, no, we're, we're not going to. We're, we're not, we to we can respond to these points, uh, but Ahmed will just it will just keep going around in circles because this is usually yeah. the last thing is it's common to throw. You know, a little bit of gunshotting, shotgunning. This it's always there. But but uh, why accuse of some? Why accuse some someone respond, of a lie? We can respond. to a it's like me saying, it's like me saying, brother Imran, you were the reason that that Trinity spread. It's like me saying, you were the reason Rahi, Trinity spread. Rahi, Rahi, listen, Rahi, listen. If I can produce the statement of people in the time of Birda Ghulam who said that it was you who attacked our religion, that's why in response we have to say all of that. Would you repent? They can say that. How are you presenting Christian sources? I've asked you a simple question. You said he. Were they were they attacking Islam before the Promised Messiah? Did Rahmatullah Kirani exist before the Promised Messiah? Did he have a debate before the Promised Messiah? It's a lot, it makes no sense. This is really un one second. Rahil, all I'm saying is, Rahil, all I'm saying is, when I said that Mirza Ghulam was the reason, it is not my conclusion. In the time of in the time of Mirza Ghulam, Lake Ram on the record, Lake Ram said that if you would not have said all of these things about our God and about our religion, he said that we would not have ever opened our tongue against Islam and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Basically, Rahim okay. Sahib, I am. I I, I'm, I, look, Rahim, wait, wait, wait. Allow me to can finish respond. because you please, spoke a lot. That, Rahim. Can you start your time, please? Can you start? No, your time? no, because Rahim. this is not gonna. Because what's gonna happen? Because what's very good. Is, this discussion is leading very, very. Because he's made a claim. No, no, it's, it's a very interesting right, discussion. Right. All <laughs> I'm saying is, I, am, I, I am giving you the answer. It is not the my conclusion. It was yeah. something said in the time of Mirza Ghulam by those people. That's what Promised Messiah said himself. And you're, you're taking a non-believer who attacked the Prophet over the Promised Messiah who was defending. No, no. The Promised Messiah himself said. No, no, you're, you're us, misunderstanding. For us, Mirza Ghulam no, is no, a disbeliever as well. <coughs> Sahim uh, Sahib, yeah. Rahim Sahib, for us Mirza Ghulam is a disbeliever as well. And you are for me same. Wallahi, yeah. you are a disbeliever for me. I think on this, <laughs> note, on this note, because this is, this is where now we've, we've come to. Uh, yeah. uh, Ahmed, interesting conversation. Thank you for joining. Okay, do you want to end, do you wanna end it? Okay. Yeah. Is that it? Is that how it's going to end? The, All of a sudden. How, how would you like to end it? Uh, I'll, say, I'll say if you can give both of us two last minutes and we leave we, on a good note. I think you've had okay, your time. Take it. Take it. Last two minutes and we leave. Imtiaz is being generous. We're going to give you two Please. minutes. Thank you. you Jazakallah. It would be really Please. appreciated. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, don't ra you don't raise any because the last time you spoke, I said it was the last time you raised other things. Uh, if you I'll if you, to respond, if you raise, I'm, okay. I'm going to just explain. If you raise please, other things please. now, we're going to ask yeah. you to leave, and we will respond to those points after you. No leave. problem. No problem. So just be aware of that. Don't complain afterwards about it. I'm starting your <coughs> time now. Okay. Bismillah rahman rahim So, brother, it was brother Imtiaz who raised this point that they attacked the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Islam based on the promised Messiah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nauzu billah. Nauzu billah. This is a. This is is just just a forgery. And and if there are on the promised Messiah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because these same people arrived in India even before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. Rahmatullah Kiranvi existed before. He had debates with them before. There were many people who were defending Islam in their un un understanding, whatever they could. The Christian missionaries and they, they, they entered Islam centuries before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it's an utter lie. As with regards to Lake Haram, who died in accordance with the prophecy of the Pro Promised Messiah Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who attacked Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very badly, right, uh, with his abusive tongue. The Promised Messiah Islam, people should go back and read his last book, A Message of Peace, where he said, if you stop abusing our beloved Prophet وسلم, to these Hindus at the time in his time, we would stop eating beef because beef or eating meat is not, it's not something that is incumbent upon us. You give us in writing this assurance that you would not attack our beloved Prophet وسلم, we would stop eating meat. This is the extent that he went to. And he's written many of his, his places that if you see a house of a Hindu being burnt, Go and save him, and all of these things exist. So it's an utter, it's it's it's, it's, it's an utter uh, misrepresentation on 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 your, on your part of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are Christians; they can say these things, right? They they are Christians. You're going to take their words on the Prophet because you're because uh, because you're of course attacking him. So by the grace of Allah, the reference that I came for, I established two things very clearly. One thing was that Prophet Muhammad was not attacking Isa Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi which we have we have established on this specific reference. And the second point was there's no mention of a male organ. And he hasn't mentioned anything on the male organ. He's very silent on it now. Now he's gone to the uh, faculty, the faculty element. Was that? And I've explained what, what what that is. So lastly, of course, I've got ten seconds left. Whatever it is, we're going to have this this disagreements. But at the end, I want to appreciate brother Imran, brother uh, Imtiaz. May Allah the Almighty guide you. Hadakumullah wa jazakumullah. 
And that's all I wanted to say. And thank, thank you so much. I would, I would uh, humbly take leave. And if I've said anything which has upset you, don't. And, la and last thing someone uh, messaged me to, 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 to give a message to you is, please do not utter such words which hurt us about the Prophet or put a cross on his face or put a cross on his, on his picture. Because if the people did the same about Rasulullah, you would not like it. You mentioned a verse of the Quran. Let's see how you understand it. Time you want, Rahil. Okay, the, we really, really appreciate you. Can you, the, can you agree? Us. That's can, can you agree? Uh, so you're let, not gonna you're not gonna believe in what the verse you said. Rahil, let me say something. So you're going to, you, thank you very much. You're, you're just it's just accusatory uh, information now. Uh, no, no, are you gonna put a cross? Brother, are you gonna put a cross on 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 this picture? Rahil, Rahil, because you took two minutes. You took two minutes. And yeah. I promise that after this, I'm not going to take any time. None of us will take. So I will take only two minutes because we can end the conversation on a good note. Is it okay? Okay. Now, in, in my two minutes, I in, in because we have already discussed, people have seen all of that back and forth. I want to read something which is on the screen right now. Nothing and new. This thing is... Nothing new. Bro. Sorry. <laughs> Rahil, can you please be patient? You're talking over. You're talking. Please, please let him have his two. But minutes. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. How can he mention please, something please, please new? Leave, Ahmed. Thank you very much for coming. We'll just finish off the two minutes without you. No, I'm being honest with you. Yeah, that's fine. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, and, okay. and come again. Please. Well, in fact, do you want me to stay? I can listen to it. No problem. I'll stay. And then that's what we're asking you to do. Okay. Okay. Go on. <laughs> Thank you. But I'm just saying it was, it's, it's a bit unfair that. Okay. No, you well, want to stay or you want? I did not get this one. Uh, he I'll wants stay. to stay. I'll stay and listen. He's I'll upset that there may be something new. But just okay. Wait okay. Give me. me uh, sorry. Sorry. What is it? it? I did not get the whole point. To be honest. So he's, he's, I will he's, stay, brother. And I will listen to what you're saying. But although I can't respond to it because it was my last two minutes, I said it would be a bit unfair because then I have to leave. It may be some point yeah. that I can answer, but I can't answer because of the two minutes after sure, that you say. So it's better you don't mention this point. You stick to the topic, and then next time, inshallah, we'll discuss this. Conclude how how he wishes to conclude. And feel free to to rebut next okay, time. Okay. No problem. No problem. I will not mention something new. So, uh, Rahil Sahib, uh, you first apologized to me for saying all of these things, shame and this and that. But in your last turn, you again saying that, you know, I was uh, basically used the word. I was having all the utter lies and this and that. Please, you know, just a few minutes ago, you apologized to both of us. But then in the last turn, you again, please, uh, I would say, uh, Rahil Sahib, please try, uh, learn to control your emotion. This is my only request to you. Okay, now. Rahil Sahib, because you said this thing that Imtiaz is now not talking about the male organ, Rahil Sahib, I'm asking you continuously. And you did not, I asked you that we both agreed on something that there is something which is a mainly faculties which Isa al Islam was mentioned, which we understood to be what we should, what, what we said. What else you want us to understand? Which mainly faculties? I will give you another 30 seconds, even though Imran Bhai would not be happy with me. I still want to give you my 30 seconds. My 30 seconds. Please, before you leave, tell the public that which manly qualities or faculties Isa al Islam was missing. I give you all the rest of 49 seconds. Okay, Jazakallah. Uh, the promise Isa al Islam did, uh, uh, Isa al -Islam did not miss any male faculties, right? And this was not the belief of the promise Isa al Islam as categorically evident from the few pages before and the few pages after. Yes. Now, the, what he's referring to, which you say, the, the biblical Jesus, when they were attacking the Holy Prophet وسلم, who, according to them and their belief, did not have any children. When they did not have any children, then how are they attacking the Holy Prophet وسلم, when they believe in a Messiah who did not have any children? Are you understanding the point? When they're accusing him of zina and all of these things. So how can they present a male example to us who did not produce any children? That's the point. There's nothing more than that. You've, you've mentioned, you've spent six hours, 41 minutes on this. By Allah, it's just, it's just a waste of time. But, but anyway, thank, thank you so much. Are you, are you mocking us before? Uh, are you yes, mocking before? Yes, you there's always the way. I'm not mocking. Week, before you go. I'm not mocking. Thank you very much, because... Ahmed. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, I hope things go better for you next time and, and have a more interesting conversation. Would you agree with us before you leave that we... Yeah. Dealt with you with respect. I I think you dealt with me with the respect, but when you, you no no I agree I agree I agree you dealt with me with respect, but imagine you go on Christian stream and they 
disrespect the Holy Prophet ﷺ, my respect don't count anything. If you attack the promised Messiah والسلام, in the manner that you, you, you even say he's false, you can present allegations in a certain manner. But when you mention something that, like, come on, man, historically okay, incorrect, you, you, you know, so this is, yeah, this is the point. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you can't attack my my beloved and then say, I, I respected you. That's my only okay. point. No problem. But may Allah bless you guys. May Allah give you hidayah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. So I think that um, the, the whole point here is that, 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 that this, for, for me, I don't think very very much has, has, has uh, actually a few interesting things have come out of this. We have, a for me, there's a new definition of Ilzami Jawab now. It can be anything. It can be from the book. It can be uh, something that uh, is the same as what they say or, so, or the opposite of what they say. And in fact, it can have no point of reference at all. It can be completely just fabricated, a fictitious thing that you respond to. For me, that was probably one of the most amazing things. And obviously, we didn't get a response to the which male faculty was missing. You know, uh, what, what can I say uh, about that? But that was a very interesting. Uh, Brother MTS, your your final, your, your, you were going to say something, so please uh, share with us what you were going to say. And yeah, I, I just practice, want but... to, uh, I just, I just, inshallah, want to put one reference on the screen. Inshallah, it will be very helpful for people to understand something very important. Inshallah, we, we can, inshallah, conclude uh, the whole discussion, inshallah, uh, with this reference. So I'm just trying to uh, pull that out. So. I'm just uh, struggling to share uh, this right uh, page. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Uh, Narma, you can inshallah say something in the meantime. So while I'm inshallah pulling oh, no, out that reference. Do that. So I think, I think on this point, I think what... Um, because I was, I was sort of trying to, because I really wanted to understand what uh, Brother Ahmed was going to say. And really, I think what, the only thing that he really wanted to hold on to was this, the specific term male organ. And actually, from looking at the text of what, what, what was provided, there was the, the reference to the fact that there was some missing manly quality that prevented Isa al-Islam, according to this accusation, if you call it Islamic job, that prevented Isa al-Islam from fulfilling the role of being a husband okay not specified um clear what's being ad ad uh, alluded to the point is christians don't believe that there was anything like this they don't believe there was anything lacking in terms of manliness within in fact they see he's 100 percent man and 100 percent god there was so there was no uh, there was no response to that aspect of it and then and then the approach was really just a and something that we see often which is redefining very, very clear things. The Islami Jawab is really that definition has been evolved and consolidated to include any single thing that anyone wants to say. So if I make an accusation about somebody that has nothing to do with what they believe in, that's that would be counted as a valid Islami Jawab. So if I were to make say uh, say about uh, you know uh, any group of people that they believe in four legged you know um, human beings that can that have wings that can you know produce twenty four children at a time. Uh, how can you believe in this as a ridiculous belief? Even if they don't believe in it, that would be regarded as a valid Ilzami Jawab. And it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And I, I don't have to prove anything from their texts either. It doesn't have to be in their books. It can be something that have no, has no point of reference, a hypothetical point of reference. Uh, I'm surprised by this by this approach. And, uh, if, and, the, and the thing that really did it for me was uh, the brother with the dreams. You know? <laughs> You don't need to have any evidence, just have dreams. And that's all you need. Yeah. And that's it. By, I just want to, inshallah, read this one reference. And uh, this is, uh, I think it's, it's on the screen now, Narmi, right? Yes, we can see that, yeah. Okay, so the, this is the reference. Uh, it is Tafsir -e Kabir, which is the, the Ahmadi Tafsir, page number 429. And Surah Ankabut is being uh, interpreted. So I want people to read this passage. So, inshallah, I will let them uh, tell us that who was this. He said that Khud mere saath ek aisa waqia guzra hai. Could you zoom in a bit more, brother Imtiaz? Just zoom in a little bit more. A uh, bit, bit more bigger? Yeah, a bit bigger. Okay, give me one second. Just so that, there we go, that's perfect, yeah. That, that will be clearer for everyone. Thank you. Okay, so it says that Khud mere saath bhi ek aisa waqia guzra hai, ki ek dafa mere paas ek angrez aya. 
He said that the same incident happened to me as well. Once uh, a British person came to me. Or he said that I want to talk to you something about Islam. And now the Christian uh, guy is saying, Lekin hai ke aap ko jawab na de. The Christian said that I, I want to ask you a few things, but my, my, but my condition is you will not give me any ilzami jawab. So the Christian is saying, please don't give me ilzami jawab. Okay, explain to me what Islam is. I said, if you will not attack Islam, I will not give you Islamic Jawab. Lekin Jabate Shuru Huni to Tori Derike Bat is near Sululullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pe Hamla Karna Shuru Kardia. But when we started to speak, this Christian guy started to attack Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mane Jawab me Azrete Isa Hamla Kardia. He said that in response, in response, I attack who? Isa alayhi salam is ka tera surkh ho gaya his face become red aur kehne laga ke maine hazrat ke main hazrat Isa ke khilaf koi baat nahi sun sakta and the christian guy started to say that i cannot tolerate anything against Isa alayhi salam maine kaha he said i said dekho mera tumse vaada tha ke agar tum aap sala sala pe hamla nahi karoge to main bhi Isa pe hamla nahi karunga he said it was my promise to me if you will not attack rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i will not attack isa alaihi salam chunache maine hazrat isa ke khilaf koi baat nahi ki so i did not say anything against isa alaihi salam lekin jab tumne apne wada ke khilaf warzi ki aur aap sallallahu alaihi wasallam pe hamla kiya but when you broke your promise and you said something bad about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam agar main tumse hazrat isa ke liye sorry agar tum mein hazrat isa ke liye gairat hai تو کیا میں اتنا بے غیرت ہوں کہ آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اور اسلام کے لئے عزت پر حملہ دیکھ کے بھی غیرت بننا ہوں If you have the honor for Isa علیہ السلام How can you say that I don't have the honor for Islam and for Rasul اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and I would be quiet and while you are attacking Islam and the Prophet اگر تم حضرت عیسیٰ کی تائید میں آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پر حملہ کرو گے in the uh, in in order to prove your christian understanding or narrative if you will attack our prophet to main aap sallallahu alaihi wasallam ki taid mein karunga that i am going to make 20 attacks against who against isa alaihi salam chunate wo isi waqt uth ke khada hua aur kehne laga ke main isa ke khilaf koi baat bardasht nahi kar sakta so the christian guy stood up he said i don't i don't want to continue because i cannot tolerate anything about isa alaihi salam now why I presented this quotation, I wanted to tell people that this is their way of defending Islam. A Christian guy was attacking Prophet and was attacking Islam. We can understand that. But in response, what did they do? It is his own word that I started to attack Isa. This is why I'm saying that Mirza Ghulam should not have defended. We don't need this defense because for us, both of them are the Prophet of Allah. If any Christian would attack Prophet وسلم, in response, it is not fair for me as a Muslim to attack who? Isa alayhi salam. And this is a simple thing we're trying to explain to the Ahmadis that this ilzami jawab thing, it does not make any sense. Then they, they say in the response, Rahmatullah was using this, this guy was using this. This is not the response. If something is not right, that is not right. And the job of your hakam and adal was, if people were doing something which was not correct, he should have corrected them. Instead of correcting them, he joined them as well. So what did he achieve? He joined the same narrative. So uh, as a Muslim, I would say that anybody can ask any scholar, any Muslim scholar, that if a Christian is attacking Prophet Wasallam's honor, in response, can I attack? Can I attack to Isa Islam? Inshallah, you will get the answer. No, not at all. Because even if you do in response, it is kufr. It is kufr. You can't do this. You have to respond with the argument. You have to defend the honor of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But you cannot attack Isa Alaihi Salaam. That's all we are trying to explain to the Ahmadis. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair, brother. Imtiaz, I really appreciate that. Um, any last words you want to say before we give salams, Inshallah? Uh, I would say, Imran, by first of all, that uh, because of these streams, 
you are being attacked as well personally on the social media and and they have come on the stream as well they are saying things my brother i have said already i will say it again alhamdulillah all the muslim community we know they admire and they are deeply grateful for your services of moderating these streams and we have not it's not that we have done any complaint no i would say that we admire your services for the for the deen and for the honor of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so i want to appreciate and i want to say this thing ran by may allah reward you and bless you that you have to bear all of these personal attacks on you because of defending the honor of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is a inshallah it is an honor for us if people are attacking us because of this noble cause no matter bring it on attack us even more we don't care alhamdulillah jazakallah khair you know malak accept everything inshallah we you know we are we are nothing we are no one it's only from the fazl of allah that we do what we do and may he use us to further his deen inshallah and actually sometimes uh, unless someone is doing something against you you may not be making an impact so alhamdulillah um so jazakallah khair uh, brother imtiaz um Every, anything good is from Allah and any mistakes or errors from ourselves may Allah forgive our shortcomings inshallah uh, uh, please a uh, final dua before we leave brother Intiaz subhanak allahumma wa hamdik ashadu allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk and jazakumullah khay for everyone assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh